I did improve it though by adding the gas mask and coloring it in. That's what it needed. And it's good that you so. just recognize it as Sonic. That's important. Well, well, what else could one possibly imagine it is? I mean, there's. I mean, I think when it was first made, it reminded me of the guy from Home Movies. I forget his name. Um, the guy from Home Movies. Yeah, let me. Uh, Da, da 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 images. I will show you. Do you remember home movie? No, I'm not even sure what you were talking about. Is this a program it's an or old, uh, yeah, it's an old TV show. Oh, I saw some people mentioning that on Twitter, yeah. Does he have a That's name? came to mind for me. His name is uh I probably know it. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Brendan's Brendan, I oh. think is his name. Brendan Small. Wait, really? That's his name? Yeah. Brendan Small's the name of the guy who made uh, Metalocalypse, I think. Well, what's interesting is that Brendan Small plays Brendan Small. Oh, I see. Ah, yes. It's is there a... Brendan Small and Lauren Bouchard. Is there a Brendan Lodge, by any chance? There might be, but perhaps it's just a humble family. Yeah. Like, no, no, son. No, no, little Brendan. Little Brendan Small. <laughs> the smallest of the little people. Brendans. <laughs> the smallest of the tiny ones. The most minuscule of the teensy weensy. But they're all, like, very large. Thanks, thanks for calling me, Dad. I really appreciate that. Um... Oh, hey, already some people in chat. How you doing there? That's great. Well, it just so happened. Well, I mean, we're here. We They're are also here. That's true. We might, as we might as well have a podcast. Have a little, we have little chat. Just, everything's yeah. as it is. We can, whole... a, we can have a really, definitely a little chat. We won't go on and on about these whatever. No, 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 no. I have a small chat and then a large chat. Would you... Tell you what. Oh, oh, we're gonna have a big one and a small one. Um, I think we could just mix a bunch of both together. That seems to be what we kind of did for the past four years. Well, I'm gonna tell you right off the bat. Some of these will be very small chats. <laughs> so. Oh, um, will they? The big now? ones will be necessary. I think. I think so. Um, before I guess once we give a moment for people to file in mm -hmm. i can tell you which of the two trailers. we'll give the list of trailers right and then i'll tell you which ones i think will be the small chats not that it's bad if they aren't i thought I you were just going to say which will be good particular. and i was like oh yeah of course a oh, short list <laughs> none, none of them no they'll they'll all be shit the point is that um two in particular stand out as being our our chat will be short i agree not even not even by our standards, but by normal person standards. And I would argue it's not even to do with their length necessarily, because there is one that's pretty short that I think we'll probably talk about for much longer. We shall see. Um, because you're right, we should let people pour in to give them a chance. Pour in. Pour in sounds what if, like uh... a, a race. Yeah, let me see. Let me go to the YouTube here. Now that my recommendeds are ruined. Yay. Um, oh, actually, they look pretty good. I, uh, that is very interesting. You made me watch, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Jesus Christ. You made me watch eleven trailers yeah. and what? Wait, someone said, is this an EFAP for the trailers because the show isn't out for like three weeks? Like, yeah. What show? It says in the title it's about the trailers. <laughs> how, did you, how did I... It's fine. They're probably talking about She-Hulk because she's, she's, she's the face Shulk. of this one. Hulk, yeah. Hulk and Shulk is what we'll call it. That, that's, that's the first one you made me watch because I did not do this voluntarily. Well, well yeah, that's you. probably worth mentioning. You, uh, you just, do you, do you, do you watch, watch trailers trailer. much? Not at all, really? No. I'm going to be honest, I just don't watch them. No. Every once in a while, I might watch a video game trailer. Mm -hmm. However, movie trailers and show trailers, I, I do not watch them. Is there a reason um, for this? Because they're full of lies, man. <gasps> they're full of lies. 
movie trailers are the modern day equivalent of if Croesus attacks the Persians, a mighty empire will fall. And you're like, wow, that's not helpful. Go away. I mean, yeah. Well, uh, did you watch the I, I, Endgame nothing, trailer no, back in the day? No, I don't think I did. I legit just don't watch trailers. I'm not interested in them. I am totally cool going into a movie. I'm this way with games for the most part, to a slightly lesser degree, but I'm fine with just, oh, this is coming out? All right, we'll see what that's like when it's released and I can purchase it or watch it. And it comes out and I watch it and it's got all the stuff in it and I don't have these expectations built up and I'm not taken advantage of and I, my hopes and dreams aren't crushed as much and uh, things are great. Would you not say Nothing they against are... people who really like trailers. Aren't they advertisements though? They're trying to get you to watch they are, the they're, thing. They're ads. Yeah, that's essentially what... um. I mean, like, trailers are, they're commercials. These mm -hmm. are commercials to get you excited in order to get you to watch something or buy something, which is, in and of itself, not bad at all. I just feel like, especially in terms of the quality, shall we say, of a lot of the things that we've been watching recently. Yes. I just have their ability to sucker people in and lure them in. It's like, I don't, I'm looking at these trailers with this knowledge of watching these shows that we watch, whether it's The Falcon and Winter Soldier, whether it's Kenobi, whether it's all these movies, Multiverse of Madness. I'm like, I know that you guys are untalented losers. <gasps> so these just like these trailers, they don't have any like you can't wow me, I guess, because I know you're trying to wow me, but not in the sense, you know, I shook, uh, I shook David Copperfield's hand once. I went to Vegas and I went mm -hmm. on stage and he did his big magic thing. And it was I went there to be amazed. That was the point. There was no misunderstanding of what was going to happen. Right. Um, and it was incredible. I was legitimately impressed. I, and technically, I guess he was it was he it's deception, not not, you know, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, you know, magic, that sort of thing. But these feel just like the scummy version of that. You think you, know? you think Marvel will not amaze you, but yet will try and claim that they're definitely gonna. If Mar if any of these I will leave the door open to the possibility that some of these products will amaze me. However, not in the way that I wish to be amazed. Wait, some people are saying like the they should link the stream live before it happens more often. Did I do that? I didn't mean to do that. I never do that. I always just go live. I, I don't recall you did that. We you only yeah. like a couple of people have said like, oh, it was nice to see that you put the link out first. It's like I did. <laughs> like I did you? I didn't think no, I did. Yeah. I did. Uh, I didn't mean to. I'm afraid. Um, I'm sorry. We just that's just not how we roll, you know. We just go boom talking about something. You in, Yo. are, are you in or are you out? That, that we gobbling you. Okay. That's what that's called officially. Uh, I loved it when um, Green Goblin stood up and said, "It's Goblin time." I remember that. Yeah, that's what I. That's what was my favorite part. I was. I was. Shown, I witnessed a clip this morning, thanks to Fringy, actually, oh, of man. Matt Smith at some kind of Comic Con uh, thing, probably the SDCC one, right? And then, and then this kid just just comes up and he's like, um, I mean, yeah. Mr. Mr. Smith, he's like, yeah, and he's like, mm, it's morphing time. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, oh, okay. <laughs> it shows that the stream is. Wait, but like, we're live. It, it says two hundred fifty-five waiting. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, what? So Playback on a. Got... It shows the right thumbnail. What's yeah, going on? It's not actually playing like a. Yeah, I was I was wondering. I, I well, didn't say anything because I figured you guys were talking. It's like, oh, so the stream is working. Maybe it's a problem for me, but no. Oh, an ad's playing now. I'm very, oh. very, very, very confused. I like the idea, though, that we've had oh. chat there, and I just assumed they were live. <laughs> but apparently they weren't. <laughs> Well, oh, now, now all of that live. is missed. Now Ooh, well, for, yeah, same for, life. for all of the you what this means. in chat, you've got an extra 10 minutes of gold when this gets re-uploaded yeah. to look forward to. A good 250 people are privy to chatterings, mostly mine, that others will not get. And I thought they were pretty good. So oh, yeah, all you, those, you take that and you cherish it. That will be erased now, won't it? Forever. 
all the stuff that was in that chat. Well, I guess it'll be on our That's screen. It's kind of a shame. I thought that was good stuff. It'll be on Moolah. It'll be saved. I just realized. Oh, be on yeah, account. on the re-upload? Right? Do not you worry, chat. It will be saved. Oh, yeah. It'll be there. Hey, you chat. Have to come How back you doing? To the channel if you want to get that. We already hello chat. We oh, said yeah. a bunch of things. I don't know how much of it needs repeating, but you know the the, the main point was just <laughs> hi. The three of us here are just going to chat about things, things related the main to. Main point was welcome to hell. Yeah, well, because I saw loads of people being like, they better cover the trailers, and I was like, we never covered. Well, I guess we did. Well, well, you know, in my head, and I was like, oh, I guess we could. There's a lot of them, so we can make a whole episode out of this, especially because there's loads of meta things to talk about with a lot of these subjects. Yeah. Um, the announcement and everything, the the the, the pipeline. Oh, definitely, yeah. Because you know, to to give people a set, this is this is what we will be going through. This is what I forced uh, Fringy and Rags to be aware of, at least. Even though I'm pretty sure Fringy was aware of them all anyway. Because you're a trailer yeah, person, aren't you? You watch them. You're like, mm -hmm. I do watch trailers. Yeah. Well, we, I we, don't. We were kind of talking about the nature of trailers. I do, uh, they are ads for the thing, and they are meant to be like, please check our thing out, but at the same time, they often are lies, um, and hype generators of a... <laughs> they <laughs> like, often are lies. Like, well, because you'll they're have... Just, they're constructed in the way that, especially after Moon Knight, and after... Um, I wonder if there's something in particular that probably Kenobi, Kenobi and Moon Knight in particular stand out as, oh, you lied to me. This isn't at all what you sort of maybe led us to believe this might be. Well, yeah. it's, um, there's a, there's a fine line, right? If you're making a trailer, it's going to be hard to create something that's two minutes long that is going to be a good representation of what the film is going to be, you know, like it's, um, it's kind of tough. You're translating I, two to, you know, depending on the TV show, like six hours of content into two minutes. Um, maybe the which, key is to not try too hard, which I feel like these maybe, trailers yeah. are trying very, oh, I mean, they're focused, they're probably very focused hard. They're probably focused aren't they? Absolutely. Like they have the marketing department that, like, works and figures out exactly, like, the pacing and the timing and, like, what music. These trailers were developed in a laboratory. Probably. Yeah, probably, and and I mean, I, I I probably would develop them in a laboratory <laughs> if I was like dealing with this level of money, millions of dollars. Yeah, yeah if exactly. you were only invested in money and not in like creativity, you know, the, the narrative direct. Yeah. Yeah. However, um, I guess with all that said, we could go well, ahead. I was going to say going down the list, or we could yeah, do the, whatever. What we've got for you today, chat. We're going to talk about uh, She Hulk, attorney at law. Right, uh, that's woohoo. Black Panther, Wakanada Forever, and then I Am Groot, and then actually there's there's something else. There's a few other little little surprises along the way, probably. Um, Shazam, right? People have been people talking about that Shazam. Uh, Black Adam, kind of like the rhyming there, kind of when you when you pronounce it all wrong. Um. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna let everyone know, you know, current up to date thoughts on the old Andor because that's actually on its way out. I mean, it's Pretty close sure, anyway. Yeah. And then of course uh, the Rangs of Power and uh, House of the Dragon and Dungeons of Dragons, which to me is kind of interesting as a little triplet. There, it's like, oh look at fantasy, look at it, it's it's okay in terms of funding, <laughs> I guess. Um... Isn't, not wasn't order, Sandman? Yeah. Wasn't Sandman another thing? Like that's kind of like a big deal. Uh, I guess so. I've got no context for Sandman really at all, so I just. Uh, Me neither. Sorry. I was <laughs> like, curious I if, like, yeah, if uh, I didn't really have. Oh, and then John Wick Four. That's that's the idea we got. Right. You know, and what's and, uh yeah, quite a list. So um, what I'll do because these trailers are a bit mean and they don't let you uh. Or at least, you know, I could show them on screen, but in the form of pausing, because uh, we're got to be careful, right, with, with copytisms. Yeah, I want to be able to maintain this stream. Yeah, we are. You know, we had some dramatic news. We're we're coming to the end of phase four, and we all saw it coming because storyline-wise, it really does kind of make sense to wrap up here. You know, Thor: Love and Thunder. You saw that, and you're like, ah, oh, yeah, this is sort of the end of a phase, isn't it? Um, is that wait? Is it? Is now the time? The end, <laughs> the end is uh, 
Wakanda Forever is the last one in Phase 4 when I'm pretty sure before, like, last week, Phase 4 went up to Fantastic Four. They've changed their minds. Like, that's what's happened. They've changed their minds. It's a complete they, mess. Essentially, they changed it. New, like, after the fact, they've created new phases, like, now. And a new saga or whatever. Maybe because, like, Phase 4 has Because the focus good- testing group got back to them. They looked through the data and they reanalyzed the human expressions and money potential. And they decided, all right, so actually what we're going to do is we're going to do this. And that's why they did it. And there's probably very little other reason. Oh, it's a course correction, I think. Yeah. I think it's um I think they know that the response to phase four has not been that great. Um so they're they're kinda of doing a course correct. I wonder if they're they getting not, not like a little meaningfully, bit... I don't think. I wonder if they're getting a little bit frustrated because they're like, wait, why does everyone like praise this shit when it comes out? But then everyone's saying that it sucks overall. That doesn't make sense. Because they have no ability to understand how, like, maybe art works, or actual emotions work, kind of. Well, that, I mean, that's our theory, right? Like, none of this uh, is, has any staying power. It all just gets flushed out straight away. Um, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. But, like, it's made for now to be discarded once it's... It, oh, it did its thing. We can move on. It doesn't have any lasting legacy. There's no... Maybe it's best that people just stop talking about it after it's made us the money. And we can just move on. The less people remember it, the less we have to worry about. Because when you look back, it's like everyone's just unequivocally... Everyone's pretty much on board with saying Phase 2 was easily better than Phase 4. And, like, I, I wonder phase sometimes... Oh, I wonder sometimes how much people remember what's even in Phase 2. And I don't mean that to say that the, the stuff is bad, but just literally, do you remember the story of Phase 2, if, if one was to call it that? Um... I think a lot of people might be like, was... uh, it's the one, it's, um... Which one was that? That was like, I up could... to Age of Ultron. Dude, I could like picture them was, saying, uh... well, it's Iron Man 2, it's, uh, and you'd be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not right, buddy. Let's try again. And, yeah, and, and then I could see them being like, oh, well, Ant-Man, right? That face too. <laughs> and then people yeah. would go, who? It was, technically, yeah. Oh, yeah, can we actually highlight the fact that Ant-Man is about to get his third movie, and, uh... Let's just say there are other superheroes in the landscape right now who uh, who aren't doing as good. They can't, no, like we don't we don't even talk about Superbad. That's that's what it feels like for Warner Brothers right now. We don't even talk it's, about. Um, it. Yeah, it's it's, and I mean, even in that landscape, right? You're gonna get a second Shazam movie before you even get like <laughs> another Superman film, and like, you're gonna have three movies in what you could call the pocket universe of Shazam, like. Because that's yeah, what Black exactly. Adam is, right? Like, it's an extension? He is. He's, like, Shazam's main enemy. So, yeah. that's insane. The, the, like, Shazam's just been reliable for them, probably, and they're just like, well, just keep going, I guess. He's, like, the Ant-Man of the I, DC side, isn't he? What do you mean by that? That they I, yeah, have I was about this, to ask what you actually did mean by that. This, this franchise is just going on while they're trying to figure everything out, and they're just like, oh, well, and then we just, like, take a wider view, and it's like, fuck, there's a lot of that compared to everything else like, it's, um i'm not sure like how they make their choices when it comes to because like they're making a blue beetle movie and like that could be cool but i don't know how many people know who blue beetle is you know like it's like they've they're making know, movies like... for relatively obscure characters meanwhile like uh a lot of the their main heroes are just kind of languishing it's it's really um odd i, I don't think it's like bad necessarily I no it's just odd you know, whatever works, works, but, like, it's just bizarre, because these are supposed to be, like, home runs, you know? Like, you get a Superman yeah. movie out, and you're fine, but then they gave it to somebody who, uh, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like, it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, it's, it's so, it's so bizarre. The structure of the DCEU is, like, non-existent. That, I mean, this implying that the MCU's got a really sound structure, you know, informing, like, the stories that they're telling. I it saw... is the most ununited, united universe that I've ever seen, really. It's, yeah. it's just everyone just putting their own things out there with no level of... I guess they just don't have anyone who says, no, you can't do that. I guess, Yeah, it I doesn't... guess that's the problem. No one says no. Well, it seems like Kevin Feige is the one who makes the decisions on that, but I don't think Kevin Feige is really a storyteller. Like, he's a producer. No, sorry, because I, I, a producer can be a storyteller. In his case, I think that his approach is that he has high concepts or, like, characters and projects that he'll line up. But as for, like, any story, 
overarching or even like getting into the real intricate details of any given film like i don't think he's i don't he's know i don't think he maybe. comes up with those probably. ideas well he probably is too busy that's I, and it's not like it's not necessarily his job to do that but it should be somebody's job and i feel like there's nobody doing that there's no one guy that you go to who knows where everybody is at every point in time and what stories are happening who mm. like you ask hey can i do this and then he says yes or no not based on what will make lots of money, but based on the integrity of yeah, this, does this, uh, make of this story. Does this keep everyone together? Does this build a lasting legacy for our company that is more than just a number? Well, well yeah. But... Well, it's funny to compare them as well because we think Marvel is an incoherent mess, but at the same time, they can pretend like everything is lined up while DC, I don't even know that they can do that. They're just like... I don't uh, even I don't think know. they're trying to anymore. <laughs> yeah. the power of apathy. You just don't have to... You, you throw in a reference every once in a while just say like the book of ashanti and everyone's some people will be like oh yeah see it's a cinematic universe they, they wrench in the thing joke the doesn't even make thing. sense and that's hey, well, she hulk he, we'll, we'll get he there. know that that got destroyed like why would he say that we'll oh, get there yeah there's... why would he even say that anyway like surely he understands what she means what, like, remember, why would we, she we haven't given any context, context for this this is just yeah sorry I'm just, uh, that's, yeah we'll get to all of it it's gonna be great but i yeah the the state uh the current state i think it's a lot more um apparent at this point that there's there's panicking going on than um would have been previously realized because i think a lot of people will watch these shows like the disney plus ones and just be like man and marvel are just they just know what they're doing everything's great yeah some I mean, people they, they are that, do. Yeah. But, like, but, uh, ha having knowledge, what? like, No Way Home was originally supposed to come out before Multiverse of Madness, which would fuck everything up in terms of what everything ha like, how everything goes down, and what everyone has to say about everything in all of this. Like, you just be like, that already? Uh, the fact that Guardians 3 was supposed to be before both of them, right? Or close to it? Well, I, I think Guardians was never, like, on their timeline, but I think it would be safe to say that Guardians 3 would be out by now. Should have been if, Phase if, 4, least, yeah. Yeah, like, the Suicide Squad got made when that would have been Guardians 3, pretty much. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'd say, I'd say that that would have been made by now. And, like, the only conclusion anyone's uh, reaching is, like, wait, did you just cut off Phase 4? You were just like, fuck it? They ending? did. They, absolu they absolutely did. Like, and Phase 4 used to extend beyond uh, Wakanda Forever. It used it, to include up to, yeah. It seems the to... that they would like to try and be like, Phase 4 is the phase between arc phase arcs, if you will. But it's not. It's part of this arc. They're, they're <laughs> saying it's part of the multiverse saga, so they're even admitting like it's part of this this arc. Which... But I mean, you're right. Phase Phase Four is like what is the overarching story of Phase Four? Like Phase One it's is all so leading up to segmented. Avengers. Well, they just have nothing to do with each other, really. If someone would be like, "Ah, it's laying the groundwork for the multiverse." It's like, did Shang Chi? Like, what was Shang-Chi about with relation to that? It was just kind of like its own thing. Hey, the rings are sending out a, a message. Thing. The rings are sending a message. Oh, yeah, that's that's right. At the end of the film, the Legend of the Ten Rings will be revealed in the next film. Like, we don't even learn what the Ten Rings are in that film. <laughs> Mark Brown level. <laughs> How could you like, do it? Moon Knight had nothing to do with any anything. Like, Moon Knight was... Just, and that's, I guess you'd be like... That's fine you can have story i mean like look at comic books right not all comic book stories are like leading to some crazy multiverse you have like individual stories but the problem is that the stories that are seemingly meant to be leading to something i don't i don't see the direction really i just, I just no. don't see it because there probably wasn't one they were like figuring it out which is why it seems like it's like get excited for phase five which is just may have meant something at some point but at this point it just seems like an arbitrary line you drew where it could have been anywhere um because nobody knows what the hell's going on in this phase nor do the people writing it which by the way if you guys remember it wasn't long after black widow came out that we got like more and more information on how it was made and i wasn't that was it 13 days the script was made in or something like that some yeah. like that <clears throat> some abnormally short time and um, it, it shows yeah well yeah well, I was going to say, <laughs> information has now been confirmed, at least, on, on Multiverse of Madness, that uh, Waldron was brought in to replace... The writer? Oh, yeah, uh, Michael Waldron's a writer. So he was brought in to replace uh, someone very arbitrarily and quickly. Like, they, they apparently called him, they were just like, can you do it? If you can do it, do it. His job was to make a script, 
Multiverse of Madness, that are, like, it was just completely divorced from whatever they had working for them at the time, which is all stuff you can find as well. The uh, original story that they were going to do, which involved, you know, Mordo from the first film a lot more. It ended with Scarlet Witch becoming evil. <clears throat> um, it was about Nightmare and uh, Shuma Gorath. They were, like, the main mm -hmm. baddies. And uh, it was still going to, I think... America Chavez is still supposed to be introduced in it, but, you know, it's just a very, very different film. But he was brought in, and uh, the first two weeks he spends writing the film. Third week, they're just, like, we're doing it, we're starting it up, and they start filming, so he's still not finished, but, you know, it's, there you are. And apparently, like, not long into it, could even be days or maybe weeks, uh, COVID hits, and so they have to stop, and they stop in the sense of it's scrapped. Like, the entire thing is just oh, gone. Wow. Um, and so, like... Up to this point, when, you, when you're learning about this, you're like, oof, two weeks, you know, 14 days before they start filming. Not great, not great at all. But then you find out, worse than that, that, that the project was scrapped, and then he was contacted to say that they managed to find a way, you know, to deal with filming with COVID. And so they're starting up, and it's like, oh, well, you, you know, we, we need a script. And it's just like, go. And he's, the, the point I'm trying to make is that he was writing it, like, from the moment they were filming it. Um... And and uh, the, the the funny quote you can get about this is uh, you have him saying when they got to the Illuminati that he has no idea what's going to happen next. He, he, beyond Act 2 in the film, he just doesn't have any fucking clue what's happening. I the mean, fucking writer. That's, that's, that's a great sign when the writer doesn't even know where the story is going and, while they're making it, while they're actively producing it. Yeah, um, and this is a quote from him where he says... Uh, Ultimately, it's just a matter of me not knowing what to do with the script. Which that's bad considering <laughs> that you need to make a script. That's not the kind of thing you want to hear from your writer, like <laughs> especially it's while just you're their priorities the are. Film. Their well, their writing is... is so low in the list of priorities. It yeah. really is, and, and this is not how you make films. I'm I'm sorry, this is not how you make movies. Like I, I don't know, Fallout, Mission Impossible, Fallout was this strange anomaly that like managed to come together while they didn't fully know what that story was going to be. Uh -huh. But like for every it's Mission Impossible Fallout, hard. well, they yeah, of course. And I'm sure that there was much more priority on the storytelling anyway while they were trying to figure it out. Whereas here, it's like, yeah, I don't know, you can't. This is not, especially when you're trying to write something that's meant to be setting up future films and stories. Like, come on. You can't make films like that. So was it One you thing guys I think is interesting too is you said thirteen days to write the script for Black Widow, right? Yeah. We mm -hmm. hear that and we're like, holy shit, that's like really, really short. And another part of me is like, well, if you took you and maybe a few other people who were talented and locked them in a room for thirteen days and they focused one hundred percent on writing out a script and double checking and everything you think man you you could probably come up with an amazing story if you really spent that time and you had the talent and you just totally focus 13 days is a long time to work on a project um you know in, in i a would sense. want a lot more than that but sure yeah like a, uh, there are plenty of writers out there who i think are reliable enough to be able to actually pull that off and i think that's why this has ended up this way there are people like industry veterans that probably can churn out like a decent story in that amount of time and then they're just like we need everything to be done the quickest way possible and i think other like production elements i don't know they get respected to to have more time while writing is like you know to be fair writing can just be done on the fly can't it and then the it's writer's fine. like it's yeah i guess so and people will buy it anyway the the story like the writing is the story no, yeah, it's insane because uh, you know they'll 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 know like oh if we're filming in a city scape we need like all the, the the props to be given the time to set up we need time to get there we need this that the, like it, all these things are concrete while like I I genuinely think some people are probably like you know uh, three weeks zero weeks what's the difference just you know make a story whatever they say stuff they go these places. people will buy anything as long as it looks good so chop chop with those props get on with assuming it. we use props a lot of it will be CGI. Because we can't put like a paper boat down a stream, we have to CGI that. There's a there's a, there's a lot of that uh, that just it's depressing to think about. But even then, there's probably stuff we don't know about about how like they they're told as you know props and SFX people that you need to do 
XYZ, uh, and then they're just like, how do we do that? We don't have the time or resources to be able to do it. And it's just like, well, then tell the CG people to do it. <laughs> or something yeah. like that. Go down to the dungeon. Go down to the CGI dungeon. Go down and to the tell dungeon. All the... <laughs> go, yeah. go and tell them that to add something else to their list before we free them. I open the door to the dungeon, and out of pure instinct, one of them tries to run away with his chain up and falls to the ground. <laughs> it's just like, I'm imagining... we about this. In my head, have you guys seen The Road? Yes. Yeah, I you have, probably know what I'm thinking yeah. about. Um, that's the CGI editing dungeon at Disney. Where it's like, well, did you, you know, did you put the you know thing on the thing and do this and do that? Like, yes, please. We worked all night. Please, food, rations. We need sustenance of some kind. I think that's another aspect. So, when, when the show's done. When you have like a group of people making a set, it's all very physical everyone gets to see it at the time like the actors appreciated the director will appreciate it they will be seen doing it sort of thing meanwhile like a cg guy is just in a literal dungeon on a computer and so he could be there for like a million years and he could come out and they'll be like oh hey you know larry and he's like Hi. who are you yeah like he's they wouldn't even know who he he's is. got like the beard what year is it <clears throat> <laughs> you know, that sort of thing and yeah, and they'll look at his work and they'll be like i don't know some thousands <laughs> please, of guys probably did that please let my family go such a shame. And the mouse goes, oh, no, you have to make She-Hulk. Oh. And that's going to be another thing that they're going to try and move around. Uh, you know, the, 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 as, as the next phase comes in. Because it's all very, it, like, it feels like it all reacts to current time stuff. And so they'll just be like, how do we solve this problem of looking like shit? And it's like, maybe don't stress the CG artist. And they'll be like, no, no, no. I mean, like, an answer that we can actually do. <laughs> be like, well, less CG what, intensive projects, time. and they'll just be like, no, no, I mean, an answer we can actually do. Well, yeah, because I mean, She Hulk conceptually seems like it was probably never like, you know what I mean? You you need a, a full CG character who looks pretty human like for like three or four hours, <laughs> and you need to do that in like a year. It's it seems like conceptually it was. Probably not the best idea, um, or, or maybe not conceptually, but just from a production standpoint, maybe like it needs to be a movie. Our yeah, main I guess you can. the the whole uh, the whole thing because I guess we could maybe I don't know if we'll segue that into it because it's her first movie, but I presume the, that this is what we're doing. Let's do <laughs> this it. Is the the concept being that this is a character who's supposed to be blending in with the real world, so to speak, and yet every time I look at her, I just don't believe you. Um, Already, that's a really tough. I think it's I think it's a mixed bag. There are some shots where it looks all right, and then there are some shots where it looks real wonky. I'm not sure if that, um I can understand saying that, but at the same time, I wonder if it's just the wonky ones that make the fine ones look better because of the fact that they're less wonky. Like ultimately, um, if it were all the best shots, what would I say? And I feel like I'd still say like this looks a bit awkward and jank. Um, yeah, I think um well, so something that I think often betrays like you know cgi is animation like when something yeah. looks it's usually that everything looks a little too floaty i think that's usually the problem more so than something looking too weighty or anything yeah so like you got that in um... where it's really unconvincing not because of like the texture work or anything but just because the character's not moving in a way that feels right the it's layers don't bit... quite move together the it's just a little um... bit jank you know a, a little yeah. bit unnatural you're like oh the the this like the, in the last episode of Kenobi you had the little the little critter and it had the pack on it and the pack and the critter were not moving at the same like trajectory and yeah, so it which, was like two layers that didn't quite match each other and I'm like oh that's I could, and I could see that being a nightmare level of work that some fucking oh, suit was probably like get that done in an afternoon yeah and it's like this is not uh, something I can do in that amount of time <laughs> it's like oh come How on it's just a dude uh, 189 you have six and then <laughs> he goes to talk to the next person they would definitely do that meme yeah <laughs> the I villains mean, always do that meme <laughs> something that I found interesting is that um a lot of people have referenced Corridor Digital talked about it and were sort of running through. They're like, okay, so like there's YouTube compression that makes it look worse, which is true. And, um, oh, well, you know, like, cause he's like, a um, you look at Hulk, he doesn't look as much like a human. So it's less likely to slip into the uncanny val valley. He's got like more visible textures that kind of make it feel more tangible, like stubble and, and wrinkles and stuff like that, mm -hmm. where she doesn't. Do you think and it's like, 
all of these are like fine points to bring up for why it doesn't work, but it doesn't address the fact that people have an instinctually negative reaction. At least a decent amount of people have had an instinctually like you you can't really rationalize that away, you know? I would um, imagine that in some cases YouTube compression might help you because if it, it sort of makes everything you. look yeah. a bit worse, it sort of tends like it, it's probably harder to spot bad CGI if you're watching a video at 144p I, than exactly. it's four K true yeah yeah um, well yeah it's it's um someone in chat said they're basically saying you were wrong to find it uncanny i don't think they're no that i think the way that i would explain it is they're explaining why it's uncanny but it doesn't rectify the fact that it is for a lot of people like it does it doesn't help um you're kind of like explaining because like you're, you're explaining why it's not working without really providing an alternative of it working and and you chose to do this. Like that's the important yeah. part of the conversation. You chose to make this show. You chose to yeah, take on you this show. You could have challenge. done something else. You could have well you could have done something with you know, I guess you could have done it. you're at Disney. You could have done anything else. Um never before has a company been more able to do anything else. Well than if you. anybody could do it, it would be Disney. But yeah. Yeah. It, but maybe maybe it's just like a challenge that like the show would need like an extra year like in post production to really yeah I don't know it's it's which like is that maybe even a great idea. like genuinely from Disney standpoint is that even worth it like what would it do and it's like it'll make everyone say that she looks a lot better where, it's like fuck it just it throw it out really... well yeah because enough people are gonna watch it anyway and then that's yeah, where the like, benefit of people matter? forgetting actually works like is it like you know that this can be watched it can maybe provide some extra subscribers i don't even know if that will be a thing but whatever um and then you know give it a a few months and people will just be like what was she hulk about again and you'd be like mm. yeah because uh this is the thing before we even get into what the trailer has in it uh the worry with this was immediately like man she hulk already huh haven't we got like some hulk stories to tell anymore i guess well, not. I well my first, uh, you say that, my first note about She-Hulk, attorney at law, is Hulk teaching She-Hulk about being green and living that way could be interesting, but we'll probably get 10 minutes of that and then we rush off to plot stuff. Um, I would, I would wager that it's like a flashback episode. Like, it'll be, it'll be an episode, and he won't be in it much. Like, he'll be in that episode, maybe he'll pop up every now and then, and... I would have, yeah, I would have thought they're going to be sparing with him showing up just because of I think the so. costs. Probably, <laughs> like, it's probably expensive. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And to be honest um, with you, I'm surprised we even got Hulk. I'm surprised they didn't just gun with uh, using Mark Ruffalo. Yeah. Um... Well, yeah, right, because that's again you've that... you've accepted another cost here because you've got to do that too. <laughs> like, like yeah, gotta, to to just give you an idea, right? Like at the end of Shang Chi, because I know I can't remember if we we did talk about this scene when we covered the film, right? The Mark Ruffalo shows Sorry? up as yeah, he shows Bruce. up as non Hulk, which is like kind of like wait, what? I thought, um, and so. Do, uh, hopefully this show will make it clear what the fuck is going on like because i thought the um, whole idea was he comboed and he's permanently professor hulk but i guess not i figured but no you can just have the best of both worlds which it by the way yeah like the, this was my primary issue when i saw this was like oh man we've just we've just given up on making hulk banner like this difficult subject because even ragnarok seemed to keep it going to some degree Try to add some fun. Yeah, it, it's it's the cool part of the concept of Hulk, the docile scientist who, like, if if anything goes a little too wrong, everybody around him is in great danger. It's um, it's it's a, it's, a, it's like that's just really potent for storytelling. Yeah, and they just kind of well, yeah. like, gave it up. They got rid of it. It's well, like if... it's like making a story about Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde, and then he's like, "Hi, I'm I'm Doctor Hyde, and I'm just." Things are. I I figured it out. Yeah, I figured it out. Yeah, it was like, oh, cool. Yeah, and you're like, oh, so what do we have left for you? <laughs> you know, it's like, well, uh, which, all right, do then. you? I guess you're still part of the team. I know Fringy knows about it. Do you know about it, Rags? The cutscene from Infinity War to actually bring all of like actually explain this. Uh, at least Professor Hulk. I don't think so. He's fighting, fighting um, the giant monster guy, which they do in the film, and then they have like a conversation where they basically agree to like live and let live, like actually yeah, work together. It, and it, when bread. you watch Infinity War, it makes it makes a lot more sense that that was in there, basically because like it, it, it feels like this is the payoff we're waiting for. That um, 
you'll become Hulk inside Veronica. And so it's like this yeah. armored Hulk, at least temporarily. Yeah. Which would be really cool but visually, but um I bet you what happened was that one of the producers were like, Yeah, but it would be better for marketing, like if we have this, wouldn't it be cool if it was a surprise in endgame? It's like, yeah, that is cool. That's how we tell stories, that's how we make <laughs> these decisions really weirdly. Something I've noticed in these interviews. Like apparently well, recently the Groucho Brothers audiences that will transmit into well, money over screens. I'm gonna get Give you an example, Rags. Like, apparently, the Russo brother said that John Favreau apparently was like opposed to Tony dying in Endgame, and said like, "Oh, you can't do that. That'll like devastate people." It's like, well, that's because yeah, that's that's because that's, cause that's like, John Favreau, <laughs> and he's a look, fool. Sure, but like John Favreau is one of the most like he 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 has a lot of big high profile like projects. Oh yeah, in, he makes a shit ton account. of money for these corporations. Absolutely. You know what I mean? But like the way that they make these decisions is so odd. Like it's so not rooted in in thinking about like what makes sense narratively. So, so yeah, weird. so little of it is not meta. Y yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. And as for speaking, speaking John of Favreau, which, I was just gonna say real quick. Like I think if you rewound enough years, his reputation is top notch. It is like going down the tubes with. Uh, I would. Yeah. YMS when, covering when he... Lion King is making it impossibly difficult not to be, like, <laughs> incredibly uh, critical. In both seasons of Mandalorian. Yeah, or... I was gonna say, like, obviously anybody who watches EFAP's coverage of, of Mando, we are dramatically unimpressed with anybody who wrote on that show and is proud of that show. I'm pretty sure he had, like, some level of a hand in Boba Fett, right? I think so. I think he was executive producer. And, uh, <sighs> yeah, so, you know, having made Iron Man... And um, some other fun stuff only goes so far, especially because there's that that old adage: "You're only good as your latest stuff," right? Something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was the a, adage, but I'm vaguely familiar with it. Something like that. I, I he don't was know. an exe Book of Boba Fett was created by John Favreau. He was one of the executive producers. Yeah. Along <laughs> with uh, Dave Filoni, Robert Rodriguez, Kathleen uh. Kennedy, and Colin Wilson. Hey, so, Kathleen. There's your explanation for why it's shit. Well, yeah, and you know, if 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 now they say like, oh, uh, you know, this next project doesn't matter what it is, is is helmed entirely, written and directed by John Favreau, I'd be like, okay, <laughs> like, so it's gonna be bad. I don't. Then. <laughs> I'd like to believe he's still capable of pushing out something because, like, uh, you watch the production of Iron Man. That is one passionate artist trying to make something work. I don't know if at this point you sort of just go in with emotions. What happened to you? Yeah, because, like, <laughs> it's really, it may sound harsh, but just watching the behind-the-scenes for The Lion King, seriously, what happened to him? Um, what a shame. But, you know, anyway. <laughs> so, the, uh, mm -hmm. th this is, coming back to the Hulk, this is what I was annoyed at. I was, I was like, all of that struggle, because I think Avengers really fucking set the bar to be too high that no other, like, I think that's a, a, the Hulk's best film. The fact that it is the Hulk's best one for sure. We Definitely. bring him in as being terrifying in the scene with Black Widow, but the he reveals to us almost that it's like I've got all this fully under control. Do you really think I don't? Like I've been doing this for a bazillion years, and I enjoy the fact that you're all lying to me all the time. Like you all treat me by a X way, try and make it sound like someone else, but just like you know, you're all judging well, me. You're you all walk on eggshells around me all the time. It was one of yeah. the reasons why you like hanging out with Tony so much. He's like the first person who treated him like a normal person. And as the film progresses, everyone does have the shifty eyes here and there. And as the audience, I think you're even sort of just like, he is the Hulk, so yeah. they're probably going to do that payoff at some point. And then everyone like is fighting, you've got the influence from the Mind Stone, and it, it starts to, uh, the stress levels are pushed up and up and up, and then the place gets hit with the uh, explosive, and he's like struggling on the floor while his skin is starting to go green, you're like, oh fuck. And they make that a horror scene. While... Yeah, while well, Black Widow is, like, trapped under debris as well. And he's just rage. It's not like he wants yeah. to kill her personally. He's just angry, <laughs> which is the Hulk. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't, I, I don't mean that to angry. appeal to a source. I just mean that that's what we've... That's what's been set in the MCU at that point. Even, you know, considering The Incredible Hulk as a film. Um, <laughs> and yeah, and then, you know, it's, it's about... That film just says, as long as we direct his rage vaguely... He can be incredibly beneficial. It's like good. That's a good start. Now where are we going? And that feels like the last time we had a really coherent sort of uh, storyline for him. Yeah, and I think um, I, I think we mentioned it before, but um, I think Edward Norton would have fought harder for Hulk 
Yeah. He would have fought harder for that character to be like more of a presence, whereas what happened was he essentially just became like a secondary character. Yeah, he's the oft forgotten um, Avenger. Yeah, no, yeah, and I think even bit. Endgame kind of like admitted that when they have their shot yeah. of Thor, Iron Man, and Cap, it's like there was another one, guys. Yeah, it was Hulk was part of it too, but I guess like I guess Mark Ruffalo's like chill with it. He's just goes like and I mean, that's that's fine, yeah. I guess, for like in terms of like he doesn't, you know, it's just lame that Hulk kind of there's so many great stories that you can tell with that character, and I kind of get the sense that this is probably the end for him. Um, oh yeah, there's people who are but, saying that he's gonna die in this show. I don't think he's gonna die. I think I he's, he's just gonna not die. Gonna be, like, I didn't think she'll she'll kind of take over. I would I would expect him to get farmed for what he's doing right now, which is that he just shows up and people go, "Ooh, Hulk!" And that, yeah, that's that's a it. Bit. Kind of, yeah, he's so. more of a plot device than a character, and he's sort of been that way for. A well, like, couple you, movies. You know how this trailer literally starts with him going like, I'm gonna scare you to wake up. You feel it any feelings of rage? I'm just like, man, we really did make it a joke, didn't we? Like, well, it's not so taken seriously it, at all. Look, alright, I am glad sometimes on Twitter, I saw on Twitter, uh, like, 100,000 plus likes on a tweet that was just pointing out how categorically downgraded Hulk has been yeah. compared to where he was. Well, I mean, we, we were all just getting done talking about how Thor's been categorically fucked completely. I mean, it's just nice that people have recognized, at least yeah. with Hulk, it's like, what happened to you? <laughs> well, it's kind of funny if you look at them, right? Like, w which is worse right now? Who's in a worse state? Hulk or Thor, would you say? Uh, Thor. Hulk oh. is just, like, thin. The Thor is yeah. damaged big time. Yeah. Hulk is... Hulk. Thor. <laughs> wow. Alright. Um, <laughs> Hulk has been... Hulk has been able to sort of come out on top in this partially because of a lack of screen time which is it seems to be amazing it's a blessing that, in disguise you know, yeah. if you're yeah. a Marvel character yeah. yeah whereas Thor has just been completely he he already had a pretty tumultuous path and then love and thunder hits and you're just like there's just you're just a shell of a thing of a creature it's like what even are you well yeah, like, and how do you um, save that they've repaired his arm as well it, for, like the they snap, it, it, I always felt they would do that because, like, you want a lasting thing from the snap so it means something forever, but at the same time, they want their Hulk back, so exactly, yeah. We don't want him with a you know bad arm, fuck that. It's like, yeah, so mm -hmm. I assumed it would just get better eventually. I don't know, I, I, I thought it was permanent. I thought it might I thought, be permanent. I thought it would be scarred permanently, it would always yeah. have like that mark. And I would settle for that, it would eventually, yeah. I, that's yeah, what I assume they're going for. We, it's that thing we've abandoned that, it's abandoned, yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe they forgot in game happened. Well, because if you don't, <laughs> for if you don't know, uh, Rags, because I've seen screenshots of it, so I guess it's confirmed at this point, but uh, they get into a car crash, he hits his head, uh, as Banner, and he starts bleeding, she's got a cut on her arm. His head like rests on her arm temporarily. His blood goes into her blood. She becomes She Hulk. That's how it, that's how Which, it works. I think uh, in the comics it was an emergency blood transfusion because she got into a car crash and like that was the only thing they could do to save her life. Which I think is more interesting as a choice. Like, in order to save your life, I'm going to commit you in a sense to like this, which you might. Not yeah, want. I. I take um, issues I slightly with right, with right. both for the wider implications, oh, sure. but I way yeah, prefer sure. the you know Bruce has to choose give her a blood transfusion now to save her, but you don't know what that's going to do to her uh, or yeah. let her die. Like I think that's way more interesting. Um, exactly. How does Hulk bleed? So it's, it's Banner. The, the I, Banner. I, yeah, but I, Banner but, shot himself in the mouth, and the other the, guy spit it out. So this is a problem. <laughs> Watch that film. Well, there's a couple <laughs> of problems. Like, first of all, why is he Banner and not Hulk? I wonder if they'll explain that. Secondly, yeah. does the Hulk can the Hulk come back out? And if not, like, so he was just easy could have died there, I guess. But then the Hulk is back here, so I don't know how it's any of this is going to work. Further flashback when they just and they know each other from that. I got no clue uh, exactly what what they're planning. Obviously, it doesn't necessarily not make any sense at all yet, <laughs> but we end up saying that a lot when we watch these trailers. Yeah. Um, but also, just that if giving even a bit of your blood to someone can make them a Hulk, quote unquote, Hulk. which uh, yeah. this show has confirmed, but I wish it hadn't. That it just makes you bigger, stronger, faster, more durable, more endurance, but it makes you green. I think there's plenty of people on Earth who will be like, yeah, I'll take it. Well, it's kind of the, um, 
because from what I understand, kind of like the shtick with She Hulk is that she likes being like a Hulk. She, yeah, like she finds it really cool and empowering. And I, and the thing is, is as presented here, like yeah, it's a, it seems like a categorical improvement. Like you can just on a whim become like stronger and and faster and like yeah it seems like that whereas in the case of hulk traditionally it's like well it's kind of like a curse really a horrible like, yeah, horrible curse it's that not, it's not you like it's it's hulk. It used to it's be treated yeah. yeah it was treated with a lot of like fear and like oh shit like this is really bad it was, which uh, means why they start off the trailer with a joke. <laughs> that's, that's, what, that's what Fring just brought up. Like, there is a line that Joss Whedon put into Avengers where Bruce admits to trying to kill himself because of this. Yeah. That's not a joke. <laughs> like, that's, that's like, it's oh, shit. Joke. Yeah. And he tried to help other people. He was good until you dragged me back into this. Oh, God. <laughs> Best Hulk movie ever. And it'll never yeah. be that way again. Not fair. Um, and yeah, so like the that's all gone, and the, it has greater implications when you remove that because why hasn't uh, Bruce looked into this if it can do this? Yeah, he's a scientist. Like, he, well, this is what he this does. is like character crap that gets in the way of a story that we want to tell character instead. Character crap. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, uh, this um, is all gonna be fun and games, but it's like, dude, you're holding on to what could be the greatest cure for everything ever. I don't know what it means to be a Hulk exactly, but it does no, seem the as though the are hoarding that. Well, yeah, they everyone to, at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Look around um, you. The fucking if everyone knew that Doctor Strange had access at one point to a book that could do anything for anyone ever, and then Thor is like, oh yeah, Eternity. And he's like, no, what? No, what's that? And he's like, oh, uh, nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> it was just a crazy fever dream, and I don't even know if it really happened. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys know Jade was a Thor for... for a brief? Huh? I need that scene where everyone comes to the, the shawarma place and just talks about absolute insane <laughs> the antics they've been on. Yeah. And just like, what have you been up to? It's like, you know, Wanda, she fucking tried to kill everything. I mean, like, everything? Yeah, like, everything. To, like, you I know, I was like. Kids into Thor. <laughs> Because, like, Shang-Chi is there, and he's like, you guys are not going to be able to beat my story. I've got, like, this giant I ghostly know. demon yeah. creature from another dimension that I... And, and then the other person's like, yeah, well, you know, whole multiverse, so... Does your story really beat yeah. mine? And he's like, huh. <laughs> like, I guess not, yeah, okay. I have it, got some notes for She-Hulk here. We, I, I guess maybe if we're going to go through them. These, these ended up being in sort of chronological order, but... Yeah, that's all good. If we need um, commentary, I've, I've got... Uh, some stuff because we we're talking about Hulk and his slide into irrelevancy. Yeah, uh, and because my second note is she's just going to be better than him in every way. She's stronger, yeah, they already... more agile. Very much, she's just better than him. All the tests he, he gives her, she nails jealous. them. Yeah, he's jealous that she nails the entire test instantly, and he's even sad because it means he can't spend more time with her. Which is just like, oh, But that's well. character crap that gets in the way of the story we want to tell. Well, yeah, imagine he was more of a ruthless trainer. Like, he was like, this is no fucking joke. Like, you, you have yeah. the kind of power that, if used improperly, can hurt people. And, like, you well, know it that... It worked out for me, basically, because of miracles sequentially. This is nothing to take lightly. This is not a joke that we start the show trailer with. This is very serious. That's why we're on this deserted island or whatever. So that if you we Hulk started... out, you don't kill anyone. It would seem that the tone for this show is, like, very comedy. Ah! Well, like, yeah, like, because he's like, are you feeling any rage? And she's like, no, normal rage. And it's like, hee 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 hee, mm. even though one of the times we were forced to rage out, you killed a bunch of people. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess he's just gotten over that. Yeah, we... <laughs> Everyone seemed, seemed like they really don't even remember it to get over it, Fringy. Age of Ultron no, is don't. a bad movie, but that is a pretty good part of that movie. The, that uh... is a good part of that movie. Because e remember when bad movies used to have good things in them? <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> that was nice. That was nice. <sighs> um, the third note I have is that uh, breaking the fourth wall and acknowledging it is really odd. She does that in the comics, so I'm assuming they're going to try yeah, and bring she, it to the screen. Or... I don't know how well this is going to yeah. work out. Because well, it doesn't I think happen it's... again in the trailer, I don't think. Uh, yeah, it just... does. It does once. It does? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I'm, I'm imagining it's probably going to happen pretty often, actually. Okay, um, that seems strange. Which is, well, it's, 
I mean, it's, 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 it's neutral. It's, it's nothing, we'll right? See. Like it's, it could be good or bad depending on how you use these tools. Well, because like, yeah. you know, uh, Kevin Spacey doing it in um, House of Cards, that was a, a really cool flourish because uh, I think people would contextualize it as he's, he, like he is breaking the fourth wall in the sense that he believes he has an audience and he's talking to it. But a lot of the time it can just be interpreted as he wants to, it's like a personal journal in a sense. Um, like rambling. Deadpool is, um, I because I get the impression that this is gonna again look all right. Yeah, She Hulk did it first. There's that's the acknowledgement that it seems like you have to make sure so that nobody thinks that you're saying that they stole it from Deadpool. Um, Deadpool the film did come out before this show, and it's like the film that was making fun of superhero films. Hmm. Um. And I think Deadpool has the advantage of it wasn't actually part of, like, the MCU. This is. So it's like you're kind of poking fun at something that you're a part of and, like, partly propagating, you know? Yeah. Like, when Deadpool's making fun of superhero films, it's kind of, like, amusing in that film because it's, like, so much. Clearly, like, this film exists in reaction to, like, the trends of superhero stuff, whereas this is, like, the Marvel thing another Marvel thing for a service that they want you to subscribe to. So, like, I'm not sure how much the meta will, like, aid in these fourth wall breaks, but I guess we'll have to see. And I will admit, this is unfair, but, like, Ryan Reynolds has been almost doing it well before even Deadpool. I don't mean the character Deadpool. I even mean, like, what feels like fourth wall breaks. Like, he's constantly meta-referencing. It's what people get pissed off by as well with him, but... I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Wade Wilson as a character and uh, the stuff that he did, it all felt like it fit a lot more than what I think this might do, but I'll happily give it a shot, you know? Let's see what they can do with yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it might the... not be terrible. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I, I was kind of thrown yeah. by the, the quote, being a Hulk asks for balance, just that I guess we've already skipped to the idea that a Hulk is a thing as opposed to, to the Hulk. Yeah, no, like, just well, the, Hulk like the, the, categor the categorization of Hulk, kind well, of it's like yeah. like Thor, a little bit, a little. It's not it's not as bad as Thor at all. Like I, I can understand why this could this could happen a lot more easily, but um, because it's like a genetic thing that happens, and then you go green and strong, and it's like because yeah. did they, did they give a reason for why he was called Hulk in uh in the original I don't film? Know. I don't know. Well, I cannot remember. But yeah, either I way, just because he's hulking, right? Like he's a hulking mass, right? Yeah, like there's you can kind of infer why that would have happened. It just you know, I I would have been curious just because like it's um a Hulk, you know, just it just feels so casual and just like wait, can are we at the point where we think that maybe we could create more of them? Uh, I don't know. I guess I guess the category seems to follow at this point now. I, I, it makes more sense to me that Hulk would be a category compared to Thor. Like Thor is a guy's oh, yeah. name. Yeah. Whereas, like, like I, said, she, I don't think that one makes like sense at all. Actually, identical attributes to like an entity, you know. Yeah. I think as what I'm getting stuck on a little individual. bit is that he's been going by Hulk as the name of his alter ego, Big Green Guy, for so long. And the second this happens, like it's like you monster, are a Hulk, yeah. as opposed to you have, you know, that's where his, his brain would go first, as opposed to you have, because she's not even, you know, she's not even huge, if you know what I mean. She's she's bigger. In the same way someone would say that there's a darkness inside of you, or something like that. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Uh, yeah, she... My next note is uh, that I, I wonder how... I guess you go ahead and you finish the... Well, because uh, the the nature of the trailer, right? Like, we were talking about how it's it seems like... We, we, we don't know if it'll be a... It kind of reminds me of uh, Boba Fett. We were trying to... We were trying to figure out, will it be a flashback or the opening of an episode that he escapes the Sarlacc pit, or will they not show it at all? I think we opted that we would... I can't remember what we said we would do, but... Um, I can't remember this, what we said we'd do. Yeah, this either. show, it could be that it starts that she's doing lawyer stuff, and then it's like, how did this all happen? And then we go... Do, 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 do. I, Let yeah, me tell you I how I got here. Yeah, like, I bet you're wondering why you mean me, me. And then it'll be quirky music. Do, 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 do. Yeah, it'll oh, be I really guess, funny. That's, um, so something that I'm, this is going to be a show about a lawyer in the MCU. That's like, there's a lot you and seemingly specifically oriented around superhero related like law cases. That's a great idea, and I have no confidence that they're going to explore oh, the interesting aspects oh. of it. My next pair of notes back to back. 
I imagine there will be very little actual legal stuff in this show. Instead, yeah. it'll be bad CGI and action scenes. And oh, that yeah. is paired sorry. up. Yeah. So, because a lot of people are saying Daredevil. So, the thing with Daredevil is that usually what is more so a thing with him is how does his secret identity, how does his like superhero stuff, how does that like factor into whatever he's like working on right now as a case? So, like, it's a little bit different, I guess, in terms of the exploration. Here, it's more so like what are the legal implications of like superheroes? Um, I've said it a few times because I think it's a clear example of this. What if you had a case where a guy killed someone and he claims it was in self-defense but he's got like super soldier serum in him so it's like well what what does reasonable fear for your life mean if like you're super duper strong like how do we how do we how do we um make determinations about like your like your intentions what you could reasonably do or uh or what you reasonably thought if like you're not quite a normal person like there's something really cool there that you could explore um i don't think they will I don't think they'll they'll explore like the the interesting legal ramifications that may come from like just normal things happening, but like with superheroes and superhuman people, um, like involved. I mean, yeah, because it uh, you get a sense maybe for a moment like, oh, we doing world building? It's like not really. It's just like container for allowing She Hulk to happen, think, which yeah. you know she's an attorney at law. That's gonna be the thing. Mm -hmm. And like they, and you know, they show an example in the trailer where she's probably doing a case for like five seconds with like actual lawyer speak. They probably got one guy to just be like, say this, this, this. and then you know, suddenly an enemy bursts in the room and she has to beat them with her She-Hulk powers. You're like, right? Yeah. And I bet you they won't be like, you know what? I think we're gonna have to like restart this court case. Like, we we need to restart. Like, we have to do it over again. This is like a massive interruption. Um, well, you know, if you want to, um reference a little bit further on but like fuck me the whole like the idea in this storyline that they've they've made seem like it's going to be a big portion of it maybe it is that she'll be representing abomination um, yeah which she shouldn't be able to do no and they the, but the show she like mentions it in the trailer and they just move past it that's a conflict of interest and they're just like oh yeah whatever it's like no not whatever that's a big deal but we don't care like it's all going to be just for jokes <laughs> I just I don't know yeah. Uh. It's not fair because like this this shit this is the, this is the kind of repercussions you should have had with the accords. Like as soon as anything like yeah. that was being done, it's like oh this will have ripple effects. And like there's those little line where it's like you know more and more superheroes are showing up, and it's just like wait is that how we're doing it now? They just they just around. Fuck it. We're not even gonna I do. I think it is. But they're just around, and like nobody seems to like care anymore. Like imagine if you were going into court and like. The lawyer who's opposite you is like a superhero. Like, you know what I mean? Like, could you imagine if they're like, you know what? I feel like very intimidated. <laughs> like, I don't like this. Um, and then try and see like if that can help. That's what I mean. They're not exploring any like interesting aspects of like this character existing. Well, maybe we will. You know what? Maybe. Maybe, maybe I'm not maybe. confident. A couple little mentions of it here and there just sprinkled in without any actual work towards exploring them will probably be enough. And then they'll be like, yep, we tackled that. We have, I mean, the, the next note I have is that there's a there's a part in the trailer where she says that there's a conflict of interest because like the... Oh, sorry, I guess you didn't hear that part where we talked about that. Yep. Are you fucking with me? <laughs> nope, we just no, talked I... about all of that. <laughs> Damn it. Um, right. But yeah, lampshading it would be the conclusion on that one, which is yes. not oh, going to yeah. change That's shit right. about yeah. how badly written this is. It made me think of Fringy when it, when she said that. Oh yeah, he would like, cry. Oh, Fringy's not going to like Fringy is he doesn't Fringy's not going to like that. Yeah, I didn't. It's really annoying. <laughs> like, like no, it's fine. You just hand wave it. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Uh, the I've got yeah. We we sort of touched on it earlier. I, I'm kind of shocked that they referenced the book of is it. Vishanti or Ashanti? Yeah. Vishanti. I'm, I'm yeah. kind of shocked they referenced the book of Vishanti. Yeah. It doesn't even make sense. Like, Wong knows it's destroyed. Why would she be doing things by the book of the destroyed book she's probably never heard of? And also, she's a lawyer, so I would, of course she's talking about the law. Like, what? Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I would, I would have talked it straight away that that's just a line that can't make any sense. Why are they treating Wong like he's an alien who only knows about sorcery? It's like, you know, he's yeah. a guy. He's, he's, not, he's he lives in, you know, yeah. Yeah, like, like this. He's, he's not. He's not stupid. 
She's like, oh yeah, we do um, things by the book. And he's like, ah oh, yes, the Book of Vishanti, a book that nobody could access and was recently destroyed forever. <laughs> Why even make the joke? And it's like, well, because there's because that's a that's a, that was in his movie book of book, book. Following on jokes, she says, no, I mean the Book of American Laws. Like it's a really awkward, quirky thing that she doesn't know how to call it. Surely in law school. There's some sort of oh, a code. I think it's just because, like, she was so blindsided by such a stupid thing that, like, when she said we're doing <laughs> things by the book, she thought that he, like, understood that what she meant was doing things according to the law. Like, yeah. Like, this guy's it's, dumb. Um, the Sorcerer well, Supreme is really stupid. That's not he's good. not meant to be dumb at all. Like, he's pretty smart. Yep. Wong is yeah, always... But he is in a Marvel show. Well, so. Except for that time when he, like, basically admitted to Wanda that there was another, like, source for the Darkhold powers. And there's, a, there's a lot of dumb shit he did in yeah. Multiverse of Madness, thinking about yeah. it. Yeah. This the is less they reference the it, the better. Oh, is that true? Is this set during the... Bl wait, that doesn't make... That white. How does that make sense, though? If Hulk well, this is, had, if Bruce had his arm in a sling. Yeah, this is post End Game because he's got the sling. This has to be post End Game. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I assume so. Um, um, I have no more notes for She Hulk Attorney at Law. Ah. Well, I mean, really, do you not? You have nothing to say about Daredevil. <laughs> I I I don't know much about Daredevil as a character. I I assume well, that's him I, with I, the I, two sticks at the end, but. Yes. His involvement in this show is apparently. I, I assume not you're worried. worried. I, yeah, of course I'm worried. I'm worried about everything that they're doing for that character going forward. Um, apparently, his involvement in this show is not small either. Oh, really? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Um, That's not I, good. I get, I get some. So, so, like, when when we we see him jumping in and he's he looks like he's wearing something that's approximating like the original yellow suit and when i see that and it's like yeah and you'll have the red suit in your show because merchandise oh my god <laughs> like you just start thinking about the implications um, do you think that a blind superhero cares that much about the color of his shirt? I guess I guess he probably would if it's to blend in and be dark well, and I mean it's to... it's all it's all part of a look right yeah, so and it's, it's all meaningful. The, yeah, what's inspired color by his dad just, as well, just, right? Just have a color. Like, there's a lot behind it. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot informing it. Um, but I, I guess like devil the... red, daredevil red, sort of makes you know, well, sense. Well, yeah. Um, um, I'm sure Charlie Cox is just like, woohoo, daredevil's coming back. Sure it's like, the sure problem is, is uh, you're not being handled by the same people. Which uh, <laughs> I I. I, I'm pretty sure, I imagine he's, like, aware of that. I, I, um, I guess the hope will be that even amidst, like, that, the, the structure of the MCU, he'll be able to fight for that character. I hope so. Man, this shot, she looks like she's been dragged in Photoshop, just <laughs> extended up, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, I know what you mean. It looks, yeah. <laughs> it's just I a green know car. what you mean. Oh, he looks, he doesn't look great either, rolling around. Well, yeah. he's doing some crazy jumps. Like, I'm, I'm, like, I'm not sure that he should be doing any crazy, like, ten foot high. Then again, like, he does like sort of swinging around with his, um, like his batons. He uses them to like swing around stuff in the comics. So maybe that's what they're doing. Can he beat her? Does he have any possible way of defeating yeah, She-Hulk? Absolute... No, no, he's the normal guy. Like, he's just a regular person. Oh. There's no way. Uh, okay. Cause so he he's normal except for his like super sense of yeah he's got the okay. he's got his All radar right. sense which is like the thing that he basically developed uh, after he was blinded to help him see things but I mean there's downsides to that he can't see screens for instance it's so, like it's ah, there are a lot true. of ways that it's an improvement but there are these sort of small like caveats as well because how as as uh, Frank Miller said how many superheroes are defined by what they can't do Daredevil is fucking awesome. And I so worry about what they're going to do with him. I wonder if... Yeah, I imagine so. Um, it's going to be anything significant, or if they're just going to try and keep it really low, because they don't know what they're doing with Daredevil yet. I, probably. That would be my guess. You, that, like, he'll you think be they were involved. testing the waters with him in Spider-Man? Um, um, <laughs> I think that they always knew that bringing him back would be like a smart idea. Um, okay. because it's it was the show that everybody liked. Like, it was the Netflix show that everybody liked. That's what um, I hear. And, 
and Daredevil is a relatively known character. So, like, it was yep. probably always inevitable. But as for, like, an 18-episode television show, I don't know that that was, like... You know what I mean? Like, they might not have known. And and so then you have, like, that writing style of just, like, you don't... I don't know. You don't know where it's going. So I guess just take it easy. But then again, nobody really writes that way in the MCU. So who knows what they're going to do. Hmm. You know the whole, yeah. like, we're starting up a division, you're going to be the face of it? I wonder if, the like, as the plot goes on, it'll be more of a, she realizes it's not at all for her talents, it's just a, a PR be, thing. Because, well, I mean, you'd figure that she would kind of clue that as a possibility straight away, right? If she's like... I just think that maybe that'll be a payoff, right? That she eventually oh, wins a really difficult case, and they're like, you know what? You are good at your job. Wow, she is a good yeah. lawyer. And that one I mean, she has, in the <laughs> I mean, like, the scene in the trailer, she has, like, a corner office, which means that she's probably, like, doing quite well at that firm. Yeah, theoretically. It I could mean... just be a, almost like a semi-symbolic sort of, well, you're the face of us, here you go, he's a nice office, but she didn't do anything. Maybe she laments, right. like, oh, I'm I'm trapped in this golden cage, and oh, I just, like, right, I well, got I mean, a nice I, office. But... I wonder if the arc will actually be, like, not as... Because even that feels like a little bit too much, right? I, I wonder if the arc is as simple as I was self-conscious about being She-Hulk, but now I like being She-Hulk. Like, I wonder if it's going to be that simple. I'm almost certain that if I was going to gamble, that's probably what I would go with. Because that, that I mean, you've got to... parts in the trailer where she seems to be walking around kind of like nervously, but then you've got like parts where she's going to these galas, like getting a whole bunch of photos taken of her. And uh, yeah, I get the impression that that might be like the arc. It it's seems like a very like, timely yeah. message, you know, like the, you know, don't be ashamed of yeah. who you are. And I think yeah. Disney will definitely lean into that and to the point where it'll, it'll be the primary aspect of, you know, well, it's her. just, you could, I, I guess, the, I, I know that earlier I was saying that I think maybe like from a production standpoint, the project wasn't super like feasible, but as for the character, I think that there's plenty you can do with the concept. Absolutely. I, I, I don't know that I find it as like innately interesting as Hulk, but I think that it's got a lot of potential, especially yeah, especially if you explore the legal aspects of like the Marvel universe and how things would change based on superheroes. Yeah, it's not it's not like a doomed concept at all. I think that you can no, do a lot. Not at all. It. Um, I, yeah. I I do think it will be a a world building disaster though. Probably um, as Probably. all MCU things do. Uh, and we'll sort of get into this a little bit with another uh, trailer that we watched, but legal politics and office, that sort of stuff, you it's it really benefits greatly from being you being talented at it. You know, it, it's it's one of those it's really bad if it's done well and you have to put a lot of work into it. And, you know, the legal system's complicated and there's a lot going on and you have a lot of competition and you will be compared to a lot of things. So. Uh, who knows? Yeah, I just feel like they're setting them. They're setting themselves up for doing something they can't handle. Um, Much like uh, another yeah. project that we will talk about as we get there. Oh yes, uh, another quote from from the trailer I thought was weird was um, Miss like so Wong says Miss Walters we we answer to a higher power. I have no idea what he's talking about. Yeah, and then he says I we're on the edge know of the precipice as well, which is funny. Of course, we're they're always the on the edge of a precipice all the time. There's always some universe-ending multiverse cataclysm. It's kind of, it's kind of boring. I don't really care at this point. Um, but yeah, the higher power thing. I assumed that he meant just like magic in general. But like, has he got? But, he would have in less context than her for dealing with all of this, right? He's what's he gonna what's he gonna tell her? Like, oh, I don't know. Like, you should. I, I'm trying to envision what that scene could even be about. I guess just be careful. I don't know. I, I could imagine that that line might even be a trailer line. It seems like his thing is with Abomination. Like, that's what Wong is up to. He's, right. He's dealing with Abomination stuff, and so maybe he brings that case to her. I don't and know. Yeah, when he says the edge of a precipice, he could be referring to just, yeah. like, public relations for, uh... I was about to say mutants. Uh, special <laughs> people. Yeah. I don't know. It's, there's so many now that, uh... What do they refer to them as? Like, eccentric Enhanced, superheroes or something? Enhanced enhanced individuals oh is that it yeah okay um but yeah that's that's where we're at there's just stuff going on all over the place at all times i'm surprised the planet is still intact <laughs> yeah at this point that there's even an economy like a functioning yeah economy. yeah 
How can a civilization a exist with all of these things world. happening in the but multiple we're never layers? Explore that. And whenever nope. we're going to explore, could you imagine if one of the cases that she like? Imagine if there was a case or, or something where, like, She-Hulk essentially, there's, like, some hyper-prejudice law that, like, gets evoked, um, that is, like, curtailing, you know, the, the rights of, like, people who've got superpowers, and even, like, even, like, the most mundane of abilities, but, like, that gives the government, like, this insane amount of power to, like, you know, persecute, uh, like, superhero people, and then she's like, nah, I don't like this, like, I'm gonna take this on and try and could you imagine if you explored like the real legal ramifications of like superheroes in there, and the, or, or like imagine if she had a case that related to the Accords? Could you imagine that? <laughs> That's never going to happen. We forgot about the Accords. Very well. It's, it's funny we say we forgot about the, the blip has been forgotten. So yeah, the Accords yeah, like is of course she, being what forgotten. If she had a case where it was like I don't know, someone lost their house or something because of shenanigans during the blip when they disappeared, and she's trying to help them like get their home yeah. back. Yeah. Like, because the bank, them. the bank said, "Oh, you don't have any income in the last five years," and they're like, "Well, yeah, yeah and I just like blipped it. away for five years." And then they're like, "But they're aren't like, you like yeah. isn't your brother Falcon?" And <laughs> she's okay. Well, it's, just, it's just it would be cool if we did that, but I get the impression it will be a lot more shallow than that, which is unfortunate. absolutely like I said, they'll and probably pay lip service to it a couple times, and that'll be it. That'll be enough. And the, and the important part would be it doesn't need to be shallow because it's a comedy. That's a stupid way of thinking about it. You can still be a comedy and meaningfully explore these topics. Yeah, especially Maybe after you know we're off the heels of Love and Thunder and the comedy mm -hmm. drama, the, the failure to distinguish between the two and separate them. It's kind of like, ugh, get away from yeah. it. <laughs> oh, uh, anyway. Fun stuff. Well, what else would she help for this? Attorney at law. Well, yeah. So I guess the only other thing to say is that, um, uh, what what is what what are you each feeling about even watching it at all? Uh Dad, I was don't gonna, care. I'll probably, I'll probably watch it. I, if happens. we end up watching it, of course, watch it with y'all. But I don't personally care. Uh, I don't have any particular interest in the show. Um, Dead was a reason why I want to see it. I also want to see it out of curiosity, just in general. I'm I don't know yeah, why I'm there curious. Well, then, I guess we'll give it a look. We'll give it a I watch guess, then. In a sense, this could end up being one of the less conventional shows that they make, and that alone might be like, hmm, what does that look like when yeah. they really... Yeah. I, I mean, I say really... Curiosity. Break the but I don't know. Well, I guess we'll we'll go through it. How, hey, how many Tim episodes Roth is will be supposed in it. to be? Uh, nine episodes. But it's okay, like half an hour. Oh my god, sure. they're getting longer now. It's amazing. Oh, I don't wait, know, half an hour each? Know. Yeah, they're like not an... Okay. Well, I mean, then again, the hour-long ones often had episodes that were like 30 minutes. So I don't even know what that means, really. Uh, but I think it's like well, a half-hour show. So it might okay. be shorter. So I would say that, out of uh, all the trailers we're going to look at, is the one that I had the most to say about. <laughs> we'll, uh, okay. So, 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 so. I think you're probably right. Yeah, actually. I was I just speaking for myself. True. I don't know about you guys. Oh, I was looking through my notes, and it had the most uh, sort of written out notes. A lot of it we just naturally touched upon. Mm -hmm. But I think that is, yeah, I think so. I think you might be right. Because, well, maybe, maybe there'll be something to say about like Black Adam or Shazam. We'll see. Yeah, we'll um, see. Next up is Black Panther: Wakanda Forever, which Wakanda Forever. Before we even knew anything Wakanda about this forever. film, we knew. It was having a real bad production time. Production, uh, yeah. Certainly, it's funny to say, right? I'm like, the script was having. It's like, really, really, a Marvel, a new Marvel thing. The script is having trouble. It's like, yeah, I know, right? We're at the point where they're writing it for the first like lines of the script while filming. Is there anything worse wow. than that? It's like, I don't know. <laughs> really? So well, that's what, what did I'm they saying. Film? That's what I'm saying. What happened with MOM is the. They had the three or two weeks, which is three weeks, which was shortened to two weeks, and then it got scrapped, and then they just had to write it as they were filming. So, so they essentially told the the production team was told, "You're going to film here, here, and here, and these sorts of scenes. Get started on those. We'll write why this is happening here." I think so. I think that at this point they have set pieces, and then dialogue is mainly what the writer is supposed to do. That's insane. <laughs> It really That's is. Insane. Yeah, like, That's they, like they knew that they were going to have an Illuminati battle, but as for how they got there, or like exactly, yeah. Like figure that yeah. out later. Which uh, I mean, it shows. 
is amusing to listen to them talk about like their fun fun ideas with the Illuminati when like to this day people don't even know if they were supposed to be portrayed as good or evil yeah, which uh, I think funny. they were supposed to be good it was just incompetent yep I think so too um, as if um, you're going to try yeah, and evoke but... like the, the wisdom of Charles Xavier also being like no he's evil though <laughs> nice so anyway yeah uh, this Wakanda forever this film, broad so, strokes, we assume its its main goal is to try and, you know, move on from, uh, well, appreciate but move on from the in-universe death of, of T'Challa. T'Challa. Because yeah. they made yes. the decision pretty much instantly they weren't going to recast him. Uh, that was probably the correct move. I don't know. I think, I, 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 I wonder. Um, I wonder if there's, because it's kind of like, it's it's the difficulty of you may want to keep the character, like keep the character around and keep telling stories with the character. But at the same time, I think, I think, I think with regard to the film anyway, a lot of it is tethered to Chadwick Boseman. And so like, in that sense, it's kind of like, tri it's tricky. I think. I I'm think not sure so. what I, I would do if tricky. I was given the choice, like whether to recast the character or, um, or have the character, have the mantle moved on to like, and then just sort of, Yeah. I I don't know. I'm not sure what I would do. Um, the I guess the first thing we have to get out of the way, of course, if we don't like it, we will be racist. Uh, now that we said that, I think it's very strange that th this trailer is. I don't know. It's an odd one. It's an odd trailer, but I, I think, think I think it's like it's it's kind of like the first half is more of it's, it's almost, almost like a a, eu a eulogy almost. Yeah, I assume yeah. yeah, a lot of it is probably scenes from the funeral that will probably yeah. be near the beginning like, of the plotline. And then the second half is is kind of like oh, but we this is still a trailer that needs to market like the like we, we still need and places yeah, pretty much shoving all the marketing stuff typically that you need. Yeah, well, I would argue what this trailer benefits from is limited dialogue. And so we get to Absolutely. just think we about don't get dialogue what might until be in like it. halfway through. Yeah, and and you There's know the lot. She Hulk trailer. A lot of the criticism comes from the dialogue. It's like, oh, look at this tonally, or look at what they. Why would they say this, or what does this mean? But this trailer is more so. We just get to think about what the events might be. Yeah, well, and I mean, I guess in 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 terms of like what those events might be, this feels like another film that's going to cause damage world building wise because oh, there was an ancient civilization like underwater, another one that just yep. never got involved in anything. Like oh, I've got that on my notes. I already sense yeah. massive world building issues. I wrote down. Yeah, I mean, of course, it's Atlantis, like, right? All these places. And... Uh, I think they've changed the name. It's now named after like an Aztec city because like it's it's much okay. more like Mesoamerican influence now than than i think it is in the comics which is kind of, i think that's cool i like um, it too i really think that uh, yeah. there's a really cool aesthetic there yeah uh, yeah exactly explored, that we don't see often uh, and i do have mm -hmm. a, a note saying people riding whales what is this avatar shit well so something we will that see I saw was, um it looked like uh namor's throne was like megalodon jaws which is kind of cool yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, so this, but like that's all I have for it, right? It's kind of cool visually, but as for like any speculation, I don't, I don't know anything about Namor really, or like Atlantis and anything. Yeah, their relation I, to Wakanda. It's all very, um, like this. This could all just be anything. I don't know what we're dealing with. Like, yeah, it's not very substantive. Um, it's very mm -hmm. much, you know, well, very spectacly trying to put out a vibe. Uh. I guess it seems like the broad strokes is Wakanda's going to go to war with, uh, I, I guess we'll just keep calling them Atlanteans, like, until no, exactly. And meanwhile, we'll be figuring out who's going to take on the mantle, and it's probably Shuri. Though maybe that'll change now. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if that changed now. Well, what's the... Yeah, because we, we don't we, get the... We, we know because of meta information, right? Like, what's going to happen? Um... I, I well, I don't think we know. I think it's just that like there's reason to believe that it. I because I think this it's Mbaku, right? Winston Duke. That 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 might be the guy. Though, admittedly, I always figured it made a bit more sense because I thought, based on Civil War, that Black Panther and King were not the same thing. Right. There was the King, and then there was a Black Panther, and in the case of T'Challa, it ended up that he was both. And so, like, part of my thinking there was, well, so it could be anyone. It's like, what about Lupita Nyong'o's, like, character? She was, like, a fighter. Like, she could be Black Panther. And then maybe Shuri takes on, like, the mantle of Queen or something afterward. 
Right. You know? Like I. Well, because yeah, another that, part of the confusion option. is the um how the succession works and and the trial by combat stuff. Like so. Yeah. Are we doing that again, or are they going to throw that out because it was crazy? I don't think I don't think we're going to do that again. Um, that was such nah, a huge mistake. So. Uh, in terms it of seems like building um, this. like uh, uh, Queen Queen um, uh, ba uh, Angela Bassett, like that she's yeah. just going to be uh, the queen now. Like she will be the head of state. Yeah, and I doubt she won a fucking trial by combat to do so. Like I, uh, or no, that she'll be challenged. That's, be, yeah, it's probably just yeah, she just succession, is. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but, you know, the end of this movie is probably going to be, like, a new uh, leader. And I wonder probably. how it'll be picked. Is it just a political thing, or, or is it more than that? Is it going to yeah. be, they got to fight? Who knows? That's the thing. Who knows? Exactly. Um, how they pick the leader. And, yeah, of course, uh, Namor. Like doors are open. Namor's one of, like, the oldest Marvel characters, isn't he? He is one of the oldest. I think, I don't think he, he predates Aquaman. Am I... He might. I, I'm pretty sure that he is, like, he's much older than, like, Captain America and stuff. I think Gary said... Oh, wait, no, Captain sorry, America. not Captain America. He's, he's I think old. he is older than is Captain he... America, though. Namor uh, is 1939. I... Fucking hell. Captain America was, like, 1940, wasn't he? So he might actually be older, yeah. Who's the first Captain Marvel America character? Captain America's first appearance was in uh, 1941. Yeah. I was So it wasn't, I think, Marvel, because Marvel, like, formed... Because there were different companies before, and then then Marvel came about. So like, it's hard. To, I'm not sure. I don't know. Everyone's saying uh, he's older than Aquaman. Is... Wait, Namor was okay. the first. Aqu really? So literally the first ever Marvel issue. Oh, okay. Wow, wow. that's neat. Yeah, that it is says neat. that the Human Torch is popularly considered to be the first ever Marvel superhero. Uh, the first debut was in Marvel Comics number one, 1939. It says that um, it says that Namor debuted in that one. I think. Okay. Oh, so they they kind of joint are they or? Maybe, yeah. So is it, which one was in the panel first? I I, I guess. think that probably yeah. yeah. <laughs> probably <laughs> might probably come down to it. it. Um, I have an I some of these notes are just observations that are odd. Um, it's strange that we see someone wearing elephant tusks as earrings. Uh, that just strikes me as an odd thing. Uh, it is weird. It's I'm I'll I'll just say this. It's weird to see an umbilical cord in a Disney trailer. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's probably allowed by the senses, I guess. Um, I guess it just seems odd. What's the? Uh, I have a feeling that yeah. It's the I don't know if you know the answer to this for you. What's, what's the dealio with with Namor? Is he because like the he's an anti-hero, I think. Oh, I don't mean um, that. I meant like species, because there's like the blue people, but I'm guessing the blue people are what? I think the he's underwater. Just, I think he's a mutant, right? Isn't Namor a mutant? I don't know. I think, I think he is. Um, what does it say on Leol Wikipedia? It says that he's an Atlantean mute human mutant hybrid. Hmm. Uh, I'm assuming but he maybe can go, they'll change that. He can walk in both worlds. Oh yeah, I mean, we, I mean, we see him do that in the trailer, right? Like, yeah, he's uh, he's like Aquaman. I get well, Aquaman's like Namor, rather. Which, by the way, Namor is a better name than Aquaman. Oh, of course, saying. it's a better name than Namor Aquaman. is absolutely yeah. a better name. Aquaman is almost like part of the just meme quality of it. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, someone posted this, which I do not like. Oh yeah, that's the um. That's the controversy that happened. They promoted the film's yeah. trailer on Chadwick Boseman's Twitter account, which is not the first time we've had this happen. It's really... <sighs> yeah, yeah so it's don't, really like... I uh, don't like it. Yeah. Um, They've done stuff with Stan Lee's uh, Twitter account, right? Yes, yeah, they, they have. have. Yeah, the NFTs, wasn't it? Stan oh, Lee's. God. That, see, that to me is worse. <laughs> if, oh, of course. Yeah. Because yeah. like at, at least this is this, tethered too. to him. Yeah, like it's tethered. Because I mean, the film is probably going to be dedicated. I mean, almost certainly dedicated to him. Yeah. Um, but, but I think that this will probably have among the worst combat uh, because they have to try and account for tribal level weaponries and spears and things. While also there was some pretty crazy technology that we saw as well in terms of ships flying around and guns and stuff so i imagine the action they're not going to be able to take into account these different things in the fights we'll have similar so problems it'll be tough. that the first one tough, had yeah. this is the thing the first the one reality. is one of the most overrated films in like history the reality oh, yeah. is that like 
like Wakanda and Black Panther, it's a really cool high concept. Um, it's a challenging one though. Like from a world building perspective, there's a lot to absolutely. try and account for. It's really cool though. Um, yeah, it's just, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's, it's hidden. Yeah. I mean, it's it's the same here. Like like you, there's a lot of stuff visually that I like here. Of of like all of the like yeah, oh, absolutely. American sort of uh designs and stuff featuring in the Atlanteans and I mean on on a surface level I like a good amount of the Wakanda stuff visually. Um, yes, I think that... a lot of work went into making this look very oh, visually yeah. appealing and interesting, more so than that's probably for... any of these other trailers. I might even say it's got more of a it yeah it's got yeah. more of a unique look to it. Um, there seems which... to be some it level feels of less cringe to it. It yeah, does it feel less cringe. Does, yeah. yeah, this is, this trailer feels <laughs> less cringe. It looks like there's some <laughs> level of caring that went into this. I think um, so. I I I think um I think when given given the nature of like this film, the fact that you're trying to make a film that follows on from a character who is played by a great actor yeah. and like a character who and an actor who is very associated with that character in popular culture, it's like and and then to have to try and like make this film after that yeah it's probably like a really big challenge that demands a level of care i guess we had how how much what's that have we had something similar to this since um carrie fisher died i guess um a similar example i suppose this is Obviously Somewhat that, in the vein. Yeah, that's another way to do it, to take previously filmed scenes and chop them into a new movie, which I still don't feel comfortable uh, about. I don't, yeah, I think uh, The Rise of Skywalker did it the wrong way, just flat out the wrong way. And um, cause yeah, we, I there doubt... was a time where we hypothesized, will The Rise of Skywalker open with mm. Leia's funeral? He has died in between movies. Well, it would have been an excuse to run a funeral for all three of them. A, a, the grand Absolutely. funeral about the heroes of, you know, but no, they don't do that. Yeah, because Han's a loser. Luke's People a forgot hobo. about Luke. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, you know, the that portion of this movie is probably going to be like really good. I, I can't see how they would screw that up. But, uh, yeah. I agree. As it soon will as... probably not be very dialogue heavy. It'll be plot. It will... It'll be plot. That'll be the yeah. thing that will probably derail the film. Um, yeah, the Atlanteans I... and all that shit coming in is going to get. Oh, really it'll be weird. crap. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but. I, I do think, yeah, the funerary aspect of it. There is a level of meta reverence that they recognize and know that they need to treat well, mm -hmm. yeah. which and I'm I, sure probably, they probably didn't happen a lot. But yeah, absolutely, yeah. He was probably their friend. Like they they would have known him. So I imagine, it, like I said, this like... looks like they care. This is a trailer that looks like they care. Also, somebody just mentioned it in Let's chat, and I just out. want to bolster it because they, they said TLJ still has the best layer death scene, but then they had to Mary Poppins it all up. I remember thinking. In the cinema, there is a chance here that that was it for Leia. She got fucking killed by her son, and it's so sudden, and she's out of the fucking trilogy already, and that there's balls to that decision. Um, kind of. But then. <laughs> but, but then. then. But then. Then the scene happened that when I watched it with a friend, he fucking lost his mind. I not believe that was happening. What was the scene? That split a lot of people. Some people thought it was incredible, some people thought it was nothing, and then some people thought it was the most hilarious bullshit they'd ever seen. I think that was, I was just in shock. Like, what am I watching? What's, yeah, what, I think, what is happening? I think that <laughs> would have been my reaction as well. Like, what? Yeah, same feeling I had when I walked out of the theater. Just confusion. What was that? Oh, and that's funny to remember. That scene is where Akbar died, but like, nobody cares. <laughs> it's just like, oh. No one cares. Yeah, okay. they, you see the, yeah, it's like the little red arrows. Like, there he goes. Bye. Oh, bye. Toodles. Bye. Uh, For you. So yeah, I don't really have as much. For, for no, I don't either. Like the this is the shortest for me. Um, I have it looks like cute short animations for kids, and it will likely have the best dialogue in the recent MCU. Oh wait, what? Prime Groot. Oh, I wasn't. I was still talking about Black Panther. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. All right. But you, you know what? You probably summarized. Yeah, that's there you go. We've done there, our conversation. Yeah, I am Groot there. now okay, in the middle of yeah. Black <laughs> Um but because the only so other thing far, I was... yeah, what kind of forever? Interesting. I was gonna say like yeah, it, it, uh, depending on what we get from like a second trailer, I I could be interested to give it a shot, but uh, I'm just mm -hmm. I don't know that it's gonna survive the craziness of being in. Yeah. This is phase. This is yeah, still phase four, right? Hell. This is the end of phase four. This right, is right. It. Yeah. And, um, and I mean, it makes sense, right? Because Doctor Doom is gonna. We all you all know about that, right? Like Doctor Doom is gonna be in this film. When you say you all, in you Wakanda mean Shadow? Forever. Or? 
Yeah. Yeah, chat, be, beware. Uh, Doctor Doom is on yeah. his way. We, we've been saying it for a long time. They're going to pick one the of Fantastic them. Fantastic Four Doctor Doom? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yes, the, all right. The guy with his big old cape and tip lights, like a person. He's, he's... <laughs> it was always going to be him, Galactus, Mephisto, or Namor. That was the four that I thought about. We're doing Namor and Doctor Doom. Okay, yeah. and Doctor Doom is like insanely smart, and he has lightning powers. Oh, he's, he's like one of the big bads. He's he's, uh, he's like he's one, one of, of people's absolute favorites to the point where if they fuck okay. him up, people are going to be pissed, and they probably will. Gosh, yeah. I had no idea that he was so up there. Well, so for he's me, it was fun, because the first time I encountered him, I thought he was goofy as fuck, and then I was like, oh, he's kind of cool, though, and he grew on me completely, which I think he did with everyone. He's such a, like, yeah. he's so eccentric, um, <laughs> yeah. uh, got, he's usually got a fantastic voice whenever there's, like, a, a audio version of him or whatever, but then he, he's also just incredibly mm -hmm. threatening, he's got a very unique look, like, and the fact that, yeah, mm -hmm. he got, he's intelligent, he's usually the leader behind some big horrible event for heroes to have to and deal I with. I think that's the, uh, that's, like, what his involvement will be, probably, is that, I think, I think it's, like, the, the, the speculation, or at this point, perhaps even, like, confirmation will be, like, post credit scene, and he's, like, behind the scenes okay, making stuff happen. Um. Yeah. Which, yeah, but as for, like, where any of that goes, I guess we'll have to see. Well, yeah, because, I like, do we have time know. for something like this, if we're gonna be doing Secret Wars? I mean, we'll get to that, we're gonna talk about it, but you know, like, what what does it mean to have an individual villain when you're doing, like, all of the multiverses crashing well, on each other? especially when Kang seems to be the big bad, or the That's so funny, though, right? Because above him in level, it's crazy. He's been introduced fully, and you'd be like, so what is, what, what what's Kang's motivation? You're like, no clue. I don't even know if that I guy will ever yet. be seen again, the one we saw in Loki. I guess not, presumably. Presumably not, yeah. not. It'll be someone else. Uh, yeah, and then there's the, the shot of, like, new Black Panther, who dat? And it's like, well, I suppose that Probably could Shuri. be anybody. But, uh, Probably yeah. Shuri. Yeah, and that, that's, that, that's, <laughs> that's Wakanda basically. forever. Yeah. This, I, as you said, there's just less for us to say about this one. I think that's expected because of the way they've done this trailer. Um, yeah. Probably testing the wars, see what people think about this so far. And well, the next more. trailer will probably be a much more conventional trailer, that would be my guess. Though, we are not quite done no, with Wakanda Forever. Oh, okay. <laughs> because this this has gone around quite a bit, so I was just gonna... This is the expected uh, plotline, and it's curious to see how much do we believe this matches with uh, the trailer, I guess. We got Lake Bell plays a scientist who's an original character. She and her team searching for vibranium in the ocean, which is strange because I thought they had like, do you remember their mine for vibranium? It was absolutely fucking gigantic. Oh, like, enormous, yeah. The idea that they're like, we're searching for more of it in the ocean is like, okay, that's fine. Don't have well, that's right. that's yeah, fine. So I guess better. Like, yeah, but this would not be Wakandans, right? This would be like other countries. How could they go out there? Yeah, I. Oh, that's interesting because I thought insular, right? I guess the the comet then wouldn't have crashed solely in Wakanda. It's like there's other bits around. Well, maybe there were fragments that got blasted into space and rained back down. Must be. Yeah. I guess if, if vibranium is that tough, maybe you could say it's just that it's st just stayed together. Also, Riri Williams is going to be Ironheart, right? Yes. Yeah. So that's that'll, that'll be that's Phase Five, I presume. Yeah, the show I think is coming out next year. Okay. But Namor is awakened and kills her team. Namor asks Wakanda for help, but they turn him down. T'Challa passes away from sickness. It's going to be awkward to try and sort of make that. I think we're just going to have to, yeah, accept yeah. that it was a it was a very sick sickness that they just couldn't cure. Namor wants to kill Riri, but Wakanda protects her. Riri's first suit is made out of cars. It sounds very similar to Doctor Strange having to protect America Chavez from Wanda. Yeah. But uh, Riri's Wanda first Kanda? suit. I like that this is said so casually. It's like Riri's first Iron Man suit basically is made of cars. But no, when she gets to so yeah. Wakanda, she gets one made out of vibranium. It's like, I think they're going to actually going to do the thing where they give her an incredible Iron Man suit like immediately and not even her own thing. Yeah. Which, that, that, does that not undermine her? Like, just a she bit. She doesn't even get to make a super cool suit. Someone else makes it for her. Just a bit. It reminds me of the Captain Falcon suit where, like, it's not even a. Like, <laughs> doesn't even cover his. 
all of his parts, you know, and it's just like, do you want a suit? We can make you a superhero suit. Go nuts. There you go. It's made out maybe, of indestructible metal. Maybe she'll get to go to a laboratory and, and design her own vibranium suit. Maybe that'll be yeah. the way to bridge the gap. Of I just basically shortcutting the character while getting the you know a little bit of character development. God, what a rush, you know, like packing in an Iron Man origin movie into a different movie. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the war between Wakanda and Atlantis, Shuri's mum passes away, and parts of Wakanda are flooded, which matches the trailer. Shuri makes an artificial flower to gain Black Panther powers, which means they are committing to the whole Killmonger destroyed their entire crop, I guess. Which is I so guess, fucking yeah. stupid. Um, I will always hate idea. the fact... That's just another example. They've got this, this flower, you crush up into a, a goo, you drink it, and you become, like hyper powerful and just like guys yeah like damn. you think of the applications for this and it's like no culturally I mean, you're only allowed it if you're a black panther it's like oh yeah between that and vibranium jesus you guys did you guys yep. cheat on the civilization start yeah <laughs> cranked all the bonus resources or whatever uh she expects t'challa but meets killmonger she, she goes to the ancestral plane why the fuck would she meet killmonger why would killmonger be there that, like, oh, you're oh. So fucking you. inappropriate. I I really don't like how much people like Killmonger. <laughs> it's... Killmonger said he was going to kill children. Yep. It's like, uh, do you remember that in Bioshock Infinite, the um, the Vox Populi leader? She's like, I'm gonna kill Fink, but I'm also gonna kill his kid. Uh, yeah, yeah. She's I evil. Do. Yeah. Yeah. That's... And it, it played <laughs> as her being evil. Like she is evil. They yeah. They seem to be aware of that in Bioshock Infinite. In Black Panther, they were like. You know, it's complicated. <laughs> it's like, not really, but okay. No, not really. So he helps her become the new pa Black Panther, and she makes her own Black Panther suit, which is just like, Killmonger helps Shuri become Black Panther. Okay. And maybe that's why it's got the gold embellishments on it in honor of Killmonger. I don't know. That does not sound good. So no, big war. Big war between the two nations. Shuri defeats Namor, but doesn't kill him. Umbaku is the well, new king. Make... Oh yeah, sure. there's no way they'd kill Namor in the fucking this movie. Yeah. He's gonna be around for a while. Umbaku is the new king of Wakanda, while Shuri is the Black Panther. Akia tells okay. Shuri that she has a son from T'Challa. That's the end. Um, Does she not know that? Well, I'm guessing that's gonna be right at the end. That she... Why would Shuri know that, necessarily? Like, is she, like, she's how does that work? Does she like? Does she not know she's pregnant, or how? So the Shuri, Shuri is T'Challa's sister. Um, he's <laughs> talking about Lapuita Nuongo's character, who she yeah, Nakia was, is like um, the girlfriend. Yeah, she was like Black Panther's oh, girlfriend. Oh, I I misread the sentence. I yeah. Nakia is. I thought I read this as Nakia was telling Shuri something that about Shuri. No, no, no. That's what it, confused me. That's what confused me. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right, then, I gotcha. Yeah, and this is this is the thing. This is post credits. They filmed a post credit scene with a stand-in for Doctor Doom, which is thought to be the one who sent Lake Bell's team to cause some crazy shenanigans, I guess. Which yeah, guess gets so. him gets him in. He wants vibranium excited. for yeah. He wants vibranium. What's he building? For some crazy mech, yeah project he's working yeah. on. What's he making? That'll be the fate. Maybe that'll be part of the Phase Five Big Bad. I think that'll be them setting it up. But, yeah. That'll be their logic. See, it is the end of Phase 4, Doctor Doom. <laughs> but no, Fantastic Four is in Phase 6, so that doesn't... I don't up. know what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> I don't well, think I they, know they know what the fuck they're doing. they can change it whenever they want? Or... Yeah. yeah. Who knows what Who will knows? actually happen with that. Especially with how these films seem to get made. Who knows? They, they, don't, may, they might not even know. They could just be hedging their best bets. It's like, well, that sounds like something we could do with later. All right, pencil that in. <laughs> Phase five is a mess. It's like we haven't even started phase five. <laughs> we haven't even gotten there yet. Yeah. Phase four is a mess. So yeah, um, I am Groot. I'll probably that'll probably be fun. Probably Groot. it'll probably be cute and fun. Yeah. Nice can't see and them. Simple, can't see them ruining everything with that. <laughs> it should be fine. As well, so it might be a little bit more creative and inventive. You'd hope so, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm a. Uh... I'm Groot will be cute. I'm sure it'll be very cute. Hopefully this will fun. be the least offensive thing that they ever make at this point. Mm. I would wager so. And so, with those sort of said and done, it's just this image to have a little chat about. 
the state uh. current state <laughs> of phase five because yeah what we've just seen was the end of phase four and then this is phase five starting of course with uh no, yeah and and i don't i don't know if they're going to try and make it so that you know black panther ends with some kind of thing that makes us feel like ah oh, yes that was the end of a phase i, I don't know mm. i don't even know how you would do I that well, it, it, when it was filmed, it probably wasn't the end of the phase, so I don't, you know, like, <laughs> I don't know. Well, that's why I think that, that Doctor Doom after credits could legit be the way they're like, see, this was great, right? That's the end of phase yeah, four. Exactly. Woohoo, Doctor Doom yeah. is here. Woo. Like, okay. You look so, at that list, though. Look, look at those projects. Well, yeah. So first up, Ant-Man of the Wasp, Quantumania, which we've known is coming for a while. Uh, I don't know what to even, like, yeah. <laughs> No so, clue. what do we know about this? It's, uh... Kang. Kang is in it, yeah. He's gonna be the bad I think, guy. Um, I think they also expect MODOK as well. That's what I've heard, yeah. Yeah. Um, and more Quantum Realm stuff, I guess. So, Michelle... <laughs> I was wondering oh, I've also heard get back to the Quantum Realm. They're planning on Michael Douglas will die in this one, which... It's like... Took your time with that, I suppose. But that's fine. Yeah, I guess. Um, yeah. It makes. I think it makes a lot of sense narratively to use that at some point. The guy is probably like, "I'm. I'm done now. That's fine." Uh, I'm yeah. surprised he's still they, still going with like Ant Man and the Wasp. Yeah. Um, does this count as a trilogy, or does it count as now? Because you got Ant Man, Ant Man and the Wasp, Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania. You know what I mean? I feel like that's a trilogy. Well, it yeah, almost like, feels like it's um one movie and then two movies in a, in two, a trilogy. Two like a and then two trilogy. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. But um, you know, the what did we think of Ant Man and the Wasp? We all saw that, right? No, I did see it. I saw it, and I just don't like remember. That's the the because people say Thor two is the one. It's like no, it turns out it's actually Ant Man uh, and the Wasp because it's so forgetful. You forgot you even like it's a film in the MCU. It, yeah. I no, I saw it. Like I I remember things occurring, like bits and pieces. Got, but I just don't. Lawrence had, Fishburne um, is in it. Had Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah, is Goliath. Yeah. Go Ghost. That's the name of the girl, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And I remember and just she has stuff. she yeah she's got quantum dis dismanglement and then and then Michelle Pfeiffer has quantum over manglement and they they do the flumes and then she's back to normal or whatever and it was like oh great that's that that's a payoff I guess you're describing mm -hmm. that and I just do not remember any of this <laughs> I remember that they say quantum a million times over and they think it's really funny when it's just like nothing makes sense nothing at all um, and you know we're gonna get way more of that. Uh, oh yeah, it's called Quantum Mania for Christ's sake! Like, God I damn. imagine this. F do Do you think this film's gonna be consequenceless? Like, basically, what feels like? I think like... it'll be consequential, right? Because Kang's in it. I don't know. I don't know if it'll just be a variant of Kang they defeat. Oh, I'm stuck. Yeah, I don't know. I think it could go either way. I think they could just. <sighs> they could go either way. Know. That probably would be. I could see it being inconsequential, but also consequential. I could see one of those. Yeah. Happening. Yeah. Like, I mean, K Kang does something on the quantum level realm that actually yeah. turns out it changes everything. But it's another one of those something happened all along in the background sorts of things. and Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we know that they're not ready to... Like, I think the snap was almost like, you guys are not ready to commit to big things in the universe, actually. So I bet they're hesitant to do something like that again. Yeah. It'll probably be a very light-hearted and easy-going film, I'd imagine. That's what uh, the probably. Seem to yeah. be. Then again, maybe they'll go a little bit harder because. I mean, we haven't mentioned the synopsis, right? That apparently Scott doesn't care about his family, even though that's oh, like his whole Oh, right. Life. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, like the, one job. the bio of the film. The draw. Yeah. The, what, what is like the, the, the quick vision of that? He's, he's, writing, he's written a book uh, and it's gotten some praise, and so he's, he's too busy promoting it to, to care about his family. Yeah, even though like his whole motivation in terms of undoing the snap was to bring back like that's his some family, bullshit. And wasn't mean, he like in prison and stuff because he needed also, to get money for his family and everything? Remember, he lost like five years with his daughter. Um, yeah. Like he's 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 not he's not going off doing all this stuff, you know. Like he's he's spending time with his family. Yeah, and I, like, I told I don't you, want... I guess. I don't have to deal with fucking what's her name telling him like you need to be a better dad. I was like, shut up, no. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me well, because she's gonna be uh, she she's a superhero. The yes. Well, she, oh yeah, the yeah. daughter will be. She's like purple, right? Yeah. 
whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone can be superheroes. Um, and yeah, that being the premise is not enticing to begin. It's like, ooh, bad start. Yeah. And then what's next up? Secret Invasion, the Nick Fury show. Yeah, which is supposed to be about what? That there are, there are scrolls. Scrolls have infiltrated Earth governments and stuff. How, um, how is that not going to have huge ripple effects? Well, so in the comic, it's one of the bigger, like, stories from what I understand. Like, it had big consequences. So I don't know about this show and how meaningful it will be. Surely they would have given up at this point to the, to the idea, like, if someone's like, okay, so it turns out everyone in the White House is actually a scroll. And someone goes, well, wait, how does that play into what we're doing? It's like, da -da 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 -da. don't. That's our story, mm. okay? You can I tell your story. Scrolls, good guys. So, like, I guess these will be the evil scrolls. I thought it was um just those scrolls were good guys, the ones that Captain oh, Marvel bumped okay, into. Right. I, I can't remember how explicit they were in Captain Marvel, right. but I think the idea is that not all scrolls are good guys. Oh well, I mean, I figured you'd have some bad guy scrolls. Yeah. I suppose the funny why, part why is why that they, they were infiltrating Earth, though, compared to any other planet. You know, well, well, because, the they wanted to because get away Earth from is the most important fucking planet place. in the universe. That's true. Oh yeah, I guess. Everything's on Nothing Earth, bad yeah. ever happens on Earth. Let's settle here. Um, well, I guess somehow inexplicably it seems to survive everything. So maybe it is. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. The safest planet in the universe. But with the uh, secret, because like the funny thing about Captain Marvel, I think, is that it's so badly written that they did come across as bad guys. Those scrolls, if you remember how it all <laughs> yeah, goes. Yeah, they did a lot of evil things. Seemingly. Absolutely. Well, they, Until the film said, "No, no, no, they're good." They, they knocked they were her out. Absolutely evil kidnapped her and probed her memories to find what they wanted and when she woke up they give her all those like stupidly suspicious lines instead of just being yeah, honest with her. Evil messages then they try to kill her by shooting her with <laughs> guns. It's Yeah that was um, that was pretty stupid kind of... for someone you need. There's that a lot movie's of that. bad guys. That movie's that... really bad. Captain Mo what are, where are we at with like do we think Black Widow, uh, Thor Love and Thunder, and MOM are in a different class compared to Captain Marvel? I, it feels like it. I think, I think Captain Marvel had enough meh in it that it, it actually does sail above those three. I think Captain Marvel is still in that old school kind of tier yeah. of bad movie. <laughs> yeah, it was like the worst of the old school bad. Yes, and now we've graduated into the into phase whatever we are in with bad <laughs> whatevers. And it's just badness on a different level where nothing works. We wish for mediocre waste of time, if only. It's, yeah, we, uh, we're dealing with something. Thor, Love and Thunder, and, and MOM especially. Gosh darn. Because I don't know what it is. For some reason, I feel like I'm more forgiving to Black Widow. Maybe it's just because of the fact that I'm further away from it, time-wise. Maybe. That could just be it. Uh, so yeah, Secret Invasion. Don't know what the fuck's going to be dealing with. Just Nick Fury, Scrolls, and probably incredibly horrible world-building repercussions, but Probably. let's be honest, Someone that is the least of their care. Like, world-building is just out, they don't care anymore. Oh yeah, it's 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 gonna be miserable in all of these. World-building is gonna be a catastrophe. Uh, it's not, that's, like, that's just like a given, whether it's Star Wars or MCU, it's too many people doing their own things, and world-building's just, just write it off. Mm-hmm. Uh, someone in chat did say that 2019 is so old school, and it's weird because it feels so true. It does feel old. 2019 is just, it was only three years ago, but it feels like we've crossed a line. Like, it's just a different era of where bad we was just, it's like, bad, it's bad guys. We were different men but back then. Things we were, were different. We had hope back then, and now we're just angry old men mm -hmm. sitting on our porches. Man, damn she, you used to tell stories with characters in it. Man. Shut up, Grandpa. Tang. <laughs> Wrote the Grandpa, Loki season five is be. out. Yeah. Next up is the one good one. Hopefully, Guardians Maybe of the Galaxy Guardians. Volume Three. Yeah. All that's been said about this so far is it's the last adventure with the team that we see right now. It's going to be a lot darker than the others. And uh, James Gunn has said, not that this necessarily means anything, but he's like this, this, this script, this one. Oof, this one's a big one. It's a banger. And like the crew, I the did fucking. I not see this trailer. The, there isn't one yet, right? There are no yeah, oh, it's, um, okay. We're, okay, okay. okay. Just make sure on a uh, Comic Con thing, but not publicly. Yeah, because what we gotcha. what we had trailers for was Phase Four. This is all Phase Five now, so this isn't. I got gotcha. you. We got yet. I think this is. Is this the last thing that we're like legitimately looking forward to? This the, is this. I the, would say it's the last is thing. This I true precipice. I think this is the last thing that I think has a chance of being good. 
Is it the last thing you care about? Hmm. I I think I don't care about Spider Man. I like, got superheroes two. quite quite. I care quite a bit about stories being told in this way, and so I can see my like you know like Daredevil. I could see myself caring a lot yeah. about that. I could see okay, myself caring yeah. about Captain America: New World Order if they had like a good trailer. I could be like, you know what, maybe, maybe. Agatha, I don't give a. F we'll get there actually, one by one. <laughs> <laughs> so this does feel like a bit of a stepping off point almost. Um, I think we've got Guardians and like I think it's cause it feels like Spider Man is still one of the newer additions, like the old school ones. This is the end almost. Of yes, the old school I characters. Think, I think I agree with you because Spider Man's like managed to sort of move from old to to the current state, and he's going to be the only thing. Once Guardians of the Galaxy three is done, and if James Gunn isn't returning to do any Marvel projects, it's like that's it. That era is over. Yeah, there's nothing we didn't get left. Spider Man till Civil War, I think. So yeah, yeah. even yeah. then, he was sort of a, a relative latecomer compared to a lot. You know, the older first, I get first gen or whatever characters and. It feels daily. Yeah. We've we've reached that point where it's just almost like a fresh new cycle. We're getting closer and closer with every day. And yeah, I, I just mean, I they've feel it. Systematically feel the torn down each of the bigger pillars that held up the MCU, at least to a lot of people who, who similar to yeah. us, what we liked about it. Even even if it was stuff we thought was flawed, like still stuff we were just like, yeah, you know, that, that part of it's pretty good. The fact that like Scott Lang is not someone that I'm particularly in love with as a character, I think he's he's, he's pretty cool. The fact that all I know about Ant Man and the Wasp Quantumania is that they've assassinated him. <laughs> it's like really, <laughs> really. That's like the only thing I know. It's all you need to know. Um. So yeah, Guardians three. I will likely get excited for that. Um. There was there there is a there's like a sneak peek thing that you can find, but there's no official trailer being launched. That's that's just to clarify. Um. <laughs> they'll probably release that at some point, right? I imagine there'll be like a proper trailer, like at the end of the year, maybe next year. Uh, what I the other thing I do know is that this one's supposed to flesh out Rocket's history, um, which is that's oh, cool. Wow, I'm very much something that. that we'll be into, like if, especially if it's good. Which I do. I I can't see James Gunn fucking this up. I mean, you know. Fucking mark my words, right? But the uh, I I have a feeling that he cares a lot about this, and he gets to have his trilogy complete. So why not, you know, yeah. complete it? Um, I, I yeah, I just I do hope it's good. Uh, I think that we're guaranteed Drax is going to die. I wouldn't be surprised if Star Lord yeah. died, to be honest with you. I wouldn't be surprised. I think yeah. I think the one. I think uh, hmm. I think those are probably the two that I would assume will die. I think I was Rocket might die. I would. I was going to say Rocket is safe. I would I put him in a safe category backstory. myself, but um, obviously I, I can't know. His backstory that leads me to believe that this might be like his the, the end. I think he, he might just be feels too like much of a fan fave, is... and if he's on, if Bradley well, I mean, Cooper's yeah, on board, yeah. they'll just keep going. You know. Yeah, yeah I think that he is because if you want to do stuff with him into the future. He is a character you can do a great deal with. There's a lot of potential for him. Oh, yeah. He has a he has a backstory. He's very comedic. The he's just a great character. I think that they will save him to keep, you know, to go forwards with. And it will be Drax and Star Lord who uh die in this one to like to conclude their stories officially. For people who are confused, Drax yeah. is like a guarantee because Dave Batista said he's I done after this one. Yeah. Uh, which makes you think. It, whenever a person's like, I am out, it, it's narrative yeah. opportunity to kill them because it's really sad and you want to grab that while you can sort of thing. You know, yeah. it could be that he goes, I have found my family. They're not dead, turns out. Bye, everyone. Like, that could be uh. it. I doubt it, though. <laughs> I doubt it. I doubt it. Uh, I don't think James going to do that. He won't do no. that. Uh, I think he's going to die. He'll probably have a really heroic death. I'm, I'm sure. I'm, I'm looking forward to to this will be the last gasp of like remember what you enjoyed about the MCU I feel like that's that's yeah. what we'll get from this movie we'll dies be like, with Drax you never thought you'd say it but it <laughs> the MCU dies with Drax <laughs> it's the last flicker of hope yeah because this he found this isn't all of Phase Five right like this is just what no, they have this planned is all of it oh this is everything but there could oh, be more in nice, it right no more uh no Phase Six is the one that has a lot of like blank things on the uh on the slate that we don't know about i'm surprised we this get a whole phase, phase without um a spider-man movie um well remember spider-man is like co with sony so like there's oh, a little yeah. more 
they got to really work it they, out. They figured that out yet? Yeah. Well, because well, I guess what I'm saying then is I'm we could expect one to just drop Deadpool. in at some point then. Well, yeah, because I'm because I guess I'm sitting here. It's like Deadpool three is happening. We know that's happening. Um, right. But we got nothing. Uh, and also there was that Armor Wars, the Don Cheadle War Machine show that's just like absent totally. Oh yeah, what happened to that? Don Cheadle is going to get still his... happening. It's got to be a somewhere. <laughs> Maybe if you zoom in, you yeah. can see it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's in there. Uh, <laughs> now, um, before me and Fringy say anything, Rags, what do you think of the upcoming television show on Disney Plus, Echo? I have no idea what that is. <laughs> Most people don't. <laughs> to be I fair. legitimately have no... I just think of the arcane character. <laughs> I just don't... I don't know anything about Echo. I guess I this? shouldn't even know that much about it, because this would be knowledge you may get from having seen the Hawkeye TV show. Um, <gasps> you wanna, have you got, you've probably got better information than I do on this one, Fringy. I don't really. I don't it's, know much about her. She's, um, uh, is she deaf? That's her thing? She's deaf, yeah. So, yeah, she's, she, was she a villain or just an anti-hero or like a mercenary in, in Hawkeye? I can't even remember. Uh, Obviously, I, I wouldn't she know. Was like, an antagonist turn like protagonist or something. Yeah, this is definitely one of those like, wait, what? Why? Why would? Why? <laughs> of all the people to give a TV show, what? It is one of the ones where it is like, really? Okay, <laughs> like, yeah. Fine, I you, guess. Um, you I think Kingpin. So is this like a low level sort of thing? Yeah, I think I think. Well, Until they I mean, introduce, of course, the you know. Yeah. The, the thing that actually controls the, the fate of the world or whatever the Freemasons are actually yeah, really low state, yeah. the ritual to yeah, yeah. I am. Um, I would expect this show to do worse than Miss Marvel. To be honest with you, which by the way, probably this is I just probably don't something about. People will probably be like, "What did you guys think of that?" I just be like, D "Didn't even, <laughs> didn't watch it. Don't know anything about it. I have no clue if it's good or bad. I I don't know anything about Miss Marvel. All you need to know, Rags, is there's a is she a teenage girl? Yeah, yeah, she's got so. big old powers, and uh, at the end she swaps places with Captain Marvel. Uh, and that's, what? I guess, the tie into the Marvels. Yeah. How do you swap? I don't. Uh, she, she I, like, I don't know. She just <laughs> sort of swaps places, and Captain Marvel is like in her house, and that's like the post-credit scene. And also now she's a mutant, or maybe, maybe, yeah. Instead nice. of a human. Is Marvel doing something with uh, the mutants? Uh, so. What, what's I their think, plan there? I I heard recently that there's contract stuff that is um causing them to not do anything with the mutants until like 2025. Okay. I don't know if that's true, but like something to do with contractual obligations to actors, part of the Fox X Men films. That like in order to use certain characters, they would have to like bring back old actors or pay them or something. Mm. And so yeah. interesting, yeah, something like that. I have no idea what the plan is the there. Air. Yeah. Will the will the original X Men movies will they be same actors but different universe? Or oh, well, I, like I imagine they want new people, thing? right? That's what they want. They want new okay. people, um, yeah. and like a fresh start. Mm, yeah, no connection to the Fox ones. I had a feeling they would want to do their own thing. Yeah, so so that seems to be the thing. But as for like, I I'm yeah, I don't I don't know what what's going on there. I mean, Deadpool is a mutant, and they're making Deadpool 3. That's, like, actively happening. So I wonder if that film's going to be, like, even in the MCU, really. How how can this even pretend to be coherent? <laughs> it's just not yeah, well, I was possible. about to say, I mean, like, like just it. don't even worry about it. It just doesn't make sense anyway. I guess the thing, because I, I really like Deadpool 1 and 2. Like, I like the Deadpool movies. Um, they, so like I Deadpool hear good things, 3. yeah. I like them. Deadpool 3 could be really cool if it was, like, actually... Like, if it was the real meta, right, where Deadpool, like, stumbles into the MCU and makes, like, just tears it to shreds or something. Or maybe they will do, like, a Deadpool kills the, like, Marvel Universe like they've done before in the comics, but it's, like, an alternate universe. Like, he goes on the multiverse. Um, oh, Deadpool's not a mutant, right? He's mutate, which is a difference. Yeah, Fringy, you can't confuse the two. Rookie mistake. Yeah. It's just because Deadpool is so closely tied to X Men. Like this, it's yeah. I wonder if they're gonna have Josh Brolin as Cable if they would do that again. Yeah, I don't know. That's interesting. Uh, there's, most... a, there's, I'm sure there's a meta joke to be made about that. 
Yeah, there, I'm sure there is. You sound like that guy. Ah, it's probably just me. <clears throat> that is a joke. That great. Not as fun as uh, the joke where he tries to do the move from X Men Origins Wolverine, where he blocks all the bullets, but they just go into him, and he's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> I appreciate really that a bad. lot. Bullets are really, really fast. fast. <laughs> yes, they are. They're very fast. Yeah. So, Loki the only season two. Faster are Wakanda Spears. Is uh, next Loki up. Uh, oh. What is that even going to be about? I don't know. He's looking Everything for Everything is on the table. I feel like this is where we're going to get a huge amount of our King stuff. And I assume Quantum Mania will act as almost like a soft introduction to the world of Loki, maybe. Yeah, maybe the after credits in Quantum Mania will have Loki in it. Maybe. Yeah, well, we oh thought God. we defeated Kang, but nope. Kang turns out wrote him. So I don't know. Maybe. Oh, I sorry. Know. I. I almost to take us back, I'm pretty sure Daredevil and Kingpin are like both gonna be an echo, so <laughs> I guess that's like relevant. <sighs> Woohoo. Yay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, awesome. Loki season two. Um yeah, I don't fucking hell. I don't care. <laughs> like I just I don't... It's Kang Rags. That's uh, what I said. Kang. Yeah. And we got um the end of Loki season one was like everyone's forgotten who Loki is and Kang is like ruling in charge of, like, in charge yeah. of everything, yeah. yeah. And the TVA is still a thing, question mark. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I don't in know. In some form they exist. Who knows to what degree that actually But is imagine meaningful. the potential. What videos will Loki watch that'll give him a character arc this season? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He like watches phase four and he just kills himself. <laughs> like, I'm out. He oh. gets the laser stick. I'm a, I'm gonna let myself get munched on by Alioth. Wasn't it? That was one of the, the first things in Phase 4, right, Loki? It's one of the early Loki ones. Loki was pretty early on, yeah. Oh, man. Remember those really days? Really setting us up for things to come. Was it WandaVision? Was, <laughs> what was first? Yeah. WandaVision was first. Man. It was meant to be Black Widow, but it, yeah, ended up being WandaVision. In fact, I think Falcon Winter Soldier was meant to come out before WandaVision 2. So, yeah, uh, I don't know what the fuck Loki Season 2 is going to be about. We'll see. Yeah. We'll get a trailer and it'll be amazing. We'll maybe make <clears throat> Owen Wilson say wow. I don't know. So then we got the Marvels, which again, right. that used to be Captain Marvel 2, right? Yeah. And then we just shoved a whole bunch of people into it, and I guess they're going to try and make a story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know who the Marvels are or oh, anything it's, about it's, them. Uh, Captain Marvel, Miss Marvel, and Monica Rambo. They're going to they're gonna use their collective undisclosed power levels to destroy some enemy, I guess. Yeah. I'm sure they'll do great. It's gonna be hard to follow. Uh, we just got nothing in terms of storyline for that one yet, so I got no, I'm sure it'll be no really reason. popular. Everyone's gonna love it. Everyone will love the Marvels. They will be the best ever. Then comes Blade. And the yeah. first thing everyone has to say is, what's the age rated? <laughs> yeah. It's uh, PG-13. Which boo, is, skip. yeah, boo. Ironheart. Now. <laughs> well, it's Mahershala Ali. He's playing Blade. That's really cool. He's a really good actor. Sure and that's yeah, the, be great. the best thing we can yeah. draw, draw from this so far. It's the best thing we can draw from a lot of these projects. The How actors do I, are pretty I don't recognize. Cool. I don't recognize the name. What would I know him from? He, he, uh, have you seen Moonlight? No, I have not. Have you seen... Did you definitely didn't watch Luke Cage? He was in Luke Cage. Um, he was in House of Cards for a while, but I don't know. He was in House of Cards for a few seasons. Yeah. Um, he was in the lead of Battle Angel. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, so, I was gonna say. Yeah, I think I he just Rags hasn't that. seen all the stuff he's in. That's, that's fair <laughs> enough. I just haven't... Oh, the Green Book. Yeah, the Green Book. He I don't think Rags saw that. Oh, I never saw that. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> hey, it's he just ha he's just in movies I haven't seen for whatever reason. I just haven't. You're avoiding him. It's so cruel. But you'll watch Blade, Blade won't you? I will. I, I will watch Blade because I'm curious. I probably what will gonna watch do Blade it. too. Yeah. I'll definitely watch that. And I think what'll happen is people will look back on the older Blades and be like, "Man, we were so lucky to get those." <laughs> probably. We probably will yeah. say that. I I need to. I I've, I've seen pieces of Blade. I haven't sat down and watched it. That'll be an interesting. I've always I, loved. So maybe we'll. Blade one and two, they are fucking nuts as movies. Uh, Wesley Snipes is like perfect casting. The uh, MCU doesn't exist without Blade. <laughs> yeah, that's a, it's a stepping stone. It's a huge, huge foundational movie, Blade. 
but I, I meant more so even just like culturally it, oh, it just sure. yeah sure. culturally it is too. but i mean i don't think marvel exists without blade i think it saved them from bankruptcy is blade the first modern superhero movie it it is actually before x-men there was blade yeah there were there were superhero movies before then but Blade's it feels like the first of that era well, yeah, I mean, we had the Superman and Batman films, but yeah, Blade was like the first of the like modern superhero mm -hmm. movie you know, for X Men. It's Blade, X Men, and Spider Man are like seen as the really a different era to this era doing yeah. their thing. Yeah, the cool. kind of superhero movies you'd watch on TV. Yeah, if you can see a uh, next up, we got we got Ironheart. Can you see that little little icon behind the name? Is we see it's that? It's like a heart. We see that in the oh, uh, iron. Yeah, yeah. We see we see it in the trailer for Wakanda Forever. Um wow. getting forged, so obviously, yeah, it's definitely gonna be started up in that. Ironheart, the story of the next Iron Man, because we need my Iron Man back. Come on, he's cool. Um, It'll be great. And I wanna see what her car suit looks like. Yeah. <laughs> I just, oh god, there's so many good ways to handle it, I just hope they don't fall into all the pitfalls that we would expect them to. Um, mm -hmm. I don't want to listen to how evil and shit uh, Tony is, you know, and how much better <laughs> Riri's gonna be. I'll be, be. But better, yeah. And I, I, I get the same vibes from Captain America New World Order. I'm like, don't, just, t don't, don't, don't. You don't have to shit on things to make yourself better. You could just be good. Well, speaking uh, of look being good... Agatha, Coven of Chaos, uh, possibly the that, most that makes me think of Multiverse of Madness, which ugh. most exciting project in Phase Five. I had to check for why? a second. <laughs> why? Why? Would you say that? What do you mean? No, just why? Why? Why this? Why Agatha television show? Because Coven of I don't know. I it guess enough. I guess they got enough. Kind of. Yeah. Uh, this and Echo seem like outliers. Yeah. Uh, because Blade is like, oh, I might not have expected this, but I see why, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But Agatha, I guess there was enough really positive reception to the character and people oh, really wanted, you know, that they decided to make a show of it, which is interesting that, you know, that's how probably things are done. But, huh, I mean, it'll, I mean, it'll probably be terrible. It'll do magic tisms and nothing will make sense. And... Do you think this will be who was the chick from um uh one division who got the superpowers by passing through the wall Monica. of Monica? Well, do you think oh yeah, Monica Rambeau, will she be an Agatha Coven of Chaos? I, I doubt it. Cause she's all that all that she was in one division for was to get the powers so that she could be doing the Captain Marvel cosmic stuff, I guess. So is she one of the Marvels? Yeah. Okay. I think I said that earlier. I just, I'm just trying to remember because I we're just going through a lot of properties, a lot of names. Yes, too many, movie. too many things. Yeah, like I don't, like I never heard about Echo until he started this, and I hear about names and people and groups of superheroes and comic books. I'm like, I just, it's, I need to familiarize myself with all these to amazing follow. characters. It, really it is. is, it is legitimately getting tough to follow. Yeah. Um, so I have no, I don't think yeah. anyone knows anything about Agatha as a show. I don't, I don't, I don't think so. But it's happening. Get excited. Yeah. Um, Next would be next up, Daredevil, yeah. Born Again. Uh, I'm going to go pee, uh, but if you uh -huh. want, Bringy, take the... Just have a little chat with Rags about this one. Well, I was so, actually going to say, I need to pee as well. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll just be, have a chat. I'll, chat yeah. I'll just be a second, though. I'm a quick peer. So from what I understand, Daredevil, Born Again, is bringing back Charlie Cox, Vincent D'Onofrio, and may well be bringing back many of the cast members from the Netflix series. And will be 18 episodes long, far and away the longest of these Marvel D Disney Plus shows. Um, as for, which we haven't talked about yet, will the Netflix Daredevil show be in canon in the MCU? It seems like the answer will be, eh, which I guess is like... You know, like, I, at least they're honest that there's no interest in, like, having anything make sense or connect together anymore. So funny. The whole shtick of the MCU is that everything is interconnected and it's like a big cohesive story. And yet, like, especially as a phase four onward, we've abandoned all of that. The only interconnectedness is characters show up every now and then. As for, like, broad story arcs or meaningful world building, the more 
relevant parts of what you can do that are really cool with the shared universe gone as for this show from what i understand the original writers for daredevil some of them are involved in echo but not this show i don't think the writers who are working on this have like a big track record at all um i don't know that there would be any reason to assume that this show will be able to delve into the more mature subject matter of daredevil stories um i i i I I get so nervous thinking about this one. Like, I get really nervous thinking about what they're going to... If you had told me, like, three or four years ago, yeah, Daredevil was finally going to get, like, some mainstream acknowledgement in, like, the MCU. That would have made me really happy. Now it's it's like a monkey's paw. It's not what I wanted. <laughs> like, and I... I don't know. I just, yeah, I get super worried um, about it. I guess we'll have to see. I am back, and I think this is an odd name uh, for it. So so why? Why do you think that? Well, I think the reason is because a lot of people, I think you might think, oh, but it is appropriate, of course. But what's interesting is he's Catholic, right? Yes. Daredevil? Yeah, he is. I don't think in Catholicism you you are born again. I think that's more of a Protestant thing. So that's... so. This is the reason why that name upsets me. Uh, D- Born Again is um, a, a, an arc um, from the comics. It is rightly and widely regarded to be like one of the best comic book storylines like ever. Um, oh, okay. It's really, it's really great and meaningful um, for that character. Um, and it's like super important in terms of understanding who he is. And season three of the show is kind of like um it's kind of like an adaptation of born again it doesn't pull a lot of things directly from the comics but there's like certain imagery like in terms of like the story it's kind of got a lot of parallels with the comic um so you've done that already uh so when i see daredevil born again to me it's like that's just there's no meaning behind you it other than hey, check. It's it's on disney plus like it's not a meaningful name for the show it's just hey that was the name of a comic and like He's born again on Disney Plus in the MCU, so that'll work. Like it's not meaningful, you know. Um, mm. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, it's it's it kind of bugs me, and it's almost like to pretend as though you didn't already kind of do that. Um, your yeah. your mic is sort of roboting every once in a while, oh, and we lose oh, some stuff. No. So no. Um, well, well, hopefully most of that came through in terms of the explanation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It did, yeah. Um. So yeah, I'm I'm uh, I'm super nervous about that, but I mean, obviously, I'll be watching that. <laughs> like, but uh, yeah, uh, just gets me nervous. I think I think my big concern is um, what what is the willingness of a Disney Plus now. production to um Bring to you? yeah. I, we we didn't get like any of that. I no, I oh, just come back and all of that's coming through on the stream. So I was listening to it. It, it did okay. it did just now it started coming oh it came through okay interesting i guess it's a discord tism all right carry on maybe um what was i what i was gonna i was saying um i wonder how willing they're gonna be to delve into the darker aspects of the character or even just stuff that's a little bit more mature like one of my favorite scenes in um in in the show is from season one it's when matt's talking to his uh pastor and they're basically having a conversation about the nature of evil and pastors explaining that um that like he in terms of like belief in the devil the existence of the devil he talks about how he he gives an anecdote about a story when he he went on like uh some sort of mission or whatever to um uh and and that there was like this man who did these vile things and he talks about how in him he saw the devil like he sees the devil in um in people like that's the manifestation of the devil um the reason why matt's talking to him is because he is struggling with the decision of whether he should kill uh wilson fisk um and of course obviously he's naturally concerned about this right because anything to do with this involves like his mortal soul um you know like he's he's uh and 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 so the, the nature of the conversation is like you could kill him, but like at what cost to you? Um, is that like the right, you know, these sorts of conversations about right or wrong morality, not only through like just the general framework, but also through the framework of his religion. It's, it's really great content. Um, 
sorry, did I say past a priest? Yeah. Um, th- there's there's a lot of like great material I mean, there, it, it, it works and um, well. and um. I don't know that it's necessarily going to be in this show because it's maybe it's a little too complex and mature, you know, like it's not, (laughs) we don't, we don't care about that. We don't have time for that between our mandatory action scenes. And of course, in the case of, um, in the case of this show, the bar has been set for action. You know, like you can't be fucking around with Daredevil. Daredevil is like known for the action scenes. Um, Mm -hmm. They'll probably get flayed if they don't have a one shot. Yeah. Um, but the bar's been set really high. The first season had like a great one shot where he's in a hallway. It's like a very down and dirty fight where they're getting tired, throwing shit at each other. Like they're getting worn down over the course of the fight. The second one is much more um complex. It's like him going down a set of stairs using like a chain um and like a gun tied to his hands. And and there's lots of like pretty cool cuts in there and then the third one is like a 12 minute long extended sequence Damn. uh one it's yeah it's 12 minutes it's like starts Jeez. with a fight scene um and then there's a conversation in a jail that turns into a riot and then it ends with um matt having to escape from a prison riot it's fucking awesome mm-hmm. um and yeah i i, I don't know like they, they I imagine you'd be it. worried the the mcu has almost pretty much with maybe a couple well recently certainly consistently the action has been all terrible across like pretty much all disney stuff be it yeah. star wars and be it Marvel, magic fit, all really hand-to-hand bad. guns they can't handle any of it yeah they do not know how to write that as a thing it's it, you'll just get batwoman level nonsense which of course that's something daredevil often has to account for as guns of course. of course that's like the first thing that you learn to account for is oh yeah guns exist i should deal with that well, it's the reason why a lot of the fights in Dead will take place in enclosed spaces. Um, you you set things in enclosed spaces; it just makes it easier to account for guns. Yeah, absolutely. And um, L- maybe and, they'll just point at him without shooting, and they'll run towards him so that he can disarm yeah, them. That will be yeah. that will be a lot easier. It's just not at all theoretical anymore. We used to, you know, almost doomsay about how Disney would ruin Daredevil, so don't worry about it. But I was like, well, it's, we're on the way. Yeah. We're on the precipice. <laughs> We're on the edge of the precipice. Swan would say, "Of the edge, and so the crevice." The rea- like the the fact that it's got that many episodes is like, oh wow, that's weirdly reassuring compared to how it usually goes. But that yeah. doesn't say anything for what will be in these episodes, and you know, what are predictions course, based on? I mean, history, and we're not doing great. If we're going to pull elements of the original story, how do we justify Kingpin and Daredevil seemingly not being that involved in in what's going on with him Mm -hmm. when he's like his arch enemy? I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, because they wouldn't want to uh, decanonize the show. That would be the soft one where they like kind of pretend it exists, but do whatever they want, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not going to be happy about that. (laughs) But in a sense, it means that the show is safe. Like in a little little cubby hole. Well, yeah, because some people nice want to bring character. up like didn't defenders do damage, and it's like even that is separated to a degree. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and it wasn't like the, the the original three seasons were perfect. Um, everyone always likes to bring up the hand, obviously, every time. <laughs> um, as, as far as I'm aware, the girl who played Electra, or Electra has been confirmed, right, or something like that. I don't think so. I don't know that the Electra is going to be in this. I thought I but saw something about be. that, but yeah, um, be. we could get that, we could get the hand, we could get who, and, and depending on how well it does, we may get uh, Jessica Jones back, or something. I, I could see that happening. She'd be next uh, in line, right, before Luke Cage before and Iron Luke Fist. Cage, Iron Fist. It, mm-hmm. It's in that order, it's actually in that yeah. order, pretty much. We shall and see. And as Punisher, who knows about Punisher. Yeah, that's, that's another huge wild card. He got two seasons. Uh, of his he own did. shit. Disappeared well, I now. didn't like that person. Not very good. Punisher dead lost. I don't know. I, I I don't know if they would... I don't know if he is. Punisher's like Blade. It's like, can they handle that in the current mm. MCU? I don't think so. <clears throat> Punisher, Blade, and Deadpool. All of them require... Punisher, Blade, Deadpool. A bit more... Little... It's just that tier above in terms of rating, and I guess they don't want to... <sighs> I don't know. It's, they don't seem to want to do that. I, though I think Deadpool's meant to be R-rated. We'll see. I think it's separate I mean. enough. Well, do you remember that they 
you know? Once upon a time, they said uh, Multiverse of Madness was going to be, like, higher rated and scary and horror and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, and then it just turned into safe sludge. Pretty much. It had I a mean, few, few creepy visuals, but that was really as far as they went with it. Well, yeah, and, like, detonating Black Bolt's head was, even to me, I was just like, oh, wow. There it goes. Yeah, you showed that. All right. And, like, blood comes out of his nose, just like, hmm. It's a bit much, and mm. and I think that's indicative of where we think the Marvel Universe is. The fact that that makes me go like, wow, you guys did that, and it's pretty tame for what it could have been. Absolutely. But yes, uh, Daredevil, we will be watching with great interest, and uh, right. I think the entire world will be very fucking unhappy if they make this the same way they've made all their other shows. Which, by the yeah. way, it seems public sentiment is pretty much on board with the idea now that all the Disney Plus shows feel the same. They're just these yeah. things that bump out. So you better Every change it up. Every interesting thing, it, it's kind of Star Wars is kind of the same way. Where yeah. that interesting thing you think it'll be about, it's not. It's super generic. Every fucking time, but Every that time, doesn't mean oh they could do this and that. Nope, it'll nope they no they won't. Doesn't doesn't mean that there won't be that show one at some point in the future where they actually go, we're not going to do it that way. And we go, whoa. <gasps> and maybe that'll be Daredevil. Who knows? I mean, there's so much between now and then. There is. Yeah. I mean, this is, I mean, Daredevil, it says spring 2024. So we still, oh, wow, still got yeah. another year and a half or so. And then we got Captain America New World Order. Do we know anything about this? Uh, don't, well, it's just, we know that's going to be, um, uh, Sam going on, uh, his adventures. I don't know about if there's Bucky or, like, what it's about or villains or anything at all, though. Uh, that is quite a while away. More Sam. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? It's going to be, uh, taken on from Falcon and Winter Soldier, which was a fucking Falcon nightmare Winter show, Soldier. so. Yeah, so. I rewatched, um. Yeah, Birds Elope with the Sun made the big sort of like the four hour sort of condensed EFAP of that. And I was listening through it. That show's bad. It sort of it, <clears throat> it gets under the radar in the memory like a lot of things do. But man, that show was pretty catastrophic. I'm still in terms blown of away. Like its, its morality systems and what they did to the characters. Kind of amazing. We went we because we took almost like the 11 hours to go through that entire show. <laughs> I just yeah, got, it um, was yeah. I, I genuinely think I'm working on now. I reference it. I say yeah. We we talked about this. It's like a doc. It's eleven hours or so. You know, watch birds. He did the four hour sort of condensed version. There's a reason why we hate Sam Wilson. Yeah, they ruined him. But they they did a lot of damage they to a bunch him. of people in that show. And I think that the passion it took to sort of go through that that's going to just wane as as more stuff comes out. You know, like. I can't yeah. see us doing something like that for She-Hulk. I think the the best you'll get probably is a, a couple of hours talking about it. If that happens, I don't even know. I don't know anymore. Yeah, the character, what characters are there left to be invested in? It, it The new characters are meant to replace the old ones, but they haven't really. Yeah. The old ones were not replaced. They were not in any meaningful way. Oh, yeah. They're just the ones we have now, which is not the best one for replacement. Uh... Like, oh yeah, it's just this is what we got. If we don't have the old ones, we got these. You oh, like that them, right? to the to the end of this phase with Thunderbolts. Yeah, which for those who don't know is a collection of criminals slash like villains. Kind of like, like a, an anti hero right. game. Which uh yeah, to be comprised right now of all we know is at least Walker is in there. Um Uh I think Walker, Zemo, Yelena, I think those are like the Oh, and sure. they're gonna One, go on I some guarantee. some mission, I guess, and do things. But yeah. well, Walker's great, and unfortunately, I don't want to see any more of Zemo because I don't want him to be ruined. I'm worried about what they're gonna do to him. Yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that they'll fuck messed. up Walker as well. The second they portray him again, he's gonna be evil. Or stupid. yeah, they'll forget what they managed to do with him, either accidentally or intentionally, whatever that was. Yeah, like someone just said, so Walker's an anti-hero now. It's like, they'll probably make him that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's just a, a really morally upstanding great guy. Because when it, It's funny, when you say, like, oh, a team that's comprised of Zemo, Yelena, and Walker, I'd be like, what the fuck team is that? Like, what? those three <laughs> people do not, like, at all share... I wouldn't even say that it's two to one in terms of, like, good or whatever. It's like, all three yeah. of them, very different. What's their common goal or thread they're I, going I with? I don't know. I don't know. I, yeah, I have no idea. 
So yeah. <laughs> phase yeah. five. <laughs> looking phase to be five. it's uh, you know, like the, the highlight will be Guardians more than likely. But Daredevil will mm -hmm. be something to really keep an eye on and then there's curiosities here and there. Yeah, but otherwise it's just that sludge pipe, that sludge pipeline is they're they're building it out, they're trucking ahead. And that, I mean, I guess we should pull up the phase, well, we don't need to pull up the picture really, but the phase six one. What do we the know in total about multiple. phase six? It's just the yeah. Avengers movies, isn't it? Fantastic Four, uh, and then, yeah, two Avengers movies. And then a bunch of other projects that we don't know anything about yet. Like, Can you imagine that? There are going to be two Avengers movies? You're in like, who's going to even be, yeah, yeah. like, in a year? <laughs> Damn. Yeah, because it's Avengers the Kang Dynasty, not a very good name. No. Uh, and then Avengers mm -hmm. Secret Wars, Secret Wars, which is like big comic storyline. Big it's like potatoes. the multiverse war. Yeah. Yeah. So, and yeah, you'd ex I think that that'll be cranking everything to just absolute elevens everywhere. Like we'll yeah. every cameo we could possibly imagine, every every possibility. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if you see a uh, Robert Downey Jr.'s and Steve, uh, <laughs> oh, man. Chris Evans coming back. It's gonna be chaos. Yeah. There's gonna be so much crap in that movie. Probably it's gonna be chaos and pain. And we're chaos just gonna we're gonna through. talk about how. Do you remember when it was like six of them? They just they they defended <laughs> a city, and that was it. That was nice. Yeah. That was nice when they defended a city, oh, and crazy. we knew who they were. Yeah. Now it's just thirty-seven people. And, you know, there'll be some interdimensional mega multi. It's just incomprehensible. Incomprehensible. Phase mm -hmm. 4's done so wonders yeah. for our expectations. This is the, the multiverse saga, isn't it? Ex fucking shit, man. <laughs> it's just it's an excuse sucks. to put in anything we want. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. So the the next thing in line for Marvel right now is uh, wait, what is it again? <laughs> is it Black Panther? She Hulk is next, right? Oh right, yeah, She Hulk. She Hulk the show. That is the next thing. Hopefully they don't have any world ending fucking stakes in that. But you That'd never be know. nice. Seems like Wong is just sort of like going up everywhere. And everything and yeah. Then, yeah. That'd be that'd be kind of fun. He's already, he's going to have racked up more appearances soon than like. Most of the main I think ones. So. I think I think so. Like I think legitimately that list of appearances is quite long. He's been in like seven movies, I think. Long man. Which uh takes us to now talking about the other lads. What's up over on uh, the DC, DC side of things? Uh, not much. We've got, <laughs> we've got Shazam, Fury of the Gods. Yes. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Which, wow. Um, my first my first note is... Oh, dang. Someone's at the door. I'll be right back. That's it. We'll, we'll, we'll press on. Yeah. Um, Obviously, you and I have seen Shazam, shot. right? Yes. Um. Yeah. Uh, I the thought it was worse was... than everyone told me it was. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's got tons of plot problems. It's but everybody loved it. Every problem. Yeah, People. I remember people saying they just like the fact that it's, it's um, you know, wholesome and Fun. happy. Yeah. Which people said that about Aquaman, too. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's just funny because like I think Zack Snyder's put everyone in a permanent funk in the DC. We're just like enough with the rain, <laughs> enough yeah. with the shadows. Uh, this uh, flying shot looks really wonky. Yeah, like it just doesn't look right. I just the standard sort of looks composited. I don't know what it is yeah. about things anymore, but. It's yeah. It's so we kind of mentioned this earlier or at the beginning of the stream, but just how much reliance there feels like there is now on just uh, or maybe market share is what I should say for characters and just like Shazam has got like a huge chunk of it. Yeah, yeah, and why? Shazam. It's like well, he was popped out around about the time they still had big plans for everything to work out. Uh, yeah, and then it didn't. <laughs> he yeah, did though. He's did. fine. He's going on adventures, yeah. People like him. He's nice and secluded, even though there's like some references here and there. But uh, yeah, this one. Uh, what is the plot that the this the daughters of of Atlas, Atlas want because yeah, so they think he's stolen power or something? Yeah, 
even though he actually had it given to him by the wizard guy. Um. But yeah. Yeah, there's not. I, don't, I really don't have much to say. It's like it looks very generic, normal it's hero not movie. Normal. Yeah. Like it's not going to be anything groundbreaking or earth shattering. I think that's the best I can hope for is that it just comes out. People go, yeah, how about yeah, that. I liked it. <laughs> yeah. And then that's that. I guess you got the family dynamic, right? All of his uh, family doing superhero shenanigans as well. Though, I, you got to imagine that they still want to focus in on Shazam, right? So they're probably not going to be that important. Yeah, you got to wonder, like, are we going to get a lot of characterization for these guys or no? I doubt it. I doubt, I, I'm at, especially if you've got, like, multiple villains as well, because you got, like, Helen Mirren, Lucy Liu. Like, so that's that's multiple villains, I guess, too, right? And they got, so they, um, they all got different powers, right? Um, well, it looks like they're all flying, though. So I guess they can all fly. Like I thought that yeah. only uh I thought that only um his the uh, what was his name his friend like is the the guy who was tagging along the whole time. I thought only he could fly. But I guess they all can. I guess so, yeah. Yeah. Because um, I guess they figured that it's hard to justify them all getting around and going on adventures together if only two of them can fly and the rest have to walk. <laughs> the rest have to run. So, talk about Shazam. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, yeah. what are some of your um, thoughts, Raggle? Well, my I um I got a quick story. My is my sister, and she was dropping some stuff off. We've got a, I got my both my sisters are in town, and one of them has a dog, and one of them has a cat, and both of their birthdays coincide very very close to one another. So while they're in town tomorrow for lunch, we're having like a birthday for the cat and the dog, and all the families going over for lunch, and it is a cute thing, but um. I have a great old time. As for Shazam, Fury of the Gods, my first note is what the fuck is even the world building in the DCEU now? Um, <laughs> I don't know. No idea. I, I just don't know. The world know. building is that they make toys of Batman, a murderer. <laughs> 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 just have no clue what's happening or what can happen. Is there any reason why... I guess I'll have to explain why, because they they directly reference like Batman and you know the Aquaman. That's a Flash. I think Are they not going to be? So I think what they're doing is they're like probably playing very. They're not saying much about the broader universe until they make the Flash, which is like the reset movie. Hmm. Based on everything that we've heard about that film, it seems to be the reset movie that creates their new timeline that they want to move forward with. It seems to um, me, if you ask the people who make this, is it sitting directly across from all the Zack Snyder movies and stuff, they'd probably be like, uh, hmm. Yeah? <laughs> I just think I they'd be like, even, you yeah. know, like this very non-committal. I think like they'd be this... like, those movies exist and that's really swell, and our movie yeah. exists and that's really swell. I'm glad swell. that Zack had his vision and did it. Yeah. Uh, Ain't it great? Um, my second note is the scale of the threat seems global and world-ending. How yeah. very fresh and interesting. And yet, nobody else is going to show up, I imagine. No, of course yeah. not. Thus my last question about, oh man, where are they going to be? They're well, fighting Yeah, because we got a whole world elsewhere. of superheroes, yeah. man. we got Wonder Woman, The Flash, Superman, Batman, Batman Aquaman. Aquaman, Peacemaker, question mark? I don't know. Yeah. Well, the Suicide Squad, all those guys. Yeah. Um, there, I think in the trailer, I assume that they had the theme in the trailer of everybody can be worthy. So we'll see how that, because I haven't seen Shazam. But one. I thought that was like the lesson of Shazam 1. <laughs> so I'm not Maybe sure they're how building that on it. Done. Maybe it's done again. I think we've already established that being worthy is when someone whispers a spell to a magic hammer. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a pretty, pretty easy, I suppose. And I, I don't have much else to say i i just none of the by the way in all of these trailers none of the humor works for me none of no, it. not no, a no, single no. one not a single one never cracked a smile same as as well just like well, yeah oh, like oh well, yeah I've, no seen fast and stuff. I've seen the fast and furious movies and it's about family it's like oh my god what are we doing yeah that meme was relevant what like fucking a year ago maybe maybe more 
well, I guess they shot the film a year ago and they were like, hopefully people are still talking about family. Like, <laughs> And that was, a, he thought that was a strong enough meme to put it in, put the, it in the trailer. And to yeah. Put it in the film and put it in the trailer. I suppose they put it in the trailer because it'd be even older by the time the, be the movie comes out. So at least now it could be like, you, 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 you heard the joke the first time of the trailer, okay? That's why you don't find it the funny, the I movie. I noticed that there were some people sitting on a park bench behind them. It's like, are you guys not... Shazam and some lady in a like bronze armor, like or gold armor, just chilling out over there. Do you not care? No, they do. In not. this world, that's totally normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see, everyone can be worthy, so you you just don't question it. But yeah, I think the best thing this movie can do is just come out. And people go, yeah, yeah, that was fun. And then that's it, and he'll get a third movie in a couple yeah, of years no, because it's just reliable. Yeah, Probably, because it'll probably not like it'll it'll make its money. Yeah, probably, probably be a modest. <laughs> have, someone in chat said they should have invested in Morbius memes. Unironically, yes, that those were more long lived. I feel than the family thing, and it comes across as almost like meta in a maybe. Yeah, but Morbius uh, didn't exist yet. Well, it did, but they hadn't seen it yet. Morbin time. Yeah, but we we just went over that a guy said to Matt Smith it's morbing time and it was cringe. So like I don't mm -hmm. think it's as rich an idea as you think it is. Morbin time. This That's what makes it so rich. It's lack make of jokes, richness. You know. Uh, make make jokes. jokes. No. Yeah. No. Thor Love and Thunder was nothing but actual jokes. That why that's why it was so funny and hilarious from end to end. We were just crying. Hey, we said we didn't even know if those were jokes. We were trying to figure it out. <laughs> we don't know. That's how clever it is. It's so double meaning and it's oh wow. Multifaceted writing. Mm -hmm. It's Tyke's speciality. So yeah, this is a movie. Of, yeah. Uh, I don't think it'll mean much of anything for DC going forward. It'll just release. Probably not. Probably not. Not until I guess that Flash movie. That's when they really want to lock stuff in. Maybe uh, maybe be very careful on who they hire to play their main superheroes. Anybody, like the, God, they must be so like on edge about who they even hire anymore. Oh, it's just this is like the fourth time. Yeah, <laughs> like it's derailed. <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, um, you yep, know Zachary Levi is nice like, and reliable. Who did he uh, which takes us to Black Adam. Black Adam. Mm, yes. Um, what 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 is there to say about Black Adam? Other than I, I don't, think their gimmick is as interesting as they think it is. Feels old as I fuck. Have... Like our hero doesn't play by the rules. <laughs> wow. Um. So you, you told me to watch two trailers. You sent me the Black Adam number two before the number one, which is fine. Uh, I, my Black Adam two, number trailer number two, I have two notes. Born out of rage, nice and edgy. And this is so generic, I have nothing to say. <laughs> yeah. And then I watched the second Black Adam trailer, which for me is the, was the first. Well, for me, it was the second you, to watch the number one. And so I just wrote it in afterwards. I have I have no commentary on it. Well, it's just it's just the first. They're the same. It just feels to me like I've the been, they're marketing the whole thing on the idea of like, what if a superhero wasn't like I ain't gonna kill nobody? And, it, and I'm just confused. I'm like, what do you mean? We've had that for a while, a long time. Yeah, I I don't know why that's interesting really at all. And and I don't know. Um, it's gonna be tough for the Rock to convince me without me sort of smirking. <laughs> that he's like this very serious, very straightforward sort of character who's gonna deal with the situation as he needs to deal with it, not by anyone's mm -hmm. rule. I'll just be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. do yeah, the do the face, rock. do it's the eyebrow. Do the thing. I saw <laughs> I saw that movie with the. Uh, with, did you see the disaster movie he was in? What was it called? That he was like a helicopter pilot. San Andreas. Yeah, San Andreas. What a what a film. What, an, watch, what uh, an amazing Rampage. incredible film. Even better. Ooh, I oh, haven't yeah. seen Rampage. So um, I'm way more go, interested. We have to go in a rock arc. In Pierce Brosnan's Doctor Fate, um, just because I want to know what Doctor Fate's going to uh, get yeah. up to. And uh, they should make a Doctor Fate movie. That would have been cool. Especially because he's just got so much more presence, and it's been a while since I've seen him do anything. So I'm just like, what are you? Yeah. What are you up to, buddy? You I'd doing? rather. 
like to me that's a, a ne- already more interesting you want to see this dude go on adventures or do you want to see look i'm not like no, i'm not like other heroes <laughs> this is wow, what I, this... he got a rocket and then it exploded and he was okay yeah what what yeah. i don't i don't get the construction of a lot of stuff these days for stuff like that it's like d- imagine he grabs a rocket explodes flashes everywhere that's the end it's like that was never gonna that's happen great. This film is very orange. Is it now? Have you noticed that? This film is super orange. It reminds me of... If you watch the Michael Bay Transformers films, everybody in those films is orange. Like, it's so orange. Um, it's just so orange. I was going to say, I'm not really in the best is. part of the like trailer for illustrating way. your point, yeah. I guess. It's very deserty, you know? Well, it felt like it was very deserty. It's not even that specifically. It's just the that's like super duper orange. Um, I got you. This half of the trailer is very yeah. blue. <laughs> this there we blue go. And or- and, oh, yeah, those blue are the two. Orange, so. Well, blue. Put it yeah. On the trailer. Put it on the poster. What is um? What is Doctor Fate's powers? He's like he's kind. Of, uh, maybe this might piss people off. He's kind of like Doctor Strange. <laughs> he's like the magic guy. That's like okay. his powers. Um, it's it's the helm specifically. I'm I'm pretty sure that gives him like the powers. But like the helm is kind of a double edged sword. Like it has like a consciousness of its own, I believe. And then he has to like contend with that. Doctor Strange with more OP. Gee, uh, more OP. Oh, apparently I got it right. Okay, yeah. He's about bringing balance. Someone said order magic. I don't know what that means. Yeah, it's all about order. Like, he's about restoring order to the world. So okay. it's, like, very active. The DCEU, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> They're bringing the in villain? a doctor. I think, nah, I, nah, I don't think so. It's probably probably not. Well, what's his him. role in the comics? Is he, a, like, a 50-50 kind of guy? I think he's, like... He's got a, a sort of code and a way that he operates that should be understandable to everybody, and that sometimes brings him into conflict with the heroes. Okay. I think that's that's his nature. Well, yeah. That's the element I'm more interested in than Black Adam, who, yeah. like well, I said, all I know about him is he's an angry man who says, you know what, I'm going to kill some people sometimes. And well, also, no, he, seems like... Do you? But there, there's the... Um, I think each trailer had one. The whole, but heroes don't kill people, and then there's that pause, and then he says, yeah, I, but do. I do. Yeah. Oh it's, my it's so God. lame. So lame. Um, Wait, are we pretending as though... Can you imagine a like, hero who kills people in the DCEU? Are we pretending as yeah. though the He's first like, three phases battle. of Marvel didn't have people getting killed a lot? Exactly. Exactly. Just because they didn't like point it out? You know, like, I just killed a man because I am not quite your, I'm not your dad's superhero. <laughs> like, okay. It's just, and, and it's also, yeah, it seems like um one of the other things that the film wants to do is establish the Justice Society of America. Like, that's what they're building up here. That because we got, this is like, Hawkman, Man, right? Adam Smasher. Yeah, this is Hawkman. Oh. And like, Adam Smasher as well, Cyclone. Yeah. People think that the whole killing thing, yeah, they think it's really edgy, but they don't remember. Man, Race Bannon was, he was plugging people in Johnny Quest way back in the 50s and 60s or whenever that show was, man. It's, you're not new and you're not special, especially well, not the DCEU. I feel like it was pretty illustrated. Well, when Iron Man lands in that area and he just fucking uppercuts a man. <laughs> he just, Into a wall. Just that so man is blind. dead. Mm-hmm. It's not like, he oh, no. It's... He shoots the lasers at the SAM sites, blows them up. Yeah, that, see, you needed yeah, some character like... to be like, I thought heroes did kill people. And then he's like, I am Iron Man well, I and do. I kill yeah. people. I think, um, I think it's more unusual for them to have a zero like tolerance of killing. That is, that is the unusual. That is more unusual. It is, it's actually it stick to it. Like yeah. Spider Man, for instance. Like, yes, yeah. it's, it's almost, yeah, it's unconventional. And Batman, when they, they Batman, and that's what people like know Shalane, about them. Very, that'd be a thing, yeah. So, yeah, just really, really odd. As someone who doesn't know much of anything about Black Adam, I'm just like, it really does feel like I'm special compared to everyone else. And you're like, why? And he's and like, we're like, this no, reason. You're like, not. Oh. A bit cringe. <laughs> you're, you're an angsty anti hero who's insanely powerful. Wow. And being played by The Rock, which I'm not convinced by. I'm happy to give him a shot, you know, just, but. Yeah. Don't know about that. It's odd. I'll have to get over that initial hump 
of he's you know, getting paid a lot movie. of money for this movie. I'm sure they're they're, they're hoping like that he will dollars. that he will help, help save the DC. Yeah, like EU. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if Marvel ask him to fucking turn up as something. Maybe do you think there's like an idea of like we can't do that because people might get confused? Maybe, and also just time and and like scheduling. You want somebody who's going to be available. And, yeah, because yeah. But he's just such a, like, a, he's a box office draw, right? So you want to grab all those types. Because yeah. knowing that um, you got Lucy Liu and Helen Mirren, and in, in, it's just like, oh yeah, it's just like eventually every actor you've ever known, they will well, turn up yeah. <laughs> in either DC or Marvel. That's just... That's I just want to highlight it. Doomer says, um, Phase 5 better have more Shang-Chi in Black Widow. I'm curious why you said that. I think... Because he doesn't think those movies are good. And he is being oh. sarcasmic. Then again, uh, oh. it will definitely have more of both of those characters. Because Yelena... Does she adopt the name Black Widow or is she just... I, I say adopt, know. she was a Black Widow, so I don't know. Yeah. Oh, whatever. I'm sure there'll be a part in this film where he's, he's like, I'm so, so evil and edgy. And then someone's like, I'm inspired by you. And he's like, oh my god, I'm conflicted. Because that's When I'm good. more of a people, they don't get back up. When I blow up stuff, oh, look at this as well. This shot where someone's blown up behind him, and he's just like, "I ain't even looking. <laughs> I don't even care." It's just like, "Come on, we we've made fun of this for the past like decade." <laughs> he's like really close to it, <laughs> but whatever, it's fine. At this point, it would be cool to look at the explosion. Yeah, why not? Appreciate your work. I mean, that is his work. I don't know. Uh, so. Yeah, excitement through the roof of Black Adam. Can't wait. <laughs> I was, you know, I was waiting for anybody to say they weren't, but it seems oh, like everyone's yeah, in agreement. Yeah. So, yeah, everyone agrees. Absolutely, yes. Black Adam. All right. I can't wait till he goes and punches the. Magic and like that's guy. it for for DC. It's like it's all Shazam stuff. Yeah. What the fuck Weird. is going on, guys? Like, what what's happened to everything else? And it's just like, wait, we haven't we haven't figured it out. <laughs> Well, because I still got Aquaman 2 and Flash and Batgirl. Yeah. What's and going Blue on with Beetle. them? Like, eh, we'll find out eventually. I don't know. Um, and so, yeah, we, we, you know, we talked about Marvel stuff for like a million years because there's a bazillion things. DC, that's it. Uh, yeah, that's all they have. We'll, we'll talk about it more as time goes on. It's funny because people are like, are you continuing the DC arc or not? And it's like, we are still nowhere near falling behind it. Don't worry. Like, we're catching up, quote unquote, with the DC arc would take like yeah. a very quick amount of time. Um, Meme is currently helping me with something else. So, don't you worry. The, 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 the DC arc will continue because it's a hilarious little series to, to look at because it's like, Marvel's, you know, falling the fuck apart, but. DC is this one that's like, it was just falling apart from the get-go, and it's just constantly hobbling along, and you're just like, look at him go, what is he gonna do next? <laughs> There's some guy following behind it, picking up all the pieces and trying to sew them back on, like, to the, actually sew them back onto the train, he's got a needle, it's like, this is all you got, no hammer, no nails, try and thread them back on, and he's while trying. it's moving and shedding parts. He's trying his hardest, yeah. Like, he finally gets it on, then the engine falls out, and he's like, what the... <laughs> Really? <laughs> yep. So, next up will be the, the, the next thing in line for the old Star War, which would be Andor, which is what? Uh, end of end of next month? So like a month from now? The, yeah, something like that. Uh, you know, the, the, the little series that's been made fun of ever since it was announced, because it's just like Harkness, like who the fuck asked for this? However, once you were delivered things that you may have asked for, like Kenobi, or maybe even Boba Fett, or maybe even Mandalorian Season 2, plenty of people would have asked for that, you realize, like, man, let's check out some stuff we didn't ask for. <laughs> let's, see, let's see how that looks. <laughs> and uh, I would go as far as saying Andor from the trailer looks like the best of all the shows visually uh, already. Yeah, that's one of my notes. Is it looks very expensive. It looks very... Good, essentially. I'm pretty sure it is very expensive, right? Like, uh, this thing. Probably. Is this the most they're spending on a show? I want to say um, yes, I... um, but I don't know. Mando was like 100 million, right? Yes, but, um, isn't... Because uh, the part of what was going to make Andor really expensive, too, is the... Look at more episodes. Uh, that, and, uh, this has been going now for a really long time, right? 
like production. It's been in production for a while, yeah. This, um, the longer it takes to get it out, you know, the, the more money it ends up costing in a lot of ways, right? For investments and returns and different mm -hmm. people in different smoky rooms being like, Hey, where's the show you promised us? Put it out. Jeez, uh, the seat. All of, the, all of uh, the, the slaves in the CGI basements, we're whipping <laughs> them as hard as we can. It will be done, I promise. Yeah, um, what is this about? Like, uh, build up to Rogue One, I think, is the idea with this show, right? Which is interesting, because that's uh, like a, so. yeah. supposed to be a thing to go before New Hope. So maybe they'll make a thing to go before this, too. Maybe. Everyone's favorite character, maybe Cassian the... Andor, will be fleshed out, presumably. Yeah. Um, Great. Hopefully he goes to Tatooine, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I hope he goes to the <laughs> cantina to and listens to the music. So this is part of the hope for Andor, is that it, it seems like the show that has the most potential to not get involved with all of the regular Star Wars stuff instead. Yeah. And I say that as if I don't yeah. want... What I do want is to be in the Star Wars world, just not with very specific things like, oh, look, it's Yoda. Oh, look, it's... Yeah. It's don't, a galaxy. Don't... Yeah, like, it's a galaxy. Thing? seeing shots of just a civilization on a planet that I don't recognize, it's like, oh, cool, Star Wars stuff in the way that I want to see it, not... Hooray, a new place. I think we felt that way when we were watching the trailer for Kenobi. We were just like, oh, look, it's like a Coruscant-type place. Maybe, uh, um... well, we were excited to go to Halo and Mandalorian. Yeah. Um... Yeah. But... All right, or was that the Boba Fett show? That was Boba Fett. That was Boba, Boba Fett, Boba. yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, it was we, we had like more approval in that moment <laughs> than like basically yeah, everything like in the whole the best fucking story. Five minutes of Star Wars content in years. But yeah. This um looks like it's gonna be regarding Empire Times. Uh obviously. But yeah. but like what I mean by that is actual like we're seeing the Empire rule will be involved in their little board meetings, which I'm like, that could be interesting. It could be. Um I highly, based off the track record that we have, I think that one of my notes is this: that just I think the Empire will just sort of be portrayed as, be portrayed as cartoonishly evil yeah. for no purpose or goal, without any people behind it. Um, it's all just cartoonishly evil villainry, and they'll be extremely incompetent at doing everything they do, and they're not ever going to explore any of this in any meaningful way. It'll they just be... might. That's kind of. We that's see the hope. a lot of. It's. It seems that's like the there's hope. a lot of Empire POV shots in it, like the, the scenes about the Empire or Empire officers and stuff. That makes me wonder. Um, like the... this is kind of the thing. Andor is like the one that I'm looking at, going, "Huh," as opposed to, uh like you know. Yeah, it didn't used to be like that. Like for a while, I didn't care at all about Andor, but after how horrible no. everything's been, and then you see this trailer, it's like, well. Oh. That's not bad. That's a maybe anyway. maybe the people who made this, which are very much different than the people who made Kenobi, Boba Fett, very and Mandalorian. Much different, yeah. Very. We, much we could have a chance here for a story. Could be. You know, I feel like there's more chance here than there was there will be for like Mando season three, which people are already going mm -hmm. through the roof, fucking hype over, which is <laughs> like, god funny. damn it, guys! Man, Once again, sucks. Because the trailer for that isn't out out yet, is it? No. No. It was shown, and I've seen uh, the 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 floompy version of it. Um, and there's already plenty of cameos from people we know from like fucking Mando season two and one. Great. Yeah, and it's just like yeah, it's gonna be the same shit every those, time. That great list of characters. They're all so wonderful. Oh, yeah. wonderful. I care about all of them. But, Very uh, well written. You know, this show is how long is the show? I don't. I think it's twelve episodes. Thirteen episodes, I think, or twelve, fourteen. Wow. Yeah. So that's, I, I know how this sounds, but I was like, that's a good sign, because that's, that's long enough that that's it like feels like, content, you know? it, yeah, makes, it makes me feel like it's, it's that long because they, they had stuff to put in there, not because they were forced to be that long. Mm -hmm. Like six episodes for Kenobi is just like, oh, so fucking obvious you were a movie that was stretched into as much as they could possibly yeah. muster. But this, this. And it took yeah. everybody a month to figure that out. Yeah. But at least they and did. And it still felt hor yeah, and it felt Empty, vapid, wandering and meandery. Hopefully this means mm -hmm. that they actually do have a sort of story they could tell. Yeah. How many episodes do you need? Ah, uh, 13 or so. All right. That's actually like a... Potentially, this could be something interesting. However, 
<laughs> I will <laughs> wait until that happens because I just have no confidence whatsoever in Star Wars. As Thunder just mentioned, 24 episodes for Andor. What the fuck is the most obscure character ever? It's like, yep, here you go, two seasons off you oh, go. Yeah, it's like, I guarantee what? It's season two, that's right, yeah. It's crazy. I don't know how these decisions get made or why. It's so bizarre. The fact that yeah, o Obi Wan and Boba Fett get thrown in the trash while they focus. Like, what if this show is good? I'll be like, why? What? You of all fucked the... over Boba Fett and Obi Wan for Andor? <laughs> it was about. This is what I mean. Like, why wouldn't you have put all the eggs in the Kenobi basket? Why would you put them in the Andor basket? <laughs> 24 episodes! Imagine they had confirmed that for Obi-Wan. To be fair, we probably like, Jesus Christ, what the fuck is he gonna get up to in 24 episodes? Yeah. Oh my god. But I mean, you know, He'll doing... He'll just go on a tour of the galaxy. Well, yeah, because I mean, it looks like there's... They're gonna try and go for some political intrigue maybe with this as well, that there's, uh... Yeah. There's some lady character who's maybe Empire-adjacent, but rebel-affiliated. Is, is it Lara from Kenobi? Was she in this trailer, or am I just... No, I don't think so. Hmm. Uh, I guess when I saw her. Well, could she be dead by now? Oh, is this happen? This happens after... This is, I think, five years before A New Hope. Or okay. before Rogue One. Yeah, well, once at the same time, but yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um... Allah. Oh yeah, of so course, uh, Stellan Skarsgård's in this. I was like, yay! Yeah. yeah, look at you. I wonder what you'll be up to. How will they ruin you? <laughs> Just the, the fact that we know that someone can act is in this, okay? That's, that's something. It's true. Yeah. I mean, Ewan McGregor can act, but... And he did! <laughs> he he did. did! Yeah, he did sometimes. <laughs> there were parts, and it made me sad. It made me very, there very sad. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Visually, this thing looks like the most expensive of all the Disney Star Wars stuff outside of the movies. Um, which oh, has... it looks it. Yeah, and um, we got a longer story, and it's based on stuff that's not is not as rigid. You can do whatever the fuck you want with Cassian Andor, really. Nobody's going to care. So maybe that kind of freedom will be just what they need to make something that we can go, you know, chat? That wasn't shit. Wasn't shit, but uh, I yeah, wouldn't be surprised. You never do anything unsafe with Boba Fett. Look <laughs> how that turned out. Yeah. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if we watched like episode one. We're like, that was okay. Then episode two, we're like, oof, rickety. Then episode three, we're like, oh, no, they've we've been the down ball. this road. Yeah. It is a familiar path we've tread. Um, but I will be interested to check this out. Uh, what are you guys' interest levels at? I'm interested. I'm, in checking it I'm out. interested. We'll give it a shot. We'll give it a mm -hmm. chance. Chat, how are you feeling about Andor? Because like part of what I find amusing about this is that it was forever considered something to ignore and avoid. But I think, like I said, just because how bad everything is, it could be that maybe this one isn't cringe. I don't know. You like the setting? Interested? Skipping? Skipping? No? Why bother? Zero? Pass? Don't care? I feel yeah, nothing. I'm more interested than anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to do to see it? Too late. But I am curious. I'm am bored. Curious. Odd nope, meh. Wait, how many of you would check it out if we said we fully recommend it, out of curiosity? Yeah. Yeah. If we came back after two episodes and said, hey, they're, these are actually pretty darn good. They're worth a watch. This is the kind of Star Wars content we've been asking for, actually asking for, for years now. I watched... finally decided to do it. I'd watch you watch it. We we may have something like that set up. That's the thing. I don't know if I'd want to recommend this show until I see the full season, just so that I'm not like tricked or some yeah. bullshit happens, or it's just like ruins everything. I don't even know. I'm saying this at all as though this will be in any way like good, but that thing. yeah, but we'll see. We will see because I'm I'm. I'm curious. I want to see what the most expensive Disney show has to actually give me. Yeah. Which uh, which takes us over to a different IP. One that we oh, yeah. barely discussed at all in terms of new things. Um, and I know a lot of people want to, want to know what we think about all of this stuff. Uh, good old Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. The 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 fated <sighs> television show that basically everybody's already written off as like this will be shit. Um, 
it doesn't help. It's surrounded by a matter of everybody promoting it in ways that are just frustrating or um, yeah, vapid it's or anti-Tolkien. Um, insanely commercialized. It's just the soul has been completely ripped out of it. Um, this is product. This is this is Skinwalker product. Yeah, it's it's just it's every it fits all the the bill of of everything else. This happens to. <laughs> Lord of the Rings is next, and it's just, it's the, what's neat about this is the first time it seems that the fan base is like, okay, you've touched, you got your sticky fingers on everything, you haven't touched the Lord of the Rings cake that is beautiful, stay it's easy away to from it. It's off as being its own, yeah, you're over there being special, stay away, stay away from the Third Age, stay away from the things that we like. Man, that is a, that is a well-maintained pile of helmets. I, that's my first note. My first note is a massive pile of helmets out here. Like, what? Why? What's this? So what's going on here? To make it that rounded, like you, that takes some time. Yeah, someone, someone really felt passionate he, about making sure that. I mean, if that thing is helmets through and through, I'm just gosh, why did you pile them here? Yeah, who? That's why actually yeah. Helmets? Now I'm thinking like, why would anyone take the time to do that with just helmets? Was there? Like, a... If these are dead soldiers, would you not like? And look, there's no like battle. It's just. Maybe it's a vision. Just an empty field. It's a, Maybe it's, it's a just vision. It's a burnt yeah. forest, and this massive, insane pile of helmets. And like, I guess something <laughs> bad happened. Something bad, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe it's a ritual thing. Everyone has to toss the helmet over there whenever they die. Which yeah, uh, and then you have mm -hmm. to go get yours, and you're like, oh, this is a small. I need a medium. Like a... My second note is, you can't put a boat in the water. You have to CGI it. Well, to be fair, they've only got a huge budget, so what do you expect? Like, they can pay That's more CG thing. people. Because I'm like, man, I so much of what makes the Lord of the Rings timeless is that it's practical. I it mean, is... Lord of the Rings was more thoughtful in its use of CGI, because it uses yes. plenty of it. Oh, yeah. It's just it, do it does, uh, yes. Collective. It doesn't try to... It doesn't lean on it too heavily. It's like, yeah, we're going to make chain mail. We're going to give all this armor. We're going to make these oh. sets. We're going to go to these places. We're going to have all these props and these. The, the we're going to do all this has, horse perspective. Uh, t -shirt? Is this the one that has the t-shirt like armor? T-shirt. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, that. The scale. If, if I can find it. Sure. But like. <laughs> uh, that's one of the things people were favorably comparing um, House of the Dragon with this. Like House of the Dragon looks like they took more care, but. Who knows at this point until we sure get a good look. Budget, doesn't it? Didn't this season this cost like, like four? Shit. Well, hey, a lot of CG artists would have been paid, so that's that's a decent chunk of the budget gone. It's they such were a... given the rations in the dungeon. I'm almost more interested in like the the meta of this event than the thing itself, just because of what this represents. Like it's it's the first of the ruination that will probably happen of of Lord of the Rings. The first because you know like Star Wars is this. It's hard to say, like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I love Star Wars when the vast majority of Star Wars is not the OT. Yeah. Like, yeah. what are you referring to? With Lord of the Rings, most people will be thinking about Peter Jackson's right. trilogy. Yeah. A shit ton yeah. think about the books. This is the first... Like, The Hobbit kind of is there. <laughs> like, yeah. No. People aren't upset at The Hobbit. They're just like, yeah, The Hobbit movies happened, whatever. They will, their, their, their reputation will go up when this comes out. Uh, I guarantee it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course I will. Perhaps we judged you too harshly, little That's, Bilbo. <laughs> those memes are probably being written right now, ahead of time, ready to just, like, post on day one. So, yeah, um, you know, this will happen, and then this is, this is, they're planning five seasons of this shit, right? Yes, uh, they've already planned out five seasons. Yeah, and by the time the, if the fifth one really does roll out, like we're gonna just be like, oh, fucking go away. And then you know who knows what else they'll try. Shadows. Imagine they like they try to fucking remake Lord of the Rings trilogy or something. That would be like the <laughs> worst ever decision. The sun's on the left, and the shadows are on the left. Uh, it's a vision. I'll be my it's answer weird for anything. Seeing Black Hobbits. It's just strange. It is, well, for me, it's strange. It's just Letty Henry. I've known him forever. It's just like this sort of stand up and sketch comedian. I was just like, why why Letty Henry? But okay. Oh, I don't recognize him. Um, but yeah, uh, obviously, there's, there's 
gonna be all kind of, like, like, I don't even know what the plot of this thing is gonna be, but apparently if I wanted to know, I could have found out most of it by now. It's, a lot of it is, uh, leaked in uh, some ways and others. I, uh, I don't know how to, how to properly explain my stake in all of this. It's like, I, I'm like I said, I see I'm it as like, just, I um, I'm hoping it's the one that doesn't get to get away with it, basically. You don't get to shit all over a thing and just keep going. There's going to be enough fan outcry this time. <laughs> that's, that's all I hope comes from this. It'll be Amazon's big million gajillion dollar gamble that did not pay off. Yeah, because like TLJ uh, and Game of Thrones Season 8, those are the two big ones that happened. I'm hoping this is like another one where we all get to, instead of fucking around and being like, no, actually, Multiverse of Madness is a great film, we can actually be like, yeah, that was very bad, and we don't appreciate that. Don't do that. Sort yeah, of thing. could you give a shit next time, please? Could you care? Yeah. And, and not just throw money at things and pander? Going from, uh, you know, like, downvotes and shit on, like, the trailers and commentary and all the people spamming quotes from Tolkien about what evil is. Um... <laughs> It's, it's really got, like, a, a, a mainstream negative response, which yeah. is not common um, for, like, a project like this, which is, I guess that in and of itself is kind of interesting. Yeah. And, like, they've... <laughs> I think, uh, I think <laughs> the Resident that. Evil show have the same thing as well, like a wide-scale, broad, negative reaction. Um, yeah. So here's the part of the trailer that's probably most frustrating, actually. <laughs> Where they dare to, dare to fucking write his name. Well, so one of the weirdest parts is that they're launching the show on the day of his death. I know, it's that, so What is that? That, 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 that? That's an uncanny coincidence. If well, you the, will so make the thing. Doesn't it feel like that can't be a coincidence? And then if it's not a coincidence, why would they do that? And it's just like, it just seems rude. Yeah. You would ang you surely they know that, and if it was, it's not a coincidence because they could like, they they know. Like, well, because they, they, they would know these that, dates. Right? Like, yeah. Yeah. If you could, and, <laughs> it, I just like if I were a part of the team, I'd be like, oh guys, don't do that. <laughs> like, guys, if we just like, push it back a day, just literally a day. Well, I mean, yeah. Not, yeah. You could you could set it on his birth day. That might be that, a little that bit would be more. Better. It feels yeah. more celebratory. Yeah. The the, the yeah, day of his yeah. death. Like okay, nah, I get it. Today. Rings of power. It's over. <laughs> a new age has begun. The past is dead. Just let it die. Or whatever he said. What did he say? He oh, in this. Like, the so in this, well, yeah, because the one everyone always wants to connect it to is uh, let the past die, kill it if you have to from Kylo. This, uh, one of these trailers has him say something like, um, you have to move on from the past or you'll die with it or something like that. <laughs> Just like, fuck off. <laughs> I'll die with it then. This is the thing, it's, it's really gone. hard oh, not to... I have to, chosen death, yes. Really hard not to read into lines like that. You're like, what, why would you, you chose to put that in the trailer? Really? Hmm. They need to make a Two Towers remake that's the two corporations, and it's Amazon and Disney, and they're two evil black <laughs> towers, one with a smile on it and the other with a mouse. <laughs> the little mousey is, yeah. There's like two eyes in it. Because, yeah, this isn't going to help Amazon's rep. Not that it's doing great anyway. Like, for Amazon Prime specifically, like all of their shows and Apparently, stuff. Apparently, uh, Jeff Bezos was really, like, passionate about getting to make a Lord of the Rings show for, like, Amazon Prime. Yeah, but wasn't the passion behind it, he's had a quote where he was like, we need our Game of Thrones. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure that there is that, right, for, like, the attitude of, we need something that'll be people wanting to be on Prime and watch Prime stuff. If Jeff Bezos really said, we need our Game of Thrones, then that sounds like a bit of a monkey's paw <laughs> yeah. wish right there. It's like, you very well might just get your Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah. Except it's all season eight for you. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So this this guy, there was, there was the assumption, especially with the way the trailer shot, that this is Sauron. Um, but Gary and several others said it's definitely not Sauron from their information. This this is someone else. Okay. Uh, Person doesn't exactly look super intimidating though when they're clearly like the way the trailer goes, this is a this is a Let's villainous character. Eminem. Gonna be our bad guy, maybe? I don't know. Interesting to cast Eminem. It's a it's a radical choice, but not one that you no, know. This takes place in the Star Wars universe. There's no rails. Yeah. 
Oh, go back. Um, this struck me as odd. I almost made a comment on it where the two dwarves are talking and it cuts away for just a moment at this. Yeah, this guy on the left, his reaction. They kept that in and I'm like, that's weird that you kept that in. It just seems like a, he's just like, oh. <laughs> Uncle so this, Phil uh, told that joke again. It's really weird as well. Have, uh, have you noticed the whole, um, you have Galadriel and then the way they say it in this is Galadriel. Uh, a, lot, a lot of weird pronunciation uh, stuff going on here and there just just it's it's mostly something that, that, that'll probably be fine um ultimately but i worry about uh how anything out of step will just immediately be like <laughs> but then uh hey don't say that about bile boo bay gains well look if they pronounced like dexter Dex, dexter jetster's name wrong if you were to return as tall as i Jeetster. i would be Jeetster. outraged <laughs> Derek Jeter. <laughs> uh, yeah, is this the trailer or is it the one where the, the, the dialogue exchange was uh, you have not seen what I have seen. I, I have seen stuff. It's like, yes, but you you have not seen what I have seen. Well, like, what is that? And that was like a <laughs> dramatic moment day. in the trailer as well. Yeah. We're going to be here all day talking about what the we have. The music even cut seen. out to emphasize that. And it's like, this conversation is kind of weird. Um, I have a note here that says it seems like it's trying too hard to be cinematic and grand. Like its presentation is getting in the way of what it actually is. Because at the same time, it still comes across as extremely generic fantasy. Well, yeah, and the, um... I just feel like this doesn't have an identity to it. It feels like there's going to be an infection of the meta knowledge being that Sauron will be treated as though we know about his future. Uh... And his effects in Lord of the Rings. Meanwhile, like the I don't know that uh, I'm already thrown by like how how this this like this this is kind of like the Sauron prequel, and it's like uh huh, the guy you like from the other stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, she's in the closet. Not in this show. Um. So yeah, That's I uh, uh, this this is one where um, I probably would be on board with it with it if everyone was like, let's all skip it <laughs> or something. I'd be like, stay away from it's it. It's weird because there's a part of me that I feel like it's big that I kind I almost have this like I need well, to see it. I need to know. When I say let's all, I'm referring to like everybody that is involved with like sort of media commentary as a sort of like boycott. But I think that the the option to opt for is to be like, no, watch it, dissect it, and talk about what they've done, be it good or bad, uh, I feel like it will be weighed in one particular direction. Uh, discover the legend. Discover the legend. <sighs> it's so fucking Like, this yeah. looks like a mobile game ad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> discover the legend. Warriors of <clears throat> Corthreal. Colon the Reckoning. That forged the rings. Try as you might, you ain't ever gonna be able to get to their heights. That trilogy is done and it's done forever. It's in stone. No one can fuck with it. Well, um, you know the opening, uh, the opening uh, uh, theme, this music, the opening music of Lord of the Rings was, I think, was called Foundations of Stone. I'm not sure though. Or maybe that was the opening of Two Towers. I'm not sure. I gotta go back and double check. I wonder... That's another big pair of... Oh, he's gone. Oh, he's back. We're good. But that's another big pair of shoes that this show has to fill, is the music. Yeah. Good luck. Like, really, good luck. Fucking awesome. September 2nd. This... Insane. Right, you don't understand. There's so much shit coming out all at once. Yeah, that's pretty close, actually. Wait, does that mean Andor, She-Hulk, and Rings of Power are all going to be at the same time? Seems that way. Good God. Yeah. Not really fair, is it? A bit cruel. Um, to make us watch all these things. Also, yeah, I don't know about you guys, but... Yeah, it's about Rog. I just, yeah, I think it's about Rog. I think he looks worse yeah. than he does in the, uh, the original trilogy, but that, that could be my... Hyper bias. I don't, I don't know. know. I'd have to. I mean, looks. I mean, looks good. But that's the Balrog. Yep, that's him. 
You saw it's done like in the same fucking way as uh you know any any cameo like a character cameo. Just like Remember you like the, the Balrog. Balrog. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> yes, we do. Do we need the Balrog backstory? Why is he so angry? Why is he living in Moria? Why does he really hate wizards? We'll see. The we'll hidden see. legend. Before he was his ruin was smote upon the mountainside. Because yeah, we are <clears throat> we are we spend much more time talking about the thing itself than the things around it, how it's promoted or or what things have been leaked. Like we still talk about that stuff, but we just do it rarely yeah, compared. It comes so you know, we'll wait for this to come out, have a little look see, and let mm. you guys know what uh, what we think of it. Uh not looking forward to it. I'm sure it. it'll be great. No, Ma, it'll be great. It'll be very diverse, and they're going to have all of the action that you could ever ask for, and Galadriel is going to kick some serious butt. She's going to show them what she's going to do great, so don't you worry. Mm -hmm. Which brings us to our next fantasy thing. Uh, this one, I guess, I'm curious what, what, what thoughts even were had by the two of you, theoretically, with this. Dungeons and Dragons? No. <laughs> House of the Dragon. House of the Dragon. No. House of the Dragon. Of the Dragon. Um, right. I, I don't know. I've got nothing, really. I have very little. Um, I thought the Targaryens were white. Uh, Is that, am I missing something? I think, I think that's, that's getting changed for this now. They, uh, I, oh, I can't. Okay, I, I wouldn't be able to cite you specifics, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, the, the Targaryens are supposed to be all white. My, uh, my limited knowledge of Game of Thrones, which is very limited, that is it's just a... Uh, Something I recall seeing. Odd. All right. Uh, next note is uh, that, that this is really the only substantive note I have is I imagine any actual political intrigue and good writing will be terrible since writing that sort of multi layered drama is likely quite difficult. Um, this is a show that requires very good writers and this kind of thing, the thing that people are declaring it already is on the comments this is a really really difficult thing to write there's a lot of characters interacting with a lot of characters and there's rules and systems and you have to have the logistics of how things happen it's a lot to juggle really if your show is going to press that as a big thing can you do it probably not so that's actually uh pretty much all i've got to say about this as well it seems like they've this trailer is about as good as it can be they're offering you that there's going to be all kinds of political intrigue, backstabbing, and, and su succession, and, and throne dealings with some fun fantasy of dragons involved and backstabbing and stuff. It's like all the things you like from what you liked in Game of Thrones. But like, yeah, it's just gonna have to be. You're gonna have to prove yourself, show. You have to have someone write this shit that's uh, competent. I really have no problem with the trailer. It's fine. Like, I have uh, the other two things. I have stop saying Iron Throne, and <laughs> I don't care. Hey, but that's like the whole appeal, okay? Don't know, you want to sit on the just, Iron they say Throne? Iron Throne a lot. It's just like I just stop saying that. Stop saying Iron Throne. Like, come up with another like another title for it, so you don't have to keep saying Iron Throne. The Metal Throne. The Iron Throne. Yes, I know. It's yeah, we get it. Uh, yeah, it is my last, interesting my last that it is interesting that like Game of Thrones is just in terms of mainstream relevance has like lost so much of it, but still something, right? It's still something. It's just it's interesting. That's all. That, well, like something did, so popular. When did they decide to make the show? Was it before season eight was finished, or afterwards? I can imagine it was before. Yeah, there was so um, maybe that. At one point, there was like five different potential ideas, and they've there's this mysterious pilot that got made for a different show that got axed completely. That cost like a shit ton. Naomi Watts was like the main character or something. Uh, it'd be <laughs> well, fun to know this. what happened with that. But yeah, <laughs> Fringy. <Fringy's long. laughs> uh, oh, they made Fringy Gollum. <laughs> yeah, little green goblin. Fringy likes his goo. <laughs> Gollum <laughs> likes his green goo. Uh, House of the Dragon. Don't care. Uh, yeah, I don't care. Yeah, I don't care either. Um, but I'll possibly. I think this is one that I'm not going to watch until a couple of episodes are out and people have said it's good. 
Okay. Like, um, okay. <clears throat> and I'll just update you guys with like, oh, it was a. Uh, I mean, was I'll watch air. it with you. Would I'll you really want to want to do that? Would you really? Then again, I, I didn't guess... want to watch. I didn't want to. I didn't want to watch twelve trailers before this EFAT, but here we are. So mm. I, I'll do it for the people. <laughs> I mean, I'm interested in Matt Smith. It's always nice to see him around. See what he's up to. Yeah, I noticed him in there. Yeah. So he's a good actor, you know. As silly and... as everyone else. <laughs> Hopefully, he can move past Morbius. <laughs> People poor, asking poor him guy. about that while we try to talk about his Game of Thrones show. Yeah. Uh, Whoever sits on the Iron Throne, can they morb the hardest? We'll have to see. <laughs> they're not called dragons, they're called morbins. I would even say this trailer tries to bank on him quite a bit. Obviously they've hired him for his star power, but it's kind of interesting because... I'm not even sure what pushed him to star power if you discounted Doctor Who, which I know you shouldn't. It's just that... Was there anything else that sort of made people go was, I mean, Terminator Genesis was like a pretty great role for him, oh, you yeah. know? Wasn't he in like Downton Abbey or some... Or was it some other thing? The 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 Royals or something? Something to do with something like that? I think he was in like a show okay. for that. Obviously he's famous for Morbius as well, yeah. Oh, The Crown? Is that what he was in? Maybe that helped out too. <laughs> Terminator Genesis. <laughs> Yeah, I really have nothing much else to say, and we'll shall see what happens when this thing comes out. It's got a lot to prove, because people are still pretty upset with the last time they saw stuff to do with this. Which, uh, yeah, that gets us to Dungeons and Dragons, which I had no idea was even the thing. Wait, did you skip Me over either. John Wick 4? Done with what? Did you skip over John Wick 4? No. Oh, okay. I was just curious if you are going in order. I had to get up for a second, I just wanted to make sure. So Dungeons anyway. and Dragons! Yeah, I figured to put these three together because fantasy. That makes sense, yeah. Let's double check Which again, I think I did mention it. Indeed. Kind of neat that such high budget, actor filled things are being made for fantasy. It's just that, will any of them be good, you know? Mm. Hmm. My first uh, comment here is it's the quote Here's the thing, we're a team of thieves. My comment is, and I already know the vibe of this trailer. Yeah. Edit. I was right. Yeah, it's, it's, it feels like tongue-in-cheek. We're going to have some fun, but maybe some serious things may happen. All right. Nothing serious will happen. Someone will probably die or be at risk of dying at one point, and for a few Good. seconds it'll be serious. Mild. Like, it's mild peril. I mean, if, funnily enough, well, like, because... I'm completely disconnected from Dungeons and Dragons, but like the idea of a team of thieves steal a thing to give it to someone else, and that thing should never have gone to that person, and now horrible things are happening. I was like, that's a that could be a campaign. Yeah, it premise, just seems so. that because I have I have rock music, which I'm like, mm -hmm. um, this is my other thing is this is going to be magic bullshit the movie. Yes. Um. I have any potential. Let's see. Let me scroll my thing. Any potential cool stuff will be drowned out by chaos and insanity on the screen. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of things that look. Oh wow, isn't that crazy? And it's going to be drowned out by all of the other crazy shit that's happening, and it's all just going to be chaos nonsense. Oh, know? this um, this shot right here just makes me think like, how many fucking cities and worlds get designed every single day? By everyone all over the world for all these different projects. It's just yeah. infinitely for everything as well, not even just cities, obviously, like creatures and vehicles, weapons. Every single day, there's probably thousands getting churned out by everyone all over the world. Working hard. <laughs> Hopefully, they get paid. Because mm -hmm. remember, like, when you see, like, behind the scenes stuff, concept for even someone just like General Grievous, and you'll see, like, there's like a hundred different versions, and you're like, man, all that's just, like, lost to time, pretty much. Hopefully it's put in some book somewhere, you know, and sold. Yeah, it's called some the graveyard of, of what could have been. So then the the dragon turns up and spews tar on everybody. So that was mean. Yeah, that was mean. Yeah. Um, then he flies away. Yeah, because I'm just not into D and D at all. So this, funnily enough, a lot of people get the thinking about the Jeremy Irons movie. Like almost straight away, and it's just like I think they've made several shit movies after that, so don't worry. But uh, what's interesting is that D and D is now in a place where it wasn't back then. It's become kind of mainstream. 
D and D is a thing that's got a, a lot of popularity to it. There's a great deal of like it, it's it's a very strong presence in popular culture, and instead of this, it doesn't seem like it's leaning heavy into that idea. It's just it just seems like ve- it seems like action generic fantasy. Yeah. It this doesn't seem to have like it has any sort of an identity to it. It's just funny as well because you, you assume it's like, well, this is bigger budget, right? So the script, and it's like, no, nah, don't bet anything on that. No, we don't. No, <laughs> yeah, that's horseshit. Wait, you're gonna get a nice spider crawling up a tree. There you go. You're gonna get a some good CGI and some crazy you get bullshit. Chris Pine and Michelle Rodriguez, because I guess they were interested in doing a D and D movie. Mm. <clears throat> I will say I enjoy him in pretty much everything he's in, so. He's got charisma. So maybe maybe he'll be worth mm-hmm. it alone, but yeah, I just I don't think D and D fans are at all uh like watching this trailer and thinking, oh yeah. I think it's it's more so like, um hmm. Seriously though, I hadn't heard of this shit at all. Was this like known? Neither have I. I didn't know that this was happening. I only heard it because someone that I watch casually who talks about uh tabletop role playing games he was told to watch it and he said wow this is shit yeah i wouldn't do i wouldn't surprise me at all that a DD fan would think this is awful there's probably loads of shit in here that's all wrong because the core of what a DD campaign and this goes for pathfinder and all the other ones is that you generally will have your players three four maybe five players who have a character and they sort of have a mission to do. They have a thing to do. And it centers around how are you going to go about doing that? How are you going to get all the clues? How are you going to fight the battles? What, you know, what will your character do? What will your class do? You each bring something to your team's arsenal of abilities and stuff. You have your stats and you try and work within your stats. Like, like, see this, the door, that looks neat. That's like, that could be a cool spell where you like fall into the ground and then you appear somewhere else. But it's like, no, yeah. little things like that are just, it's not going to matter. <clears throat> no. But it doesn't seem like it has a D&D identity to it because d and a thing. I'm saying it too much. Now it sounds bad. But it it, it kind of have a, has a structure and a sort of formula in this. I don't know if this doesn't give me that vibe of what it is. Players going on this campaign or this mission. Yeah, it just feels like it'll be random magic. Well, well just stuff. It's just gonna be things. So it'll be magic bullshit. The movie. Yeah. Um, and the acting will probably be fine throughout, and Chris Pine Pine will be charismatic, and it will cost a lot of money, and it will probably lose money. Probably, yeah. I don't know if there's much. It of probably a demand. will. It does seem like a. Uh, it seems like an expensive project that probably isn't gonna have that much reach. Yeah, I don't see what about this. Like, ooh, look, a mimic is like, yeah, you're not going to go see the movie because of that. You know, it it doesn't have that. I just, I don't, as someone who likes these kinds of games, there's nothing about this that says this is that kind of game. You grunts in lose it. lose money. Oh, nice. You know, he's, he's, he is. he's, uh, he'll pull in them people to watch it, right? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. This came out of nowhere. And it's just like, a, oh, okay. If if you if you wanna, you go right ahead. I guess. Uh, you know, one thing I thought they were gonna do was he Chris Pine's got his little talky talky over. Isn't this a quirky fun adventure we're having? And he said, we're gonna need some things, strength. And then he shows a guy or whatever. And then I thought he would do like, like intelligence, charisma, wisdom, dexterity. Like he would do all the stats that your characters have. And each of the characters would kind of be like someone who's really big on that stat. So you, for agility, you'd have like the rogue who's jumping around and doing stuff. And for intelligence, you'd have the bookworm or the scholar or whatever. Wisdom, you'd have a old sorcerer man. You know, for charisma, you'd have the bard who's smooth talking and can get him in and out. You know, that's what I thought they were going to do. It was like, oh, this is this is fun. They're really leaning into the game. And then they're like, no, they just do something else. I'm like, oh, well, fuck that. Yeah. I just I, I hate knowing exactly what a trailer will be in the first five seconds. And yeah, I'm like, I mean, oh, this is as bad as I thought it'd be. This movie no seems... one's gonna see this and it's gonna lose money. And, and maybe like I'll be wrong. Made but... to be forgotten as well. Yeah. This doesn't have any identity. There's so much shit happening. Like, how can you latch on to anything? 
this film is not going to be one that breathes. It's going to be, it's going to try to be super funny and it's not going to be, there's going to be nothing funny about this because they clearly are trying for that angle, but nothing's going to be funny in this. And it's just going to, it's going to be a wisp of smoke and it's just going to dissipate. It will be empty vapors. It will be but a dream. No one will remember all of the CGI artists and their dungeons and dragons <laughs> getting the rations for doing all of this stuff. I mean, Dungeons and Dragons does sum up the CG experience, doesn't it? Sit in the dungeon, animate yeah. a dragon. That's about it. <laughs> so, yeah. That's the coverage of that. Um, leaving only one more. And the, the one that I have to, like, controversially sit in loads of conversations where everyone's like, Yeah, John Wick 4! I'm just like, um, okay. Uh, oh. Yep. So, Here it is. Yeah, for those who are not familiar with our takes on this, John Wick 1? Fucking great. Cool. Liked it. Nice. Love John Wick 1. John Wick 2. Wick oh no. One. You... Oh, this is bad. You got a bad case of sequelitis. You, you've, you're trying to regenerate a story because you haven't got one to tell, and you're... It, you accentuate a lot of elements of the character with a lot more grounded. Now he's like a lot more of a superhero, and uh, and you're really leaning into just isn't, isn't it fun when we shoot people and he reloads and then shoots them again or punches them and then jumps into them and reloads while he's like falling over them and shoots them and and also all of that is worse too. Yeah, they just everything just keeps getting worse. Um, John Wick Two was really bad and frustrating. John Wick Three was really bad and frustrating and. Uh, yep movies were shit. John Wick 4 it's just the same, like this trailer is just like yep, so expect the same. We got a bunch of new people that you yep. like, who are famous for doing some action shit in other movies he's gonna fight and kill them I guess you're like yep, that's then, what we yeah. do Keanu Reeves is gonna say yeah and that'll be that <laughs> um, he's not gonna deliver it well notes. <laughs> he's not gonna Guys, deliver the Keanu one Reeves word isn't a good actor, we just have to I we're think, gonna have to just uh, <laughs> I think everyone's on board with that now. Uh, yeah. You know, we throw it's in the caveat. Oh, he's such a great guy. It's like, absolutely. He's... Absolutely. He's a gem of a human being. I hope he lives a long and fruitful life. I, it'll be a sad, dark day when he passes away. He's not a good Whoa. actor. Um, um, I have three notes for John Wick 4. Um, the first one is, Arrow Lady should be dead. That makes no sense. I'm sad that we're seeing shit like that already. Like, like, oh, look, these are the yeah. ones she fights with a bow and arrow at close combat. Like, what the f- that's- oh, there's a so reason she... that people don't do that. I was like, okay, so she dies, all right? Like, okay, yeah, instantly, like, the first little action bit, I was like, this is dumb. This is so stupid. That's not what John Wick want. What John Wick won wasn't stupid. They put a lot of work and effort- this part here, yeah. yeah. That guy, like, what are those guys on the right doing? They're doing that thing that stormtroopers have to do, where it's like, oh, act like you're totally incapacitated. Oh. Um, my second note is uh, is about the sword and the gun clip when John Wick and that other guy had a sword in one hand and a gun in the other, and they were shooting at each other often, many, many, many times. This one here, yeah, I think. Yeah, it's this one. And they shoot each other many, many, many times, but mm -hmm. they don't hit each other. Well, because they're wearing the bulletproof suits, ranks. It doesn't yeah, matter if they man. hit each other. Oh. I fucking hate <laughs> oh, then you just the goddamn bulletproof the suit. Yeah, that's why they put their because arms up, so games. you can't oh. can't get it. I hate it. It's it's like I these assassins aren't even good at their stupid. fucking jobs. They just use incredible sci-fi tech that makes it so they can't be killed. Well, yeah, because why would putting you like the bullet would just move? You know what I mean? Like if you put your hand up, it's like if I hold a blanket that's bulletproof. Like the blanket would just fly up and the bullet would go straight, you know? Like, why if are we I holding up on the blanket? Debut? If I wear the bulletproof blanket, it's like Batwoman. We talked about this in Batwoman with her her bulletproof cape. If I have a blanket that's legitimately bulletproof and I put it over me and I have someone shoot me, I'm gonna have a horrific day. I'm. It's <laughs> yeah. like someone's hitting me with a hammer over and over and over again. That blanket's not helping much. Is is the implication here that he actually manages to block a bullet or two with his sword? Like, I don't know like, what they're doing. Like, like, are they actually doing the Deadpool thing, but for real? They're on the backhand, so they're getting double damage. Double, uh. double defense against the bullet. And it's like John Wick's whole thing was how efficient and he was in John Wick One. He was headshotting everybody, so it doesn't matter if he yeah. has a suit or not. Shoot him in the head. You're John Wick. That's what you do, or it's what you used to do. 
Oh, so so was it those My... suits are real? So what we what we're specifically referring to is what Rags just went through. Like, there's no impact anymore. The bullets just stop existing the second they hit the suits in these. They don't work. They can't work as much as they would yeah, like them to. As, as I think everybody knows, right? If somebody wears a bulletproof vest and gets shot. They're still going to be really hurt. Yeah, I've always appreciated. Uh, it in, um, definitely depends. It's like and... if you wear. Uh, um, sorry, I, I don't mean. You're going to gonna notice, say... right? You're going to uh, notice. You will, yeah. You it's, yeah, because you have soft body armor and hard body armor. But if you're wearing just like clothes, and you tell me it's bulletproof, but that's all it does, <laughs> like it'll stop the bullet from penetrating the actual material. I'm like, okay, I'll buy it. But when you get hit by that, you're going to be just like. <clears throat> Yeah, that's... Exactly. This, this massive bullet, well, I'm not saying this massive bullet, this massive amount of energy in a small area just got pinpoint, this supersonic piece of metal slammed into your body. Good, it didn't go through it, it's not going to cut through your body, but you are going to be on the ground having a horrible, you're going to be incapacitated, is mm -hmm. what's going to happen. No, and, uh, you and, just, and like, it's like people have them. it's like people have accepted now that that's just yeah that's the John Wick thing. And it's like watch the first one. He didn't need a fucking bulletproof suit because he was really good at his job. That was the point. Mm -hmm. But now he can like fuck up completely, and it doesn't matter because <laughs> there you go. Lawrence Fishburne's like, hey buddy, I've got your new bulletproof suit. Um, and you might be like, why are you complaining about that? It's like, because that's mainly going to be the movie. It's, that's all it is. The story will be shit. It always is. Oh, uh, yeah. Except, again, for the first one having a lot of potential with what story they were telling. But it's mainly just to connect a bunch of action scenes. And the action scenes are going to be reliant on John just not being able to be hurt. Or if he is, it's always just temporary. Then he goes to some doctor person and it's all fine. I cannot fucking believe there are four John Wick movies. Absolutely fucking my, insane. They should have stopped at one, but there we are. In the vein of what we were talking about, my third and final comment is a little thing I wrote down. I worry that they'll try to overdo the melee combat in strange niche weapons for the sake of variety when it would make no sense whatsoever. Yeah. I think that is absolutely where we're... That, that, that's, that almost... I think they think that that's what they're supposed to do at this point. <laughs> Like, we've got to find new ways to have people kill time, each other. Yeah, if you're an assassin in this world, and you have X amount of hours in your day to practice and get proficient, you're going to do that with a gun. You're going to do that with something that's al it's such, it's already such a huge force multiplier that you don't have to learn swordsmanship or, like, rely on the other person having a sword or something, because somebody just point at you with a gun and you're dead, and all that sword fighting is going to count for nothing. It's... It's... I... Ugh... Oh, and as someone mentioned, he he is shot while wearing his bulletproof regular vest in the first one, and it hurts. Like, yeah, because <laughs> that's so. I mean, the first one is that's a lot of energy. The first one is weirdly grounded compared to the second and third. They yeah. just go off the rails. Like, look, he's got a nunchuck here. You haven't seen him use one of them before. Excited? Wow. Just like, okay, sure. Because that's what it is. And I hope people are really going to be honest about this eventually, where it's like, nobody actually cares about John Wick as a character or his story. They just want to see him kill people. And you might be like, well, why do you watch James Bond? Isn't it the same thing? Uh, Ethan Hunt, isn't that the same thing? I'd be like, nah, I think there's a lot more meaningful shit going on in those uh, than John Wick has going on right now. Exactly. And there's no reason why you can't have meaningful shit going on, but they just keep on going. Everything gets extended and expanded. This world is way bigger than you ever thought. There's way more people you've never heard of that are the most important players in this universe, and he's going to kill every one of them. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I do not know if Metal has any intentions to uh, go over this film with more than, than a forge, but I'm sure he's got his eyes on it. He's essentially <laughs> our John Wick person at this point. <laughs> yeah, if we've all got a John Wick person. Mm -hmm. No Time to Die was very meaningful. Well, that's the thing. I, I thought that movie was shit, but uh, yep. I don't know. I, it, <laughs> that doesn't mean. Like, Fallout was great. And hopefully, the next Mission Impossible is great. I hope so. Um, and that about does it. Yeah. Thank you Ugh, so much for, for this, this trailer medley. Then you all got to listen to all of our thoughts on upcoming things. Mm -hmm. As you can see, judging from the way everything was timed up, we're, we're, we're forever sad, but still keeping an eye on the MCU. There's a lot of, a lot of fleems to do with that, you know, with thinking about it. Uh, 
DC is more of a joke to us. Um, like a like a, you you think like isn't the MCU a joke? And it's like well, it's more sad that the MCU we're constantly sad about how everything's gone. But DC we were never really, you know, what was the good DC film? It's like we we thought it might have been Wonder Woman or what Man of Steel. About? Man of Steel was amazing. <laughs> uh, yeah, that did. So we've got no baseline at all. But uh, I'm just keeping an eye on it. And then yeah, the rest of the stuff is just sort of new things coming out gradually. And so what you can expect is that there may be minis for Andor, there may be minis for She-Hulk, there may not be anything for either of them. There may be coverage of all different kinds of things, like some of the stuff you saw today. I, I could imagine we'd do an EFAP on John Wick 4, depending on if you guys are up for seeing it. Um, it could be one. Yeah. I doubt I mean, we'll have any uh, coverage of the, the, first three. the Dungeons and Dragons movie, maybe in conjunction with the Dungeons and Dragons arc, because there's loads of those films, and apparently they're all horrible. The point is, we ain't promising shit <laughs> yeah. right, with this stuff. It's, uh, I don't know how everything's going to roll out. Um, <clears throat> but we are getting very... This is episode, what, 196 now? For us? Fucking crazy is that? Yes. This is 196. 7, 8, 9. Hey, we're getting close to quite a benchmark number. I'd say so. Uh, for those who are unaware, 27th. That's when that's happening. We're, uh, and, you know, who knows what we'll, we'll end up covering. Another, another just crazy, crazy day. Uh, by the time we hit that, there won't be any episodes of Andor out, or Rings of Power. But there might be one for She-Hulk, right? Yeah, I think so. So we might have a little, uh, a little talk, I don't know. Do you have a title, Mauler? What are you talking about? That is in the title. Oh yeah, but I couldn't, I hadn't, it wasn't on my screen, okay? I can't just read whatever I want, whenever I want. That'll be nuts. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, it, it'd be plenty to look forward to, right? That's the theme of the trailers we just watched through. <laughs> is there literally anything that you're like? <laughs> oh yeah, someone did mention, it's um, like, oh, nothing for games. It's like, well... Scorn. Um, I'm looking list at the that'll, that'll probably be cool. Yeah. Um, you got Ragnarok, right? That's what you're. Yeah, I'll be you're definitely interested in that. To. That's not even that long from now, right? No, I think it's uh, October. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, and then October, you know. November. Oh, and October will mean. Is it full of the House of Fashion will be out this year? I think so. Is anything we'll on need that? it. This precious fucking oasis. <laughs> <laughs> in this sea, in this <laughs> desert of crap. It's Maybe, not sand. Yeah. It's poo. Is there anything? It would be like Gore coming up to the oasis. Except Mike Flanagan will say, It's great until the ending, and we'll say, That's fine. That's fine, <laughs> That's yeah. Fine. Fine. Well, give me everything you have to give. Yeah, hopefully that comes uh, out. Plenty of fun things will happen around Halloween time as well, you know. Um, at least there's a Zootopia spin off coming. Yeah, there you go. There you go. I have no idea. I have not seen Zootopia, if you can believe it. Um, I think I have. Not in a while. Yeah, I have. So, well, I suppose what we'll do now is have a little look, see them, and the messages that have come in while we've been talking about all these things. See what the crowd have to say about all these yeah, wonderful, wonderful projects. Uh, Belgium. I'm gonna go ahead and guess they're about as excited as we were, if not less. So you go, I have been floating for 10 minutes. This must be a reference to how I somehow managed to say that it was, the episode was on the way before actually going live. Never yeah, again it's, it's shall I do that. What a horrible mistake. I don't actually mind doing it, really. <laughs> also, hi, Rex. Hello. Wings quote of the day. I really wanted to get that surgery, man. I wanted it so fucking bad. Dog whimpers for pity. That's the most famous quote. I know that one. Yeah. That's uh, it's top tier. It's one of the best ones ever. It's it's a very emotional thing. It is. It's very emotional. <laughs> get a very yeah. You get a deep dive. A uh, highlight from the recent Fringy stream. Imagine how cringe it would be if Shadow the Hedgehog's dad was called Doom. Wait, he is. Yeah, I I joked that. Um, <laughs> We're talking about like how names in context and then out of context, they can be different levels of cringe or different levels of cool. And I said, 
like Doctor Doom evokes quite a cool thing for a lot of people, but if with zero context, I'm pretty sure we'd all talk about how lame that name is. Like, because it's more so the character we think of if, if we're praising it. And I said, like, it sounds like something you'd name, like, Shadow's Dad. Turns out Shadow's Dad surname is Doom. Um, <laughs> so that's hilarious. And I'm very glad that they chose the correct surname for <laughs> when they were writing who his dad would be. Um, he has the, yeah, his name is Black Doom, the creator and biological father. <laughs> his brother is... <laughs> <gasps> oh. I, I I wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared. All right, we've established that Shadow Shadow's father is Black Doom. His brother, it's in quotes his brother, is Eclipse the Darkling. Oh my god. Stop it. <laughs> Why can't he just have a little brother called Dave? Heaven, you know? Like <laughs> You see, it's, Shadow the Hedgehog is the end result of Project Shadow, an effort to create the ultimate life form. <laughs> ultimate life form is in capital letters, by the way. Of it's course it is. Yes. Why wouldn't it ultimate be? Ultimate life form. Beautiful. Uh, let, let me just read you the next sentence. Created by Professor Gerald, see, God forbid a normal name, Professor Gerald in his efforts to find a cure to a rare disease known as NIDS in IDS, that was affecting his granddaughter, Maria Robotnik. Robotnik. Shadow was gifted Robotnik. Shadow was gifted with the powers of the alien Black Doom through that entity's blood. Oh. Uh, <laughs> after the project was forcibly shut down by the government, Shadow was, <laughs> You make it hedgehogs! In here, you make it ultimate hedgehogs! The evil hedgehogs. Stop it! We're cutting, your, we're cutting the funding. What? You can't cut my funding. Back to formula. Back After the project was forcibly formula. shut down by the government, Shadow was put into stasis for 50 years Damn. and then awakened by Dr. Eggman, Gerald's grandson, to help him take over the world. Neat. Uh... Mauler, Noah Caldwell Gervais made a four hour video about From Software Games. It's horrific. Please do some kind of response. He needs to be stopped. Four hours. I don't know. I don't think I got stuff I gotta do. Um, he's welcome to have silly opinions, okay? We should all be allowed silly opinions. Um, yeah, we should. But yeah, you know, but hey, why don't, why don't you uh, do a response? You know, maybe. Uh, yeah, Fringy. Yeah. Uh, no, nah, I'm not interested. No. Give it a shot. No? All right. Today's animal of the day is the cara caracal? Caracal. I assume that's how it's oh, pronounced. Oh, caracal. Yay. Yeah, it's they like the little, it's like a little cool. lynx. Like yeah. a, like a big cat. With no, the things on his ears. He's cool. He's got the things on his ears, flopping around. Yeah. I hope he's doing all right. I think they I are. Hope, I hope he's not upset about the MC. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that the Caracals don't know what's happening to the MCU. Um, Sitch and Adam need to be straightened out. They keep bad straw manning consistency. No Way Home beginning third is bad because it's consistency focused. Equal consistency equals bad. What? You you might have to read that again. <clears throat> no Way Home beginning third is bad because it's consistency focused. But it's like the no worst. Way home. Well, no, maybe not the worst. The it's, it's there's a lot of garbage in the first third. For I wouldn't call it consistency focused at all, unless what we yeah. mean. Do they mean like expositional, and it's not interesting to watch because it's more so setting everything up? Is that what they mean? Because I, I I am always very exhausted when people say like, oh yes, we should make everything make sense. That's going to be exciting. As if, like, you can't do it interesting, and that's my problem, not yours. <laughs> like, it's like, I, I have no problem with trying to make a scene interesting while also setting rules. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. Sitch and Adam uh, have interesting perspectives on media. And they, them. they follow my assumption that when you primarily focus on politics, uh, you end up saying some stuff about media that's, that's um, you know, you know. I'm gonna tell him you said that. <laughs> I haven't said anything. I just, yeah, you know, just my, my thoughts be wandering. 
Uh, now all the buzz has gone down. I think Invincible is pretty neat. It has problems, but I enjoyed it overall. Also high regs. Oh, hello. Pretty neat, huh? All right. Yeah. Yeah. Bitch, now I'm going to start a okay. media podcast. They should totally do that. And, uh, and then invite me on every time they have a bad opinion. All right, but I can't go on every episode. That would be ridiculous. Hey, y'all. Any advice for aspiring fantasy writers? I thought I'd ask, since you seem to share my appreciation for well-done character work. Thanks for all the great shows. Oof. Something that's fantasy in particular? That's Can I have a tough overpowered you. magic? Sure, yeah, yeah. Keep everything like low with magic. Grounded, yeah. I think that's probably the way to go. Because like this Dungeons and Dragons movie, it like I said, it's gonna be magic bullshit the movie, and you'll just do you just how is this world function with all of this magic everywhere and all these spells and just this insane power that everyone yeah it's madness. Um, I don't know. I guess uh, some. I, I assume that you asked specifically for um fantasy for a reason but i don't know what to say apart from that that's fantasy specific um i guess draw inspiration from really good things but change it up in a way that makes yours unique um a lot of even bad fantasies can have neat elements to them so mix and match and change and warp things and twist it into something not twist in a bad way but you know draw from inspiration and make it your own yeah, uh, uh, come up with some neat ideas that maybe no one else has done. Uh, but yeah, characters will be big when it comes to fantasy stuff, as they are in many things. Characters are still king. Yeah, there's so many ways to um, almost begin the, the the embers of your story. In that you could be like, you're just thinking of a payoff, or you're thinking of a world you just want to see and see everyone in, or you think of one character you really like and you want to see them do certain things. It really depends on you. What 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 do you want? And then, obviously, uh, the second you commit to anything, that's pretty much how our writing advice would probably go for, like, page one. It's just, like, whenever you've committed to anything, everything yes. else now has to react to that having existed and can't contradict it. That's sort Be of Be careful build. what you commit to, yeah. It goes into the overpowered magic stuff. It's just, like, don't... If you're going to commit to this idea that you can do this and you can this and you got spellcasters everywhere and they're doing this and doing that, it's like, man, like, that's... That's a huge element of the world that you can't really escape from. It's going to have yeah, a lot it, of crazy implications. Kind of highlighting how stories get broken in the first place. The, some guy is like, I'm only ever going to have them float a pencil. That's as far as it's ever going to go. That's as far as their magic can go. They'll use it in those really subtle and interesting ways. But I think a big payoff near the end will be one person manages to pick up like a table. And that's incredibly impressive that they have that kind of power. And he's like a special kind of guy. Okay. Um, and then, then, you know, 10 years later, it's really popular, and some new guy comes in to write, and he's like, he's going to pick up a spaceship. I'm like, oh, uh, you can't really do that, uh, because, and then he's like, no, but it'll be really cool. This is more magic than we've ever seen before. It's going to be incredible. Because people liked it when he picked up the table as a big payoff, so imagine what yeah. they'll think when he picks up the whole house. Wow, when he pulls the moon into the ocean, it'll be so cool. He's going to hold the whole solar system in his hand because it's cool. So, hey, you know, that kind of advice. But also, expand your mind. Go crazy. Have all kinds of stuff yeah. in there. Subtle allegory more? Yeah, you can't imagine what I'm applying that to. Everything, basically. The only magic carpenter I can think of is Jesus, so... Yeah. Finally caught up. Started mid-September 2021 and had had a blast. Thank you for showing me how to think more about the media I enjoy instead of clapping at every spectacle. Also, high rags. Hello. Hey, glad you've had fun with it. We uh, we here always love to have new people jump along, see what they have to say about this, that, and the other. Hopefully you find our breakdowns entertaining as well as insightful. And that is the hope, so thank you very much for sharing that. Uh, please read the Pokedex entries for Frostlass. Frostlass. Could you spell that for me, please? I will post it for you, and I will hope that this isn't some kind of creature that freezes people to death, but... And then it, like, breaks them into pieces. <laughs> and, and eats the pieces the and, and absorbs yeah. the soul, that sort of thing. Alright, let's go to... 
Scroll down, bulbapedia.net. All right. Do, 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 do. And did they Pokedex entries for Frost Last? I'm looking for someone here that's particularly. Oh, my goodness. Oh, here it is. Uh -oh. Here we go. Something happened around Sun and Moon where I don't know if there's something in the water over there at Nintendo <laughs> HQ or there was a gas leak. I don't know what it was. Okay. When it finds humans or Pokemon it likes, it freezes them and takes them to its chilly den where they become decorations. Great. Just great. Oh, that was the sun. That was the sun entry. The moon entry is very distinct. The soul of a woman lost on a snowy mountain possessed an icicle, becoming this Pokemon. The food it most relishes is the souls of men. So it's literally what I worried it would be. Yeah. Exactly what I worried it would be. Okay. Well, you know. This? Okay. Um... The because there's Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, and these are both pretty creepy. It freezes hikers who have come to climb snowy mountains and carries them back to its home. It only goes after men it thinks are handsome. Oh man, and, be ugly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the way uh, to Ultra win. Moon. Even the first sentence is like, "All oh, right, like to to help them, right? It's home to thaw them out." Or no, I don't think so. But um, Ultra Moon says it's said that on nights of terrible blizzards, it comes down to human settlements. If you hear it knocking at your door, do not open it. Okay, I'm not gonna. Good it advice. Friendly, it's not friendly. Yeah, it brings frozen prey back to its lair and neatly lines them up. Um, Legends Arceus says a Pokemon inhabited by the soul of a woman who died. Bearing a grudge in the snowy mountains, legends of Frostlass placing deathly curses on misbehaving men send shivers down my spine. So it's a fucking ghost witch, and it curses people, and it freezes them, and it ugh. Yay, Pokemans! This next one says something phase... happened with Pokemon. Yeah, phase one is still the best phase overall. It might be. Uh, you got Avengers in there and Iron Man. Uh, and I remember Cat being pretty solid. Thor and... Yeah, it's pro it probably is. Probably is, honestly. I'm making a video on Lightyear, and I figured out Chris Evans is just doing his cab voice, but then deepens his voice for popular buzz phrases. I hate it. Yeah, I don't think... Uh... Talking about a movie that came and went pretty quick. Yeah, I don't think I'm ever going to see Lightyear. I don't think I want to. Um, hey, we won't see Lightyear in a long time. That's true. So, Thor had to stop Gore from opening the door, and after Thor beat Gore, he crawled on the floor to get to the door. Everybody do the dinosaur. Everybody do the dinosaur. That's, um, isn't that Ice Age 3? Yeah. Remember that? How many of those are there? Two now? people have said, no. So two people have said in chat that uh, Pokemon's always been that way. It's always been dark. They said Drowsy steals children and Cubone wears its mother's skull. I feel I don't know. I feel like because I was around for the first gen stuff and it never seemed that way. Also, you know, I maybe where's I just his mother's skull selectively. is a hell of a lot less scary than what you just described about that. That dude in the yeah, icicle. its favorite food is men's souls and yeah, stuff like that, on. or it freezes you and it. Brings you back to its place, and that you just stay there as decoration. Like I don't know, it feels that I don't know. I feel it's a step different. I feel it's a step up. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, in back to back, it did get worse. Nah, it's always been that dark. I don't know. It feels like it's gotten darker. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's categorically gotten darker. There's no fucking way. Uh, always been like that. You might be able to find one or two references, but we're seeing them all over the place now. Kind of nuts. It's always about eating people's souls and stuff. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I'm concerned Quantumania will assassinate Scott Lang's character. Apparently he's too busy with his book to spend time with his daughter. Am I alone? Yeah, that's that's bullshit. And it's going to be really annoying. So, woohoo. Ant-Man Quantumania? More like Sonic Mania. Haha. <laughs> Whoa. Nice. I, I like Sonic. Sonic Mania is good or bad? Cool. I assume it's bad. Uh... I have no idea, but I think you're probably right about the whole, like, when you bet on Sonic as a content, you're more likely to hit bad than good. 
think. I'm going to upset some Sonic fans. Your IRL Pokemon of the day is the Dragon-Headed Caterpillar. Also high rags. Hello. But Dragon why headed? rags? Oh, because that's just... Because we've, we've got to do it that way. Because I have fun. Because I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. That's why. This is a very interesting creature. Let me get you a picture here. I totally agree that it's an IRL Pokemon. Look at that thing. Yeah. Oh, you're looking at it good. It's... Yeah. It's... uh. Very interesting. Dragon-headed caterpillar. That I wonder what it... That should have inspired into. a Pokemon, to be honest with you. What, what is this critter that you've got pulled up? He is a dragon-headed caterpillar. That's an awesome-looking caterpillar. Yeah. He looks like Rayquaza. Maybe Rayquaza is inspired by this. Yeah, I was thinking that. What does it turn into? What does it look like after it becomes a butterfly? I don't know. Uh, Dragon-headed caterpillar, butterfly, because the, is butterfly, dragon-headed, uh, I'll get back to you on that. Can we look forward to any The Boys Season 3 coverage, or are we past the point of caring? Uh, Rags and Fringy definitely don't care, sure. and I cared enough to just find out what happens in it. And complain to Fringy in a ball for like 10 minutes and then never talk about it again. So, probably not, no. Unfortunately. Do you guys think Mr. Nimbus will still control the police in Wakanda forever? Knowing how the MCU treats continuity, I'm worried. Who's Mr. Nimbus? Mr. Nimbus? I'm missing... blind and I don't know. Am I missing a reference? I don't know who that is. Is he like a cloud person? Person of Clown, sorry. Mr. Nimbus. Oh, it's a Rick and Morty reference. Cause, oh, yeah, because he's like the he's like an Aquaman type. Oh, yeah, that's right. I Nimbus, remember. Yeah. I, I understand. Yes, he will be in Wakanda forever, I'm pretty sure. Uh, James Gunn for Booster Gold movie. Hmm. Oh. It probably would have been that alternate timeline where James Gunn would have actually become one of the like most influential creators of the MCU, and that oh, isn't Booster Gold is DC? No, I know. I'm I, what I'm saying is just the 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 thought because we were talking about it at this yeah. point. And it's just like he was meant to be the producer of the cosmic side and at if, one point. If that timeline had come true, we probably would be dealing with a lot more quality controlled MCU stuff. But too late for mm -hmm. that now. Uh. But, maybe that will mean that we get some pretty cool DC stuff. Yeah, Who maybe. knows? I liked the Suicide Squad, you know? What about Pacemaker? Well, you know, the Suicide Squad, we already gave a five, so it's not like it was the most amazing thing in the world, yeah, but yeah. we'll see. Sure. Hello, EFAP crew. Um, well, actually, before you move on, I, I found the, what, the butterfly that the dragon-headed caterpillar turns into um uh it's yeah it's, uh, you sound unimpressed it's yeah i kind of am Aww. it's all right i guess mm -hmm. with a caterpillar like that it would you know i guess i was expecting because you know, generally dragon. the caterpillar becomes the beautiful butterfly right and now it's like the incredible caterpillar becomes it's an all right butterfly yeah uh, hello, EFAP crew. Is there ever a time you feel you were too cynical, or that others were too cynical? Yeah, probably. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know what examples I come up with exactly. Uh, too cynical. What do you call too cynical? Is that what they're saying? I it... guess perhaps I treated you too harshly, basically. Perhaps like, you I were cynical to a way that made you overly negative about something that you eventually realized was, you know, had more value than you first gave it? Um, most of the time we overshoot, don't we? Like, in a positive way rather than a negative way. I think typically, yeah. We're like, no, 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 this could be good because of these reasons, and then we're like, oh. I mean, it I is not into, often that something goes pretty up. pretty cynical. To that? be fair, I went, into that. I went into the Patriot pretty cynical. I was about to say, that's sort of the standout example of the other way. 
Right. Um, generally, things do not get better on rewatches if we didn't already kind of know it. Uh, sometimes we go into stuff and we're like, oh, yeah, it's probably definitely got some huge issues. And then we see it and we're like, yeah, we were right. But it's rare that we're surprised that things are better than we thought, I think, in a meaningful, you know, in a big way. Maybe Patriot we were too cynical, movies, believe it or not, with phase five. Yeah, oh, yeah, maybe it'll be really good. Maybe they'll be the best Avengers movies ever. Making them maybe they're in the same year because they like shot them and produced them back to back and they're just releasing them. Oh, can you imagine making two of those at once? Oh, I think they made Infinity War and Endgame back to back. Like production wise, like they, they, yeah. they did it all in one run. I think so with reshoots and stuff. But yeah, I think that was back to back for like eight, nine months. Mm -hmm. Huh. They did that with Lord of the Rings. They did. Lord of the Rings was yeah. like 14 Lord months. Of the Rings. I think it was yep, like from shot it all. 2000. Yeah, did them all back to back. And then they staggered the releases in the movies. Watch the Noble Six Ghost of Reach teaser trailer. No. Right. Why? Well, like, on stream. Yeah, why? Is it is it because it's really good? It's a Halo thing, I guess, because Noble Six Ghost of Reach. But I'm just, I don't know. I, get, I just don't care about Noble Six. You know, like, I feel like we got that story. Um, or are they just asking to watch, like, one of the trailers for Halo Reach? Is that what they're asking? Yeah, I don't know. What is it called? Uh, Noble Six Ghost of Reach. That doesn't sound like a trailer, actually. That sounds like something Noble else. Six... Well, they called it a teaser it trailer, so... So I guess this is some kind of a... show, or... I have no looks clue. Like a, yeah, it looks like a CGI sort of thing here. Oh, yeah, people are saying like it's, a... A, it's a fan thing. Okay. Oh, what was the question? Can you read that question again? Watch it. Go watch it. It's kind of a funny way to do it. Go watch oh, this thing. The voice acting <laughs> is so bad. Oh, wow, no. see, this is part of the problem, right? You, you, this is your monkey's boy. You asked Rex to watch it, and you might not be getting what you wanted. I've just been skimming and listening a bit. Like, it looks fine for what I ex I'd expect. It looks fine. Um, monkey's boy. For... But this is not then what they and they started talking. <laughs> it looks so. Don't have your friend Kevin do your voice for your brooding. <laughs> oh, voice actors do work. Like that's it's not just something anyone could do. <laughs> it makes me laugh. I'm sure they tried their best, but that's is this not what good. is this what you wanted? <laughs> I don't know. I hope this isn't what you wanted, but it's just. I, I barely have any like... idea what's going on. I was like, it's only a minute. I'll just post it here for later, and you could skip to the part where they start talking. It's bad. Oh. You just clearly tell they just they just had some guy do it, and it's like well, this is just probably your friend, isn't it? Your friend didn't do a good job. Should have high voice acting is really important. <laughs> like I couldn't do a, a a lot of voices. I'm not a voice actor, really. So. Oh. Uh, phase four is about family. Dom and Brian drift in and steal the Millennium Falcon and save Iron Man from the Bat Cave and gather forces to save Ray and steal all the l latium on the Ferengi homeworld. The Ferengi homeworld? No, Ferengi. Oh, okay. And yeah, I was about to say the Ferengi homeworld. What? That's just Earth. Neat. That's confirmed. Yeah, that was never in doubt. You don't understand. Every last piece of anything getting confirmed is very important. The law writers all yeah. go nuts. Sure, I'm Earth just is confirmed. Um, the D and D trailer was the best one from SDCC. Lol. I don't even know what I'd say the best trailer was. Yeah, Wait, I don't know. Uh, House of Dragon, I guess. Like, it's it's as good as it could possibly be, but I just don't trust it. Uh, yeah, of course. Like the other stuff. For good reason. Mm. Uh, but the D&D &D trailer, I don't know, I just, it just felt super, super generic to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
I want a Booster Gold trilogy. The first movie focusing on what it means to be a hero. Second, building his relationship with Blue Beetle. Two and two and three, losing Blue Beetle and learning how to accept his death. Well, oh, know. that's not happening by the looks of it. So, Booster Gold. Now that Phase Four is over, you can watch FX's Legion. Nah, I've heard of it. Is that a movie? TV show. Or a TV show. show. TV show. Is that on like Amazon or something? Uh well, if it's FX, it'd be on Disney Plus, right? Ah, okay. Um, I've heard Le Legion's good. I just I yeah. have, but I'm not interested. Uh, Muller, I understand if you want to prevent spoilers, but thoughts on the end to Better Call Saul season six episode nine? It was interesting, but thought it skipped over some details. Is that nippy? Is that that episode, episode nine? Um, I enjoyed it. I don't feel very passionate about it at all. I think people are incorrect when they say it was nothing. However, I can understand why people have said that. And that show should be careful to make sure it has a point to, to, to make with, with, with how many episodes it's got left. I'm sure it'll be fine. Oh, Nippy is episode 10? I'm trying to remember which one, what happened in episode 9. Um... Yeah, I'm I'm really not someone you're going to want to get uh, commentary of Better Call Saul from. I just, my passion levels are so low on it. It's a, uh, from what I can, I, I, would, I would say it's a good show. You guys should check it out. But, um, yeah. <laughs> so it's, a, it's a rib over here. I'm just like, hmm. I'll check out the last three episodes. Don't worry, I'll mention what I thought of the finale at some point. Probably after it is. Uh, I will defend Nippy to my grave. Yeah, I mean, I was surprised that so many people were upset with Nippy. And, uh, you know, I think, that, I, think, I think they need to calm down and maybe complain when the whole season's done. Maybe if, if there's not much going on at that point, that's, that's a time we could be like, why did they spend so much time on Nippy? Okay. Um, the insouciance of movie makers and game developers, oh, game developers, is simply disappointing these days. I don't know what, the in ignorance maybe? Oh, what happened to the days when people worked to make good movies and games just to make good movies and games? There's still lots of good games coming out. There are, yeah. It's, I mean, we, we do in Gloom a lot, but in terms of the amount of content that you have at your disposal as a gamer, it's never been better, honestly. I mean, especially as older stuff remains playable in a variety of ways with, you know, double A and indie stuff all over the place. I mean, you've you got the cream of the crop to pick from. And yet, it feels less reliable that good things will come out. Yeah. Way better. I mean, games are doing way better than fucking movies. Uh, it's remarkably telling that any MCU film not banking on nostalgia gets outsold by Top Gun and Aquaman. Any MCU film that's not banking on nostalgia. I, I mean, Multiverse tried to bank on, I guess they're saying No Way Home, but Spider-Man would have always made more than, like, Top Gun and Spider-Man. And I, I feel like Doctor Strange was still kind of trying to use... There definitely was. No. Um, yeah, no, that does put it into perspective, though. Aquaman is more successful than Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. It made more money. Yeah. So, it's, I can't both believe of those that. are crazy. Yeah, they're both shit. Question for the EFAP crew. My screenwriting professor told me once that the most important aspect of an adaptation is to maintain the tone of the source material. Agree? If disagree, what do you think is more important? I'll go disagree with, um, disagree. I'll go with spirit it before just, tone, but I would agree that that's pretty broad. Yeah, yeah, it is it is broad. And if the most important say the most important part of making an adaptation is to write something good. <laughs> it's always gonna be to write something good. Well yeah, because well, I was that's an odd that's an odd that way sucks. to phrase it. Like what's the yeah. most important thing about making an adaptation? It's like, well, why, like, an adaptation specifically? What about making an adaptation requires something different? For, like, are they talking about accuracy? I, yeah, I don't... It's, like, you see what I mean? Um, like, in the, in the questioning? So, in my head, I'm fighting between 
as faithful as you can be or as good as you can be, because those are two different things. But when you're saying what is the important aspect of an adaptation as opposed to... Uh, a good story. Yeah, because a good adaptation might mean that you're 100% faithful. It's, it just depends on how you categorize what makes a good adaptation, yeah. I guess. Um, because, you know, some people have already said, like, respect the original, and it's like, what if the original is, like, really uh, bad and everyone yeah, hates what it? Yeah, it sucks. I mean, what if you respect it and you're just not talented? Yeah, I mean... What if you... You can have... Yeah. You can have a great deal of respect for something, but you're just really bad at writing stories and making yeah, films. Yeah, like, what... Exactly. Like, what good is it doing you to be respectful if you... If... What does that translate to meaningfully? A lot of the time, well-written does translate into people being like, you were respectful, but it also can't. So, yeah, you know, like, sure. in different scenarios. So. But it's not intrinsic. It's not necessarily... And if it's not necessarily, then it means there must be something more important. Someone said, why are you adapting something bad? If it's bad, just make a reboot or a new what version. It's like, it's got a great high concept. I and don't want to take it. Well, I just, I don't have to provide a justification. It's, it's the hypothetical. Right. If someone's doing that and it's a bad thing, should they adapt it faithfully? Probably not. I guess that's Probably the thing not. is like, surely good advice is something that's actually usable. Whereas like, ah, let me, let me retain the tone. What does that mean? <laughs> like, you know, what does that, what does that mean? Well, we it's shit, but I had the same time. It's more, like, reliable, more actionable. Yeah, I suppose a reboot is an adaptation in, the, in a sense. Yeah, I'd say it is. It's based on the original material, yeah. so... was watching Age of Ultron with a friend the other day, and at some point I just said, man, isn't it sad that we're hoping Avengers 5 be a bare minimum of quality of Age of Ultron? Ain't that something? Yeah, because Ultron, Age of Ultron is shit. You probably won't even get that, though. No. Because Age of Ultron has some decent character work. But, yeah, you know, between strong the dialogue terrible too. plotting. Yeah. What happened to the dialogue? It's gotten so much worse. Jane is better. It really has gotten way worse. Nobody Fire has the good writers, I guess. anymore. Exactly. Like, no one talks like a person would talk to another no. person. Well, I mean, th there was this, in Doctor Strange. You remember when like Wanda shows up at Kamataj, and then Doctor Strange, yeah, he's like, "You're justifiably angry. Uh, you've had to make sacrifices." And then she's like, "Yeah, I've had to make sacrifices. You don't know anything about sacrifices." It's like, what the. What is this? Like, he, you know what I mean? Like, this is the conversation. You're not talking to each other. What you said has nothing to do with yeah, what he you're said. Just speaking at one another in this weird, flimpy way. Probably is chopped up. At, but there was a yeah. longer conversation where it did make sense. Because don't speak to me about sacrifice. What all he said was she's it's had so sacrifices. hilarious like, as well. Don't me? speak to me, Doctor Strange, who sacrificed his life thousands of times to stop Dormammu. And who sacrificed his life again to save the universe. Yep. It's Vision's sacrifice more so than yours anyway. Like, Vision Okay, but she's mad, though. Life. Okay. She's very yeah, upset. Yeah, I know. So. And, and yet none of her plan has anything to do with reuniting with Vision. Or her parents, or her You know, brother. somebody that she actually knows and for years, rather than three days. I'd be they curious if Michael Waldron even knows who these characters are. Like... Yeah. Did he watch WandaVision, even? Because they reference it in that a little bit, at least. Mm-hmm. Oh, well. Um, cute little, little... I think Shiba Inu. Thank you very much. Super sticker. Oh, nice. When you fart so loud, everyone's head explodes. Sad face. That's pretty bad. Yeah. Wanna... Wouldn't want to be around that. A lot of moral implications. You should probably just... You'll live alone, far away from society, if that's a risk. What would you do? What would you do if, um, classic scenario, you're in an, uh, an elevator with one other person, and you fart, what do you do? You have to ride are it. Are we, are we including the head exploding thing, or just... No, 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 just the okay. normal scenario, <laughs> just when sure. you're in an elevator with someone else, and you fart, what do you do? Just, just ride it out. Is Not gonna it, say anything. Well, hold up. I think there's a very important question to ask here, which is... Is it audible or silent? No, it's it's silent, but I mean they can smell it. Yeah, just 
Whatever. No, fuck it. <laughs> Gaslight him. Look at him like. Well, you know, well, it's it's fuck? funny that you say that, Rax, because I remember it was a joke in Family Guy when <laughs> Peter is in the in an elevator. The guy next to him just starts sniffing, and Peter's like, "Um, it was you." <laughs> 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 That's a good joke. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the only way that if if it is if it is audible though, you're just gonna have to you just just roll with it. You're like, oh, oh, oh don't oh, go down to the Taco Bell on uh, Second and Main because I think oh, that's the best you can do. Yeah, yeah. you have to make like, it. Oh, enjoy. those. Yeah, it looks like that bean burrito is coming back to haunt me. Oh, <laughs> something like that. Or you could be like a more more animated cartoon. Animated cartoon. That's a stupid sentence. <laughs> more cartoon references. You could be like Homer, open the lift door and escape, and then slide down the side of the power plant to get away. Yeah. Well, this is my <laughs> floor. Ah, see you tomorrow. Just say, just <laughs> someone said, just say, did someone step on a frog? Wow. I never heard that one. Uh, yeah, that's a bit insensitive. Do frogs make farting noises when you step on? I've never stepped on a frog. I've made sure not to because we have lots and lots of toads here that come out at night. I think there's a difference between a toad and a frog, Rags. Correct, there is. They're not the In same much the thing. same way that I don't want to step on one, I don't want to step on the other. Frogs are really cool. Like, it's, frogs you know, we, we, meme, we meme about them a lot, but frogs are really nifty critters. Oh, Fringy, speaking of your love of uh, animals, I yes. found a uh, meme I want to show you. I think you really like it. Uh, do, yeah, do, do, I, I, I may well. I think you just might. I liked it. It's got to load up. I have a lot of memes in my folder. It takes a while for it. it starts with the old ones up top, so that's... Oh, I got the last two. Oh, both of these are... They're similar, but we, we were talking about Lord of the Rings a little bit, so we can go ahead and put that in there. Why is it not sending? There we go. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that one before. <laughs> <laughs> and we have the one that you'll like. It's just a bit oh, of reading, but uh, yeah, there was a little bit of reading there. Yeah. Um, you know how canaries were historically brought into coal mines because of the mine was full of carbon monoxide. The canary would die first, and the miners were um, uh, the miners would be able to escape before they died too. This is a canary resuscitated. When miners notice the canary getting sick with carbon monoxide poisoning, they can close the circular hatch so no more gas gets into the canary cage and open the valve on that oxygen tank to keep the canary breathing. In other words, they made a spacesuit for birds. By immediately giving the canary access to clean air, they save it from the poison. The bird lives. To be clear, this is not for economic purposes. This was specifically created because the miners felt bad and wanted to <laughs> save the bird. Oh man, is that true? It looks like it. Hey, it, it looks like something that... Because uh, I'm looking at the construction of it, and it looks rudimentary enough to where, like, someone could make that. Tell me that you a know? bunch of coal miners just made that to make sure that their bird would be safe, yeah. Yeah, that's that's nice. I, uh, I always felt really bad for, like, the whole canary in a coal mine. It's like, damn, that poor canary. But made for a good turn of phrase. Mm-hmm. What was the joke in Simpsons with a canary in the coal mine? I don't remember. Oh, it wasn't in the coal mine. It was when they were digging to uh to save Bart from the well, wasn't it? I, again, I don't remember. Damn. All right, let me see if I can find it. That's okay. Let's pr pr press onward. Marvel doesn't want any solo Hulk stories since Universal still has the license. To be fair, we're not asking for solo Hulk stories, just good Hulk stories. Yeah. You can tell his story while he's in something else. It's okay. Uh, this means they just outright killed Hulk. It's just Bruce and strong Bruce now. There's no compromise. You can just change and be the same. Yes. The Hulk is dead. Go on. A character you, you saw pieces of and a lot of in Ragnarok. He got killed. And nobody cries for him. Little Clown Boy is an actual like in a series as of today. Hell of a Boss Season 2 Episode 1. Little oh, okay. clown boy. Are they saying that it's an actual insult in that show? Or? Maybe. Or, I don't know. 
little clown boy. I love it. It's great. Okay. Well, what's interesting is that if you Google little clown boy, the first like thing proper that pops up is tone of loke, little clown boy. <laughs> tone of loke. <laughs> tone of loke. I can't wait to see more of She Hulk's feet bursting from her shoes. How embarrassing. <laughs> Someone, you just want to see her feet? Alrighty. Fair enough. How long do copyright claims usually take to get resolved for you guys? Paramount is holding on to me for Halo video for the full 30 days. My vids average like 20 views. I really don't understand. I don't think they care how many views anyone gets. It's, uh, they just want to grab it up. Um, yeah, a lot of the stuff you have to write out the full 30 days. They're changing that, though. I think they're making yeah. it to where it's just a week. Thank goodness. God forbid, an actual really good change. Anyone see the new B&BH movie? Pretty good. B&BH? Who that? What that? B&BH movie. B&BH? Helps out, chat. B&B hero token? B&B heroes? It, just to be clear, could you just B N B? No N and B and B. Okay. Oh, B with some butthead. B and B. Oh, I didn't know there was one. Neither did I, and I haven't seen it. It's a. It is Beavis and Butthead do the universe. Neat. Um. Are you tell the difference between someone get offended for the sake of it and someone who is genuinely upset by something you said? Just curious. How do you tell the difference? I don't know. I don't, Context matters, I, I guess. This like, I suppose. You, yeah. It's going to be how genuine you think their response is. Because it could be that they're trying to gain something else by pretending to be offended. Uh, or it could be that they're just really upset with you for saying the thing. Kinda, I don't think there's a perfectly consistent way to discover it. Hello. I am obsessed with your Star Wars video essays. They're awesome. Do you have plans to cover the prequels and OT, or is Force Awakens the last video essay? No, I'd like to do stuff on them someday, but um, I just don't know when exactly any of those kinds of projects are going to happen. But uh, thanks for, for saying. Thank you. Would you consider doing a breakdown of Nope? I'm interested to hear your guys' thoughts on it and themes which could seem ham-fisted. I am on the fence. I didn't intend nope? to see it. It's Jordan Peele's new movie. He's um he's the guy who made Get Out and Us. Uh, Get Out was cool and then you think about it, and then Us was just awful. And Nope, I mean, Nope's been out for a little bit now and I've not really heard many people talking about it. Like in terms of it being good or bad. I think Capital Opinions thought it was bad. So there's that. Oh my god. Believe in Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. All right then. I can't choose what I believe, unfortunately. Um, so that's that's an issue that should have been addressed in the planning stages of the universe. Is if belief is the what's required for salvation, maybe you should have made belief something have a little bit more agency. Can we just skip to where everyone has salvation? Prefer that. No, we couldn't have done that. Damn it. That would have been that would have been insane. I'm a bit of a rule breaker. I'm a maverick. Absolute madness. Absolute madness. You can't just do that. Or Daredevil. At least Deadpool will be undisneyed. Is that true? Why? What do you mean? I don't know. What do they mean? What does it mean for Deadpool to be undisneyed? I, I, I have no idea. Hmm. Professor Hulk should uh, be the very last thing to happen. All his stories happen because of the conflict of two personalities. You can't do them anymore. Yeah, it's, a little yeah, bit. it's done now. It's skipped over. I'm just not that interested in Professor Hulk. It doesn't even make sense to me. Hulk was a distinct personality, so like, I guess he's dead. Like Bruce oh. killed him. Hey, Rags, look, he did it. <laughs> Murderer. No, no, I meant that he did a Biden moment because I I talked about that for a while, just about a minute ago. Hmm. Yeah, what's here's what's I, uh... weird. Is that I don't remember you. Neither of you are listening to me. That's great. Hey, chat. At least you guys are listening to me. Hi. Are you sure you talked about that? 
Oh yeah, I was I was waiting for Freddy to talk about you, it, but he didn't say you anything. Did specifically say that that Br Bruce killed Hulk? Did you say that? Hey, chat. Yes or no? Did I talk for a while about talking about the uh, Hulk being dead because uh, Bruce and uh, Bruce now has the? It's, it's dude. You know what? I'll just go back to the super chat that prompted it if you want. Okay. That uh, would make me feel better. Some Probably. people are saying no. Yeah, apparently it's kind of weird that a lot of people getting, are saying getting, no. So, so how could there possibly be a 50-50 disagreement on chat? What is going on? <laughs> what? Uh, I'm I'm I calling gaslighting on this one. This is this is this isn't farting in an elevator. This this is a way different. Um. Yeah, goddamn. People were saying it's more than a minute ago as well. Oh, that's just a, f a saying. I don't know how long ago it was exactly. Like a literal amount of time, probably like five. All right, well, you know what? Five minutes ago is a little while ago. In any case, let's we can move on. No, I just want to make sure, because I don't want rags is only Biden moments to be pointed out. It would be unfair. Yeah. yeah. It's fine. It's it's not a big deal. It happens. It happens. It's fine. I don't I'm not I mean, gonna hold it against you or anything. I don't want you to be bullied, just, I, Rags, I don't know okay? if this was a, this was more of like a Mario Kart moment. I was so engrossed in my race <laughs> that I didn't I just didn't it didn't get through. I was too busy trying to get ninth place instead of tenth out of twelve. I'm very good at this game. Um yeah. I've only played it was, like four hundred hours. Remember the, the little clown boy super chat about it being spotted in some TV yeah. show. The one right before that was, this means they outright killed Hulk. It's just Bruce and oh, strong right. Bruce now. There's no compromise. I read all that out and then talked about it for a while and nobody said anything. Okay, that's, yeah. I don't know what happened there because I totally agree, yeah. Like, that, mm -hmm. it's, it's, um, it's not, it's like they don't even fully understand, like, who they're, um, they, like, the nature of who Hulk and Bruce are, like, as characters and different people. He also, refers to him as the other guy. Yeah, yeah, which, but he's, he's, <laughs> that's awkward. We best, we best avoid remembering that because, uh, yeah, they need to accept they've murdered someone, but uh, that's, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, let's live and let live, Hulk, and by live and let live, I mean kill you. <laughs> um, End also, your life. everyone who said that it was a falsehood, uh, ban them, Thunder, please. Ban them all, permanently. Uh, and if they've, if they've got any kind of membership, ban them more than permanently. If you can find a way to do that, permanent plus, I think there's a there's an option. Or find a way to mark them as gnomes. Like if, instead of members, they get turned into gnome. gnomes. And they've got like a little, like a little gnome hat, a little gnome avatar. Mm -hmm. But this um, would support the theory that all of this is just in my head, and I'm in an insane asylum or something. It's all in your head, Luigi. It's no. in your imagination. <laughs> there's no such thing as the Mushroom Kingdom. I'm a plumber. You've been riding off of me and my money for years. You're a useless cunt, Luigi. I don't mean supporting you because you're my brother. But Mario, what about the princess? She's real. That was a dead hooker, Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> we were, we were, you were on mushrooms. <laughs> mushrooms. What, 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 what about Toad? What about Toad? Luigi, that wasn't a talking mushroom. <laughs> that was my cock, Luigi. That was my cock. That's why I look like a mushroom. <laughs> uh. I got another Hulk one. The reason why Hulk has been set aside is because Universal owned the rights. Disney can't do a Hulk-centric movie. He can only be part of an ensemble. Again, him not having his own movie does not mean you have to make him shit. Yeah. We can make him work when he's just in other people's movies. Absolutely. Look at, look at Avengers. That was, this was, it was look at Luke good. Skywalker. Yeah, look at him. He's neat. Never Lord Longbong of Mewplington Abbey. Is there any good chance a Kong Fap of Peter Jackson's Long Gong when there's Ooh. less going on? It'd be a movie fap for the ages. P.S. Oh, well, Wagsy, scritches for the good boy. Hello. You might get <laughs> a wish one day. Boy? You might. Or have you? Have I think you so. I think it would be pretty good. good. No, I've been I've been pretty good. That's good. I've I'm just wondering. Up all. stuff, mm -hmm. and yeah, I think I'm doing pretty good. I don't want to let it slip, you know. Mm -hmm. You got to keep up those good, healthy habits. Yeah, of being nice and kind to people. And yeah, I you know I I, I think there's, there's on the horizon. There's a good chance someday. Yes, a long Kong fap. Why not? 
Having encountered several hackers in games lately, I would like to know your opinion on hacking in games. ATM dealing with a lot of wall hacks and speed hacks in DBD. Well, oh. I mean, what's the opinion to have? Like, in multiplayer games, it's really shit. Yeah, um, is, maybe the difficult question is, is there ever a time where those hacks are, are, are chill and cool and fun? It's like, I guess, locally, when you're just sort of experimenting, but to try and enter yeah, a competitive friends, yeah. environment is it's bullshit, yeah. Yeah, it just undermines the whole point, which is a somewhat level playing field, depending on what type of game, or possibly a completely level playing field being undermined by stuff beyond the parameters of the game. Mm -hmm. It's cheating. Like, yeah. 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 I have no sympathy for cheaters. Ban them, destroy their accounts. They've made a series of decisions that led to the. They're ruining everything. You know, really hurting the experience for everyone else. I have no sympathy for cheaters whatsoever. If you cheat, you're gone, period. No warnings. You know exactly what you were doing. Cheating isn't some new foreign concept that you're ignorant of. Uh, man, remember Yinsen's death scene in Iron Man 1? Yeah. Yeah, man. I do. Back when things were not shit. I remember. Matter, yeah. And we had characters go on arcs and stuff. <gasps> I remember. Arcs, we... She-Hulk's whole thing is that she's weaker than Hulk, but can control it and brings out the best of her versus Hulk. Uh, well, yeah, that makes sense to me, that there would be trade-offs and whatnot. Doesn't look like she's weaker than him in that. It seems like she's just no. better. But we'll see. This, you know, could just be a trailer. Doing its traileriness. Um, tried Amnesia. That motion blur nearly killed me. Kind of disappointing. Oh, you should turn that off. I, I recommend yeah, I that. always turn off motion blur in games. I, I hate it. Always turns off. Whenever I get a game and it's on, off it goes. Mm hmm. Sob, sob. Hi, Rags. Sob, sob. Hello. It's like they're crying. Well, I hope you're not sad. You're right. Unless you're just calling me a son of a bitch too many times. <laughs> but... Son of a bitch. Didn't Incredible Hulk establish the transfer of Hulk powers by blood to that scientist that was helping him? Mr. Blue, his head swells from... Con oh, yeah. Yeah, but they gave up on that. They just did nothing with that. Well, that guy had special weird blood that makes him crazy and weird. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, the post credit scene for Incredible Hulk was Tony setting up the Avengers team. He went to talk to uh, um, Ross. Yeah. But I, I, I guess that can't be canon anymore. <laughs> like... Well, Maybe because of the, where he's, like, surprised by the idea of the Avengers, so that yeah, doesn't make sense. Yeah, exactly. What happened? You know, he did that scene for free, because he was so grateful for the opportunity for Iron Man. Hmm. That's cool. Yeah, he, uh, don't, he, don't, he don't do much for free anymore, I imagine. Wait, we could have created an army of Hulks this entire time? That might have been helpful with everything. God, I hate the MCU. Yeah, like, he drops his blood at everyone, and then Thor powers them up with Thor powers, and it's just like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck, Thanos. Uh, with Banner and Hulk, they're completely separate beings, but She-Hulk is one person. It annoys me, and I haven't even read many comics. I don't think it's a problem, necessarily. It depends on the explanation. I guess in this case, it's more so just, why, why is that how it works? Like just because just because Bruce has got it under control, wouldn't she have to do the same thing? Like, wouldn't she have to figure it out, or does she just get straight away the super duper benefits of being like cognizant while all that's going on? I guess we'll find out. I'm not thinking. I don't think they're going to do a good job, though. Oh, of course, it, yeah. Uh, imagine punished Thor getting a robot arm from Tony such Rocket because he did the snap himself after eight. Itching, slapping, oh, bitch slapping, Don Cheadle ducking cheese whiz joke. I'm glad that people have gone to the point where the cheese whiz joke is just considered the worst fucking thing. Like, why did you do it that? It was so bad. Can you remind me of that joke? He says, do you know what's coursing through my veins? And then Don Cheadle says, cheese whiz. And then Thor's, like, kind of not happy about that. It's not a good joke. Well, yeah, the, it's not just the joke being, like, kind of shit on its own. It's The context is Thor's, like, desperately trying to explain why he should be the one to do the snap, and it relates to how he feels he yeah, failed. Yeah, I, like, I remember it yeah. now, yeah. Fucking disappointing. You're just there being a jerk. You know? Yeah, like, what is that other than you're fat? Okay, man. How do we... <laughs> I, just, okay. I saw a Joss Whedon movie. How do I do that bad? You saw a Joss Whedon movie? How do I do that? Oh, that you mean that's the, well, 
Yeah, like the, the yeah, Russos, like, the... like, I don't know what they were thinking with that because, like, they've shown they can do. Infinity War is one of the funniest MCU movies. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's I just don't get contempla it. contemplative and also very funny because the scenes don't step on each other. Yeah, they're not trying to be both. It's like both need time. There's like this buffer space that they need in between. You know. Uh, EFAB quote out of context of the day Does Elizabeth Warren have telekinesis? <laughs> That's about Snyder Cut <laughs> I know it is um, If Bruce slash Hulk took drugs Could it be revealed through a blood test? Uh, what does it mean to do a drug test on Hulk? Like, you just, I don't yeah, like? I don't know, maybe I guess it's up to them to decide what their rules are for that. Like, I don't know if his blood is weird or if it's easy to, you know. <laughs> also, Fringy, as the Australian of the group, do you think that the Pokemon Skaroopy could survive your lands long enough to become Drapion? Uh, appreciate you all I've massively. Never heard of that. Does uh, we get an image of it? See if I can get one. Skaroopy? Uh, Skaroopy. Skaroopy. Oh, here it is. Uh, let me copy... Oh, he seems cute, guy. even though he's, you know. Here is Skorupi. Oh, um, I figure he might be doing alright. And he evolves into a Drapion? Let me copy that. I've seen this image, I don't know if that's his three evolutions, maybe? Oh, wow, alright. Yeah, look at him go. Yeah, I figure it'll be okay. As long as he stays out of trouble, he should be fine. Uh, please get Rikita for She-Hulk coverage. I am, uh, I am hopefully gonna try and see about that. We might be able to get some conversations about lore shoved in here and there, why not? In your previous EFAP on, uh... What is... T... Love and Thunder, okay. You wondered if the MCU should have developed the cure for cancer. They have. Iron Man 3's extremists can cure anything. It was forgotten along with the rest of Phase 2. Is that what they say in Iron Man 3? I can't remember. What did they say specifically? I, I can't I'm saying I can't remember what they said about extremists, what it could do in Iron oh, Man 3. I don't know, it was like some super regenerative floomp. Could it like cure cancer though? Uh I think it was some some like illness helping thing, yeah. Cuz yeah, just the if it is that 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 is catastrophic for the world as well. Uh Yeah. They actually do say that it can cure cancer. That's not like a comic source, know. that's from the movie itself, really. Helps them breathe fire. I know it can, yeah, the grow back limbs thing, and it's just... But the thing is, it was unstable, right? Or at least... Yeah. Wow, it didn't seem that unstable. It seemed like... Not unstable enough for the can... fucking creator not to take it. So was it that he had a stable version or something? Well, because some people blew up when yeah. they, uh, they got it, yeah. But, but most people didn't. But I, yeah, I'd need to see the movie again to be sure about all that works. And, I mean, I don't think any of us are eager to rewatch Iron Man 3. Not really, no. <laughs> not he, not me. Oh no, I'm the Hulk. Now you're a Hulk. Oh no, I've got AIDS. Now you're an AIDS. Well, I'd hope he doesn't have AIDS. Then they'll both be I fine. I hope the Hulk doesn't have AIDS. That's not good. Oh, I'm sure if he does, they'll forget about it and he'll be fine. This one says, oh, they're both lawyers? Uh, just the one. Hulk is a lawyer? Right? Just here. I, I don't, don't think, think the Hulk's that. a lawyer, no. No, he's a scientist. Doing science. The, he, he, he has legalology, mm -hmm. is what he studies in the laboratory. He puts some law into a beaker, and he heats it up, and he measures out some justice. Hell yeah. And he pours out some habeas corpus, and mixes it in. With some objections. Yep. The original ninja costume is still the best one. Original ninja costume? For who? No, that's all that's talking about Daredevil? Are you talking about like that are you you mean like the uh like the man without fear, the like just the black sweat suit and like, you know? They might be talking awesome. about Daredevil, yeah. Uh, I don't know. The next one's about Daredevil, so Daredevil in Phase 4 is genuinely the most scared I've been for a fictional character in my life. In Phase 5, remember? It's phase 5. Yeah, yes. and... 
Well, I guess scary. he's going to turn up in She-Hulk, right? So. Yes, and probably Echo as well. In fact, I think that's yeah confirmed. She-Hulk's Phase yeah. Four, right? Yes. Well, it's yeah, we're still on it. So. So they they're afraid for Daredevil. Even in phase four, unfortunately. Yeah. He made it through true. No Way Home, everyone. <laughs> I know he was there for a few he seconds, did. but he made he it did. through. Uh She Hulk looks like a misogynist's attempt at critiquing the patriarchy. A misogynist attempt at critiquing the patriarchy. Um maybe they'll reference a misogynist it, but... wouldn't generally can normally a misogynist wouldn't critique the patriarchy, right? Is that their point that it turns out the people who are like down with the patriarch are the ones that are actually more so sexist and is me. Maybe I'm not sure. I don't know. I mean, all, all, all I ever got from that is that it's it's kind of funny that the show has like the single female lawyer Futurama like vibe, a thing that was being made fun of like by Futurama twenty years ago. What do you mean? You you remember the single female lawyer joke? Yeah. Do you remember, like, in, it was, I'm pretty sure it was in that trailer where it's like, oh, yeah, you know, like, it's, uh, like, yeah, I'm a lawyer, it's a super demanding job. <laughs> like, isn't that exactly what the single female lawyer joke was? Well, but, I mean, she's also a Hulk, right? Yeah, no, I know. I, well, I mean, of course, there's that as well. It's just kind of funny. <laughs> like, it feels like there's a level of parallel to the single female lawyer joke. Well, because... Doesn't a Hulk help you be a lawyer? I... Don't I don't know that it would. <laughs> like I'm not sure what the benefits of that would be. Because yeah, I watched Ally McBeal, the whole thing. Uh, there is even a okay, plot line where she's dating Robert Downey Jr. in the show, and uh, he got into bad things IRL, and he had to be written out of the show. Um, I think there's like a payoff where he may or may not leave her and he ends up leaving her because he had to IRL because he wasn't going to be in the show anymore. I just, um, so when I saw that joke in Futurama, I just thought it was more so like your standard Matt Groening sort of reference. Um, well, remember the big, the big, uh, takeaway from that was, um, it was not okay from the perspective of network television to have any radical change. She couldn't not be a lawyer or be, like, she couldn't be in a relationship and not a lawyer. That's not allowed. By the end of it, she needs to be back to single female lawyer. Hey, man, that's probably how they make stuff these days. Yeah, the you formula. gotta return to the status quo. Hulky McBeal. Hulky McBeal. Uh, you know what's funny? The fact that Power Rangers still tries to keep continuity between all the shows. Some of them even acknowledge the previous seasons will bring them back like Lord Zed. And there's some people, some people out there still like continuity, okay? Some that must be a crazy world where every week these these costume guys, they beat up this monster and then they kill it, but then it gets really, really big and then they have to go fight it again and this happens every week and the world's just like, yeah, it's just what happens. It, it all tends to sort itself out, so, you know, we just roll with it. Why not? Uh, remember in Sicario when Punisher tried to kill an FBI agent and got a wet willy from Benicio Del Toro in the back of a car as punishment? Hi, Rags. Hello. Um, yes, I do remember that. That seems pretty stressful because he realizes she's, uh, it's, well, it, uh, it's, she's trying to get him from, he's, he's the one that's, like, providing information, I think, and then he realizes she's figured that out. Uh, but luckily... Benicio Del Toro is there. Go watch Sicario, everybody. Don't watch the sequel. Great movie. I I don't even remember much about the sequel at all. I just remember that scene when he, like, gets... He shoots the dude, but he does it kind of weird, where he puts, like... He holds a gun with one hand and pulls the trigger with a different, like, hand. Do you remember I just, that? I just remember them having him get shot in the head, and it happens to be the one angle in place that wouldn't kill you. <laughs> it's fucking absurd, but whatever. But that happens, though. <laughs> sometimes. I'm sure a lot of things happen sometimes. <laughs> Hi, sweet good boys. Finally bought a PS5. The first console I've owned since PS2. Would you recommend any must really? plays for the platform? Interesting. Well, since I could mm -hmm. grab, like, some PS4 classics then, right? Because they're all backwards compatible. Mm -hmm. I believe they are. 
what would you go with? What's the best of PS4, Fringy? Oh, shit. Um... Oh, man. Get the Shadow um... Colossus remaster, why not? Um, well, Bloodborne. That would probably be a good pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're okay with... Because some people really aren't okay with the 30 FPS, and then even lower yeah. than that, you know, which I understand. Yeah, totally fair. If you want to talk about that for a second, I will be back. The problem is that there's not many games that I can recommend of, like, PlayStation 4 Classic that doesn't run at a shit frame rate. They all do. They all are 30 FPS because they all Consoles, push for baby. graphics. Yeah, it's just there's that's triple just AAA console. console games, 30 FPS, and that's 30 FPS best case scenario. That's exactly, yeah. They're, the they're rarely be remembered. Best case scenario, everything running as it should be, you'll get 30 FPS. But if shit goes down, hmm. Bye. Yeah, like, I'm um, pretty sure that was because Bloodborne would go into the, like, into the, the tens. <laughs> like, it would drop into the tens category. And then there was that interview where the director said, oh, it wasn't the director. It wasn't, it was the producer who was like, yeah, it's better for action games to be 30 FPS. Uh, shut up. <laughs> it's like no it's, it's not it's just categorically worse wrong um the ghost of tsushima would be another one i'd probably recommend yeah um 30 fps is fine the human eye sees at 24 FP are you memeing i think that's the meme yeah drop below 20 however well i mean i would yeah sure but like i hope you're memeing well the as the lower in frame rate you go the more you notice the missing frame rates because there's going to be more well, it time does look like a slideshow well yeah mathematically if because it's measured in frames per second the less you have the more space there will be in between them that's why it's very easy to see the difference between you know 30 fps and 60 fps but it's very difficult to tell the difference between 400 and 450 I've seen people the... before say that they think it's like weird, like 60 FPS. They find it weird to look at, which I've never understood. Because yeah, because uh, it's you're not used to it. If I totally um, understand that, because that's the place where I, that I was in in one time. It was Bioshock, the game that let you the original Bioshock on the Xbox 360 had an option. You could have 30 FPS or you could have 60 FPS, but it wasn't called that. It was called like smooth mode or something like that. And it just well, that... looked different. And I, and I didn't a lot know what to assign it to. There's a lot of games that now let you do that. They have, like, performance mode and fidelity mode, which I'm okay with. Um, which if is you give good. people the option. But, yeah, I mean, as for... Definitely good. I think it's just a matter of you do notice it, even if you're, even if you're not cognizant. Like, I remember, I think, I think it was... Because um, Call of Duty's always run at 60 on consoles, though I think they've gotten worse at that over the years. But, like, on, you know, the older ones did. Um, yes. I don't think it's a surprise that Call of Duty ended up becoming, like, the most popular shooter, among other things, because of its emphasis on performance. Yeah, um, Battlefield would run at helped. 30, and it was yeah. a difference that you just already, you could feel that there you was a felt it. In smoothness. That's yeah. the thing. You will feel it. Even if you don't fully appreciate it, you're gonna feel it. Yeah, if you um, don't know what it's called or why it is, it's just smoother. Um, yeah. Like it's it feels really weird now playing like like if I ever played a game on con I mean Last of Us right like Last of Us Two was thirty FPS and it's like I don't oh I don't like <laughs> like it is a it big feels... ask to make me play something at thirty FPS it had better be like it's bearable if it's a game like I mean South like... Park the Stick of Truth is Where... that thirty FPS or is yeah, it simulated that's... thirty FPS. Well, it's because of the style of South Park, right? It's an yeah, animated yeah. show that. Are, but then you look at something like Cuphead, which is trying to. It's doing the rubber hose animation, like animations at twenty four FPS. Cuphead is at sixty. It's animated at sixty. Um, they did all the the drawings. They did sixty drawings instead of twenty four. Um, and nevertheless, right, regardless of what the frame rate is for the illustrations, it's all about like the way that things move across the screen. Um. And, and I mean, in the case of South Park, it's not a game that requires much by way of like Twitch, uh, you know, mechanics, RPG, turn-based yeah. RPG. It's it, really yeah, not if, that big a deal. If Civilization or RimWorld or whatever, if there's a lot going on and you don't get 60 FPS, you could deal with it. Yeah. Obviously, it's not um, ideal, but you could deal with it. But man, 
them shooters and someone, action games who you know someone in chat's brought up fighting games and it's like there's n there, it, it should be no surprise that every like fighting game ever that's competitive is at 60 fps because it's it's just it's just the case that it's better um it's and and in the case of competitive games it's it's actually like essential you want to you want to reduce that as much as possible your eyes are getting yeah and of course, someone would be like, well, why not 120? It's like, I think 60 is a healthy middle ground. Yeah, um, most people are fine enough with 60. 60 is good enough. Pretty much, pretty much every TV that anybody has is only going to display at 60 hertz anyway. Yeah, if you want a screen with more than 60 FPS, it will generally be advertised as for gamers mm -hmm. or for something like that. Because most TV shows, every once in a while, every once in a while, Every once in a while, you'll see one of those shows that's running at a higher frame rate, and it looks strange. But for the most part, TV shows are they'll be twenty four. A well. lot of soap opera as well, because I I remember I noticed it once. Um, there was a soap in Australia called Neighbors, which I think even just ended after thirty seven years. I remember wow. that there was there was one time when I, I I saw it, and I'm like, something is different. Like everybody's moving not as fast as they used to. Like there's something has changed. And it, it was only once I got like a lot older that's like, oh, that's probably because like the frame rate that that was being displayed at changed. Like it was probably at 48 and then they reduced it to 24. Because um, of course, I mean, the the thing is when it comes to like film and television and everything, it doesn't, like 24 works. There's no interactive element that is um, important to maintain. Like you don't need to push the frame rate on um, a film, but on a video game, you know, less frames is longer time between your input being recognized on screen. It's not a lot of difference, but it is a difference persistently throughout the whole game. Um, yeah. Yeah, you, you'll notice it sometimes every once in a while, whether it's oddly enough, I think it was probably like a Hallmark movie or something. It, it just looks super smooth compared to everything else. And yeah. I was saying, and I want to say like I almost pointed it out. It's like, wow, do you, do you see how smooth this is? It's running at a higher frame rate than what you normally look at. And I feel like I can't remember if my parents even like realized it or they noticed well, it was weird or something. It's I don't know. It's not something you might even like subconsciously you might notice it, but maybe you don't even think to point it out or recognize. It's a weird thing, especially yeah, like if it's you're so used to it being a certain way. Exactly. Yeah. But I mean, in video games, it matters. And it was really frustrating, yes. all those conversations about how it didn't. It's like the big problem with the eighth generation. They couldn't even do 1080p 30. Like, <laughs> they couldn't even do that. Hello. Hi. Did you recommend a bunch of PS4 games? <laughs> uh, not really. We just started talking about, we okay. talked about frame rate and stuff. <laughs> um, why am I blanking on it? I should know better as well. Good PS4 stuff. Um, I mean, hmm. I mean, I like Spider Man on PS4. Spooderman. Uh, yeah, uh, a lot of people say that that's real good. I still haven't gotten around to it yet. I wonder if if I replay Infamous Second Son, that I might um, that might be a game that I was a little bit too harsh towards because I find it frustrating it, that it exists. But, like, it's probably mechanically pretty strong. Amnesia More Rebirth? Like mechanic. Hell yeah. God of War 2018? Well, I, I haven't played enough of that, to, so I can't give that recommendation. Um, Demon Souls? Well, you can get the PS5. Uh, That's PS5, yeah. yeah. But, you know. Uh, what about Horizon? Do people like Horizon Forbidden West? I think I've I only just don't heard hear anything about that game. Neutral to yeah. good, I think I've only heard about that. People didn't hate yeah, it. Yeah, as far as I know, it's fine. Elden Ring, Elden Ring really are. Yeah. <laughs> like, wallowed that up. Yep. Yeah. Let oh. me look at Horizon Forbidden West. Da, 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 da. That game is super impressive graphically, that's for sure. Guerrilla Games, they are, they're really good with their tech. Yeah, gorillas, they're, they're great with uh, learning stuff like that. I've heard that you can get them wow. to make all kinds of stuff. Do you, you guys remember the Killzone 2 thing? The the pre-rendered trailer for Killzone 2? Do you remember that? I no. believe I do. Where he goes under the bridge and shoots That's and all. Five. It's, um, the, the story behind it was that it was presented as, like, 
what the game would look like, but what it actually was was like a proof of concept that was made internally by like Gorilla, like a video so that they were like, yeah, this is what we'll be trying to aim for. And then Sony were like, you know what? This is good enough to show the world. Um, and there was no way that they were ever going to hit like what they had shown in that demo. I, I mean, Killzone 2 looks really good. Um, but like it's, uh, yeah, there was no way that they were going to achieve. Um, though I guess I guess that's probably like because Killzone Two looks overall better than that that trailer. Like it, it has a better overall like look to it. Um, like it's a lot more cohesive, even mm. if it's not as technically impressive as um as that demo. Um, sadly, the Earth isn't intact. The Eternals made sure of that. Dead Celestial oh, hanging out of the planet. <laughs> Yeah, people still wait for that to be addressed. It won't be. It, it won't be. Um, look up Doom's dialogue in Marvel vs. Capcom Three. That game is my favorite depiction of Marvel's characters, and Doom's voice performance is fantastic. Um, let me see if I can. There's probably someone who's uploaded it, right? Doctor Doom dialogue, Marvel vs. Capcom Three. Hmm. Come on, X Men. We got work to do. I'll make you wish you were facing Magneto. Mutant scum. That voice is okay. <laughs> oh, uh -oh. this is what happens when you pray this something. This is what you do. <laughs> and, uh, Isn't this great? Look at this. What's this? Return to your own world. Knowing you have done this, this yourself. You we were facing Magneto. Well, I'll make you, you guys can listen. To the, the, that's just one example, I guess. If it timestamp. You were facing I, uh, I want to play Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Um, that game looks really cool. The art style. And also, the music's really good in that game. Clock Tower, it's a good song. It's a catchy. People were saying it sounds like me making a voice, hold on. It's not Am quite I be what I envisioned Dr. Doom. Doom. I don't hate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen to this voice. It's... His voice is... Uh, is yeah, yeah. It's like... Uh, he tried. He sounds like Dark Helmet. Oh no, now that you've said that. Yep, he sounds just <laughs> oh, like Dark no, Helmet. Oh no, it does. <laughs> it does. It sounds like Rick Moranis in a metal bucket. <laughs> no, it does. It's been ruined. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you need the voice from Robot Chicken. How could you allow this to happen? I, I fucked it up. Damn it. What was it? Uh, it? It was the wife swap joke where <laughs> Sue Storm switched play like uh, like families with just this normal woman. <laughs> it's like, you know, die, fantastic for it. Not today, Doom. And then she just gets like vaporized by yeah. Doctor Doom. It was part of the show's premise. What were we supposed to do? Oh, I don't know. Maybe not pit a housewife against the powers of Doom. <laughs> Oh. Underest in her, uh, Esther Eight and Housewives, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess so, right? He's not a very forward thinking. Doctor Doom is not very forward thinking. So, Mola, do you think they will bring back the magical Wonder Ball in Wakanda Foreskin? I don't think that's what it's called, but uh, the, the, the. Maybe. I don't. I'm actually. I'm they not sure if they'll forget. Back? They might just forget them. Maybe they won't. I don't know. We shall see. Except they retconned Daisy Fitzroy into a good guy in Burial at Sea, because of course they did. I hate those DLCs so much. Dude, we're way ahead of you. We hate the game. <laughs> but yes, I also hate the DLCs. Back Infinite sucked. Uh, what is no, bigger? Brilliant. Yeah. Genius. What is bigger, a big uh, little chungus, or a little big chungus, or a medium medium chungus? Um, hmm. I'll go with little big chungus. Because it's like the smallest of the big ones, which I think would be bigger than the biggest of the small ones. 
Then again, the medium medium chungus might be bigger. I'll have the medium medium chungus with a side of fries and an extra large Coca Cola. Would you like mayo on your medium medium chungus? No. All right. Gotta be 7.33. Please pull to the first window. The scrolls are not sending their best. Some, I assume, are good green people. Well, we'll see. See what they're doing with scrolls. See what they tell us is the truth about the scrolls. Uh, hey guys, I really want to make a defense argument for some of the not great movies you guys have covered. I don't know how to get it to you in the best format for it. I could do videos if needed. I'm not choosing easy positions, by the way. Well, I mean, it's... Good luck with whatever it is you're up to. There's no really like there's no system for make an argument and we shall respond to it. It's more of a we might see some arguments in chat. Maybe we'll catch a video here and there. Who knows? Yeah, never know. But uh, good luck with whatever it is you're up to. Maybe you'll maybe you can make some videos for the sake of making videos. That could be fun. Um. What is the most money you'd be willing to pay, the furthest debt you'd be willing to get to, to get out of having relations with a sheep? No one will know about the relations. To get out of relations with a sheep? So how much amount of debt would... Well, what's the interest rate on that debt? <laughs> that might be a good question to start with. I need, I need more information to determine the... Well, or alternatively, you know what? We can just move on actually it's i think it's a bit of a, a weird idea. question yes it's yeah. a question i'm not sure how to answer it honestly i don't think if, it, if it's like a, if it's like a tom nook loan then i'll take on infinite like money because i never have to pay that loan back <laughs> so yeah like, I could just, it's not I even could, uh... like calling it a loan is kind of even unfair it's it's not a loan it's free money it's free money you don't have he to pay it back and it literally your loan depreciates just over time because of inflation like Tom Nook. Tom Nook's a nice guy. He is a nice guy. I'm sick of people shitting on him. Tom Nook's amazing. Maybe he should he's just, a fucking you know, great guy. He's he stop helping people community. out and see what they say then, huh? Maybe he should Like, just... oh yeah, he sometimes asks you about all that money that he gave you. Like, if you got to pay it back I for that that's opulent fair. house that he, <laughs> that he <laughs> built for you just, in a day. I think it's in totally a day. fair that every once in a sleep. while he can inquire about it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, it's so funny because I'm pretty sure I've seen people say, see, he's like an allegory for capitalism because he like owns all of the businesses, like all the money passes through Tom Nook. And it's like, you know what? It's not even true. Those, it's not true. There are other, the Mabel sisters. Isn't that the name of the, the, the clothes people? There's the, the, there's the two llamas, right? Um, There's also the, the museum. That, there's uh, also the museum that the owl runs. Yeah, with the owl. And, that, and there's, there's the police department. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't ask him to build that house. You don't have to pay him back. I don't know what you want me to say. But here's the you thing: you you do ask him to add to build, make your house bigger. That's true. And in order to make your house bigger, I think it's enough to say, you know what? Can you pay off the loan first that you owe me before we before we before just we start... make it bigger again? Yeah. And then once you pay that off, I'll just make your house bigger again. Yeah, the Abel sisters. That's right. Like he. I mean, essentially, Tom Nook is, like, working really hard to ensure that the town has all of the resources and amenities that it needs to be a fully functioning and thriving settlement. Yeah. He's, um, he is a pillar of the community. Um, can we have a video where Fringy does a deep dive on the inner workings of Animal Crossing? Uh, so the problem is that I can't, I've played a decent amount of Animal Crossing. I don't know how much I could tell you about a lot of other aspects of the game, but I, of course, I can tell you that Tom Nook is um he is besmirched a lot considering that what he does is like downright generous <laughs> it's like it's generous interest-free loans reinvesting into like, his was, business while he raises two kids he and and by reinvesting in the business you gain access to better like re more goods yes it's it's just uh, you one of the best things that happens to you in that game is his store expands because every day you get more things yeah. to choose from he does the thing that you want people to do which is not just hoard the money and turn into like a tom nook version of smaug like sitting on yeah. a fucking pile of, of gold coins he reinvests that into his business <laughs> that produces more goods that are accessible and available to you 
and infrastructure in the town. Like all of the money that you pay on your interest-free loans is, which is free money anyway, is used to reinvest into um, services for the community. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Hey there. Just supporting where I can. Hi, Rags. Sign of peace. Ringy. Hello. <laughs> Listen to Red Rising. All right. Uh, that's the book that I keep saying I might listen to or read one day. You guys I think have, I got the audio. You guys have any favorite non-fiction books? Um. Uh. Oh, well, I mean, I've got, I've got plenty that I like. I'm not sure what the favorite would be. Non-fiction uh, books. I haven't really got a picture. I really like meditations. That's a. I I find that a, a pretty interesting and valuable book. I don't know um, what my favorite non-fiction book would be. I um, just. I need, I need to go fish out my iPad actually, because yeah, right now I'm kind of blanking. It's probably. It might be just. I think it might be like a book of facts or something like that. Like an encyclopedia um, or something. Similar, oh, no, but it's just like a book like of it. it's just like here's a whole bunch of cool things about the world. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had one that, believe it or not, Isaac Asimov wrote, and it was really good. Um but I don't yeah. I don't really I don't really read nonfiction that much. I read yeah, a decent amount of it, which makes me annoyed that I can't think of anything right now. Well, all right then. If does, something does come to mind, let me know. They assassinated yeah, I... a C-tier character, lol. They do well. They do it to everybody, so <laughs> they'll hit some CT characters eventually. C tier. Uh, hi, Raggles, Fraggles. Hi. How could you bully the poor innocent popcorn bucket? Popcorn bucket's embarrassing. Don't you know? Its purpose is to be an empty vessel waiting for X product to enter, then empty, forever waiting for next product to fill it. Good dog. It is quite the thing to go to a movie theater and be like, hey, you want to spend an extra? Because movie theater food is already grossly over, you know, overpriced, right? Mm -hmm. You want a bucket of popcorn, $10. You know, when it take when it's really when it, when it's sixty seven cents worth of popcorn, they charge you ten bucks for it. It's highway robbery, and then they say, "Oh, you want this bucket? Do you want this? Do you want this fucking promotional popcorn bucket for Black Widow? Look, it's got Taskmaster on the other side. Woo! <laughs> you want to spend five or fifteen more dollars, whatever, on this, and then you say yes? No, you lost life. Failure." Stanley drank Hulk's blood in the Ed Norton movie and he had a heart attack. Fairly certain he didn't just become a well-adjusted Hulk of his own. To be fair, mixing blood and drinking blood, very different. Uh, so I, I guess they can have their own rules for what happens when you drink the blood. Um, but yeah, like I said, mixing the blood, it seems to me, is going to create a lot of wheel-building questions that they're never going to address, because why not? Or why? Like alcohol and rubbing alcohol. It's just different. Yeah. Root show will peak phase four because the bar is so low. Well, yeah, and it shouldn't fuck anything up, so. <laughs> to me. But then again, you never know. <coughs> hey, did you check out Cuphead DLC? It's a masterpiece. I've been playing it. It's cool. Hmm. But I haven't finished it yet. I should. Busy with Mario Kart. Yes, actually, yeah. The good vision of Echo involves Homelander smashing Echo's ears, leaving her bleeding on the floor and dying. We can at least hope. Yeah, I don't, I don't care about Echo, so I don't hate her either. <laughs> I don't even know anything yeah, about this person. I don't, want anyone to be, I don't want anyone to be tortured or whatever. Uh, so it's worse. I worked at a theater. The whole bag that we put in the machine cost three cents. The whole, the whole bag we put in the surely it's not that low. Like it's really <laughs> low. Popcorn is. Popcorn is dirt cheap, especially if you buy it in the, the cheap crap and the massive quantities that theaters do. Is it, re is it so really that, three cents? They're making a huge profit then on the, that popcorn. I mean, I, I always knew they did because like, popcorn is just cheap. You buy that much cheap popcorn in the bulk that they do, you're paying basically nothing. But three cents for that massive bag? Jeez. Because I've used, I had to, I work concessions. Um, in scouts and stuff and one of the things i did was make popcorn and i was like dang it was it was virtually free so 
I don't, it's hard to wow that's incredible someone says so i usually pay 11 euros for imax tickets and get my suite somewhere else yeah it's tough you're asking me that's the thing movies nowadays i mean it's it's been this way for a while but covid really sort of hyper accelerated it i feel going to a movie theater to sit in a theater with a bunch of people sometimes who are total losers and it's like 10, 12 bucks to see the movie. And it's only like 90 minutes, two hours. A lot of the time, generally like two hours. And then, then like the food is 10 bucks for popcorn or whatever. I don't know. It's just, it's asking me, it's asking a lot. It's asking a lot. There will, there will be some movies that I will see. Like I will, when, when Avatar comes out, I'm seeing that at the theater. You know, that's a theater movie, but I feel like it's gotta be a theater movie, you know, for me to really want to go there. Uh, Dear Frongold, Molslington, and Schmatt the Spectacled Hound. <laughs> All right, uh, you three have been a blessing to listen to over long and otherwise dreary graveyard shifts. Your content resonates down the twelfth chakra of my bone chromosome. Bonus chromosome. Oh, nice. Oh, how about that? Good to hear. Hope you're doing okay right now on your theoretical graveyard shift. Mm -hmm. In fact, that goes for everyone out there who's currently working. Maybe you're stacking a box or moving a thing or putting a thing in a thing. Maybe cutting a thing or writing a thing. That's about it, right? That covers everything humans can do. <laughs> Oh, uh, you know, <laughs> a good much. amount of it, yeah. Is James Gunn the only person to get a complete trilogy in a superhero universe besides Sam Raimi, I guess? Hmm. Uh, well, Nolan. Uh, does that count if it's not a part of anything? Well, I guess if they count Sam Raimi, then yeah. But, wow. Well, That's a complete trilogy. Well, <laughs> Sam Raimi is now part of the MCU. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, the Marvel sounds like a cheesy 70s stage band. Marvel Studios The Marvels is yeah. kind of like, bit, a, bit <laughs> of a, a bit odd. Bit of a clunk. Marvels. If we were, if we clunky. were like a group, um, if we were a group of superheroes, like the three of us, and maybe we got a couple, you know, the, the five of us maybe. I don't know, I don't know if Marvels would get past the first bunch that, you know, we'd approve of. I don't think I'd go for The Marvels. It's also kind of interesting that why why did Captain Marvel from DC uh from Warner not oh my god why did Captain Marvel from Marvel win out over Captain Marvel from DC you know what happened? Mm hmm. So no. Because Cap Shazam is Captain Marvel, at right. least I, I was, but now he's Shazam. Uh, pick one of the following to watch on loop. All of Disney Star Wars TV shows and movies, or all of Marvel Phase Four plus TV TV shows and movies. Um, all of Marvel Phase Four is probably going to be shorter, right? So you got Boba, Mando season one and two, the sequel trilogy, Rogue One, Solo. Is that longer or shorter than what Disney's? Disney's probably, probably got more, shorter. right? Yeah. Probably shorter. There's one division, Loki, Hawkeye. Oh, well, it's okay. about fifty hours of okay. content, right? Fifty hours I I'm, worth. I misheard. I think. Um, I guess I was thinking something different. Whichever one's shorter. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm not sure which one I'd honestly go with on that one. Um, We'd probably have fun watching the sequels and being like, "That's dumb. That's dumb. Ha ha ha! I can't believe they did that." Oh, look at his face. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, this. This is a good meme. Have you guys seen anything related to like? Does this does this meme make sense to you? No. It's um. There was no. like a, a. There was this comic where it was like, when when like I don't know a woman sees a peach. Oh, like yeah, I'll leave this for some like uh, like when when the mum sees that there's like a peach on the table. Oh, there's still one peach left. I'll save it for the kids. And when the dad sees the peach, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna eat that peach. It's the last one left. Yay. Like, as if to shit on him for, like, eating a peach that's sitting there. 
And I think it was from, like, a cartoonist who made, like, a bunch of comics that were just kind of shitting on men. Wow. <laughs> like, that apparently men don't, like, when, when, um, when woman comes home with the shopping, the man only carries one bag and the woman's carrying, like, 15. When, what? if anything... <laughs> I'm I don't. Sure, I like, don't. The opposite is typically yeah, true. I, I the man carries too yeah. many bags of anything. He's like, yeah, I, I can carry. What... Seven. I can carry eight. Men are, yeah, men are the one trippers. Yeah, absolutely. What what and fucking so, family did this person come from? And so, and so this is the meme that I've seen. <laughs> Dad ate my peach. I. It's funny to me because like maybe he fucking gets to have that peach. Fuck you. <laughs> maybe that oh, peach is his. one peach left and you want to claim it, you should do more to claim it than just leave it on, out in the open to be eaten. Poor you know? guy coming like, home from work, hungry, sees a peach, you know, he's like, fuck it, I'm having yeah. the peach. He's probably working hard to keep the family going. Keep he the family in peaches. Fucking peach. He just wants this... <laughs> He just wants this goddamn peach. It's I was so all day hard. In the coal mines. The kids on the ground crying. <laughs> he ate it. He Life ate ruined. Peach. And he left the core of the peach behind. Let's <laughs> see if I can find the original. Peaches have pits. <laughs> they have cores like that. Well, I'm coming lost in this Mario Kart race, right? so that's okay. Oh no. I can't scroll through Twitter and race Mario Kart at the same time. It's not it's, it's not doable. Peach pits are poisonous to uh, dogs, I think. Do not let your dog eat a peach pit. Oh, uh, here it is. The original comic cartoon thingy? Yeah, the original thing. Oh, look. Uh, one of the many differences between me and my husband. Oh, look, the last ripe peach. I'll save it for the kids. They love peaches so much. Oh, look, the last ripe peach. I'll use it as a special treat in my daily smoothie. Okay. I'm going to go for his car. This is an accurate depiction of our different... Um, I don't believe you. Like, did you, well, like, did you grab all of them first and there was just one left and he took what was left or, because I just don't believe you. This just doesn't seem to be an accurate representation of what happens in the realities of most people. Someone said it sounds like new guy stuff and it's like, yeah, a little bit. Like, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's just weirdly mean. Like, it's a Are weirdly mean on your husband. Why did you marry him if he's such a well, piece of shit? I think, the, I think the caption for that, um, that, uh, that, that, that comic was, um. I wonder. Oh no, I'm not sure. I think it's um. No, I think that's a retweet. Yeah, I don't know. I don't understand. Like it's it's so weirdly mean spirited. You could have told him to help you instead of making a comic about it and putting that on the internet to like try and shame him. <laughs> and he probably wouldn't even know that you made the comic. So Look at how many likes anyway. I got of people who hate you. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah. Oh well. Anyway, Strange. next super chat. Go. Well, funnily enough, uh, one of my hard drives is like acting up, and it's the one that has the source oh, for no, uh, that's not good. our tiles for the EFAB on it. So right now it's just frozen, which, funnily enough, is just kind of how it used to look. <laughs> so, yeah, it is frozen. I can see that. Yeah. So hopefully that's uh, not too distracting to anybody. You know what? I probably shouldn't have highlighted it at all, and then everything would have been fine. But yeah, now I've noticed. The more positive outlook is just that nothing is destroyed. Uh, that's good. Very, yeah. very good. Because that would be bad. That's a scary thing when you're like, oh, you're like, is this hard drive broken? Wow. So I, I, uh, I had a scare with a hard drive. Fortunately, it was the one, it was the game one. So like, that was fine. I can just re-download all the games uh, on Steam. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. It, it wasn't the one with um, all the files, the images and pictures and document. Oh, the documents. The documents. Yeah, so, it, just, it was just a good reminder to back up everything on my uh, my external drive. Yeah. Um, just to be because from what I understand, SSDs pretty reliable. Uh, hard drives will fail after some time. Like yep. Five years. In storage. To be the average lifespan. Storage is getting pretty cheap too, so it is. get yourself some it SSDs. Now. It's faster; they're faster and re more reliable. 
And you also have the M.2 ones as well, the uh, M2 drives. Yes. Which I think are even better than those. Rags takes such quick pee breaks because he doesn't wash in pores. I do. <laughs> I do. I just, just I I just walk over, I pee, I wash my hands over, and I I do. And one of the reasons I do is because COVID did kind of get me to start washing my hands a little bit more. It kind of put that into my sort of my mind. So and plus, especially if you're a gamer. You should be washing your hands because it keeps the gamer gunk off of your mouse and keyboard and that sort of thing. It it really is something you should just sort of do semi regularly, a couple times like a day, it. every once in a while. Just just go wash your hands and clean your mouse pads too. Clean those mouse pads. I like the idea of you just washing your little paws and <laughs> under the water running them. Yeah, underneath. I just I just hop on up there. I got I got to, I can do it right there in the bathroom or go to my kitchen. There's I got options. Fring, you keep doing it from what I understand. You gotta work on that, man. Oh, man. Damn. That's another one of my recurring... The reason why I say from what I understand is to clarify that I could be totally wrong. Like, that's yeah, the reason why I'm, I say that. There are some I'm things that... I'm conveying to you yeah. the information that I believe to be true, or what I, the information I'm operating under as they say this. It's like context as you say it. Yeah, I don't see that... Quite the same as I see other repeated sort of statements. I see that as direct information. Do you want to clarify straight away? Just mm -hmm. this isn't definitive. Yeah, it, it's just a little message that goes to say I'm not asserting this as absolute truth, and apparently I may be mistaken. It's kind of like a softening of the claim that's being yeah. made. For instance, I'm not going to say from what I understand the sun exists. Like that's not that's not a statement I'm going to make. I will. Yeah, you would say, like, from what I understand, uh, Uranus has four moons? Yeah, and you, exactly. you can even say it with that almost inquisitive, inf uh, sorry, interrogative inflection. Yeah. So it'd be like, am I, like, you go into the statement knowing that it might be wrong, and as if you're looking to be softly given the correct information as you say it? Yeah, like, if you know better, you can feel free to clarify at any time. I think we had talked about it earlier, but there was another for one for one reason or another, it came into my head recently. But when we start out a sentence by saying, well, and mm. then we pause and then we start it, I think that's it's just become in the language a way for you to politely interrupt so that you you say well to imply that you want to say something. You pause so that the other person can decide their if they let you in or not. Kind of, yeah. Like it's it's a it's almost like the it's it's this just emergent conversational thing that has occurred because linguistically it doesn't have any meaning. I don't think to say well, comma da 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 da. da. I think it's pure. Like I don't I don't think that would exist if we didn't speak orally. And I think the only reason it exists in text form is because when you read it, you know exactly how it sounds. Because a lot of people like me, I don't necessarily type perfectly grammatically accurate. I type as one would speak. So it just fits well. and it makes sense. What? Oh, what? shit. Now I've got the opening. Um, what? At the very least, it'll imply that it's going to be built off of what was just said. I think saying, well. That as well, yeah. Like, it's not usually that you go, well, and then you talk about something completely different. Someone will be like, hey, well, what the fuck? Well, well is also a good substitute for um, if you want to buy some more time to figure out what you want to say. Um, um is the word that you want to train yourself to get off of. The reason it's why I bring that up. It's almost as bad as like. Um, um, like is the I'm, word. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm less, because me saying like, that's, I fucking hate that. I'm trying to sort that out. Um, I prefer um to like, uh, even though I don't prefer um. Like I the, prefer um to hey, like as yeah. well. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just better. Um, oh my god, I can't because stop. like has meanings. <laughs> like it does. is comparing one thing to another. This thing is like that thing, or it is to express your level of fondness for something. I like this. And I hate that it has become this filler word that people say so often. Like, 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 like. Yeah, like, um, yeah, a lot of words. See, that was fine, because yeah. I said it was but like that, that. No, that, yeah, that's fine, because you're saying it's 
similar to other words. Yeah. Good on you. Mm hmm. Uh, and then they follow up saying, Rags, thoughts on Brandon finishing Trump's wall after promising not to? Brandon. What a world we live in. Oh, Dude, yeah. Brandon. There was some. You mean Biden. <laughs> like, Brandon. Brandon. Yeah, let's go. You know, we're the meme? Yeah, that's a meme. Yeah. Do you not know about Let's Go Brandon? No, I don't actually. Really? Well, you missed no, that. That was a, that was a big in... boy meme. Okay. That was. That, I... That's odd that you missed that. The the let's go Brandon thing. I'm almost I, I'm I almost certain you wouldn't have missed it. You may have forgotten it because like, that have was just forgotten about everywhere. It. Yeah. Brandon. The I, the context is there. there's this like there's a NASCAR. bunch of people chanting at NASCAR. Um, fuck you, Biden. Right. Fuck Joe Biden. That's it. Yeah. And then oh, it, and then it was reported on the news that that wasn't the case. Was well, it? It was. It was they were well, talking well, to a, the, the interviewing someone. And he's like trying to cover for it, and he wants to make it sound better than it is. He says, "Let's go, <laughs> Brandon." Was, was it? Oh, oh I thought it was a guy. No, well, on. I think the chick was the presenter, and on the other side in the studio, it was the guy. Well, yeah, very funny though. Point being, they they were they were not saying "Let's go, Brandon," but that was I, used to cover you know up. What? I can imagine that they weren't saying "Let's go, Brandon." <laughs> Let's <laughs> go, not, Brandon. Yes. They were probably not randomly cheering yeah, some dude, fellow. It's literally a big me. No, they're saying boo words. Boo <laughs> this, words. The, listen, saying, boo this was a bad idea from the start. Words. This is I a NASCAR rally. Words. Nobody likes Joe Biden at the NASCAR <laughs> rally. The NASCAR rally. <laughs> no one in that fucking boo stadium words. likes you. Boo but, words. <laughs> Hello. But someone, yeah, the the border wall thing is interesting. I now I only have seen this picture, uh, so who knows if it's true? I would assume that it it, it probably is, um, but I don't know. Uh, I could check. Words. Hello. I was saying, let's go, Brandon. Hello, wonderful efappers. My favorite part of hating TLJ was finding efapp. Thanks for all the laughs and for helping me think more critically about film and TV. Much love from New Zealand. Oh, it's nice. Hope, hope you're doing well over there. Yeah. Howdy all. How do you feel on anyone really being a part of a bad product, show slash movie, in the sense they were involved in this, so I'm not looking forward to their work. Does that ever come up? Um, They were so involved in this, and I'm never looking forward to their work. I think this is a more interesting one. Um, it's, so, like, when I hear quotes, so, like, Michael Waldron is, he wrote Multiverse of Madness. The story is his fault. <laughs> um, yes. But when, when, like, an actor like Elizabeth Olsen says, like, really bizarre things about the morality of Wanda, it's like, hmm, I don't know how that makes me feel, you know? That's not a script. You're not reading a script Yeah, I was gonna right say now. that. You're not being... That wouldn't yeah. change my assumption of if she's in something, she'll provide good acting, you know? Like the Right, exactly. Um, in the I same way that if someone like, like you're weird, you're a strange person. If someone said, act. I'm the set designer from MOM, I'd be like, oh, all right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you you take it in, in parts, right? Like if, if somebody was part of a bad film, but they wrote a great score for it, um, you know, what's, what's, the, uh, what's the problem? Someone in chat just said they found us through Mandalorian because we were the first people who thought the show was bad they could find like them. Just like, fuck yeah, man. There's like hardly Hell anybody yeah. shitting on Mandalorian. Uh, Especially that first season. I was going to say, yeah, because this, this applies to season two. Like, we famously upset our audience with season two until they realized we were 100% correct. 1000% correct. One billion that became percent. an impromptu EFAP movies, right? Or EFAP show. Watch. Um, I can't remember why I decided that we'd record for that one. Um, I think because we did try it for season did. one, it didn't work. Um, but season two did. I think is and that, it, and it could have worked for season one. I guess for whatever reason, we weren't in the mindset for it, or we were doing other stuff. Because but... we did like the first episode of season one, we just didn't talk much. We we're just like, yeah. hmm. Yeah. Then we rewatched it, and we're like, oh, this is actually pretty bad. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's. that's... You I know. think we were more on Good side faith. with that with that one. Yeah, like that. Yeah, this was before God. a lot of stuff came out. Something like um, that it could be something worthwhile, and then yeah, it all just it all went wrong. Came crashing down. Uh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Kang Dynasty is this real? It's a meme, right? Yeah, it's uh. real. What are you gonna do? The Kang Dynasty. 
Not a good Which name. we assume is exact. I don't know how you could beat Kang. Um, we'll find out, because like they will. We'll fire a laser gosh, at him. Yeah, yeah. it'll be a blue beam. No, 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 like Palpatine. 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 <laughs> Team Palpatine. Uh, I was just wondering if any of you guys have seen Brick. I think it's probably Ryan Johnson's best movie. Also high rags. Hi, I have not seen Brick. Neither have I. Yeah, me three either. It's a shame because Black Adam is appealing for a lot of the same reasons Doctor Doom is appealing, but none of that will be explored here. Oh yeah, I'm sure in his best, yeah, Black Adam is great. Character. But, yeah. Black Adam was a slave prior to gaining Egyptian god's powers. He rules his own province and believes in might makes right, which contrasts him to Shazam. Yeah, he's from what I understand about Black Adam, the thing that makes him he's like he will pretty zealously defend Kandak, which is like his home. That's his big priority, and he will do whatever he can to like to to help and protect Kandak. So he's not he's not selfish in that regard. He's he's motivated by that goal. Mm -hmm. That's the same with Namor, right? He'll zealously defend Atlantis. Uh, presumably, I don't know anything about Namor really. Which regular Star Wars characters do you want to bet will cameo in Andor? Uh, I don't know about what cameos there'll be in Andor. That's part of the reason why I'm kind of interested in it. The less, the better. Uh, uh, Tarkin, yeah. maybe? I could see that happening. Maybe Tarkin. But yeah, we'll see, if his, we'll see if his skinwalker looks any better this time around. What, uh, what rebel people do we think? Are we, would, would, would Bail Ghana, maybe. Akbar? Akbar might show up. Yeah. Maybe Mon Mothma. Maybe. Yeah. I imagine. In I, fact, yeah, I will I say that it's that. probably. I would say Mon Mothma is quite likely a uh, contender because she's supposed to be. She's like a senator who's really important in helping the rebels and supporting them. Yeah. So, so she I can would see that. be. Sure. Yeah. I get Leia. You know, we, skin we might. Yeah. <laughs> it's just no. a funny term. <laughs> how come, come Obi-Wan doesn't visit anymore like he used to? No, you don't remember him, sweetheart, okay? You forget. You've gotten him now. Ah, uh, that's right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Rings of Power is the biggest please don't in the history of modern TV. Yeah, pretty much. That seems to be the sentiment. Just just don't. Oh, yeah. Just I don't think they announced, do like, we've seen everyone saying this stuff. We're just not going to release it. Yeah, there you go. Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> we're, like, we're just going to cut our losses and... Yeah. People are like, you know what? That was a good decision, actually. And they're like, yeah, thanks. Because thank they'd have to make four more seasons. Yeah, it's a big commitment. Isn't that crazy? That's such a huge commitment. And mm -hmm. the, the reception is so really insanely like... negative before it's out. You got, you got to imagine that they've, they've had those. I guess the problem is they may well have locked things in, like production and actors and yeah. all yeah. sorts of things. That means that they have to do it. Or that it would be financially ill-advised to not do it now. Uh, the only positive thing I can note from Lord of the Rings Rings of Power trailers and images is that most of the orcs are people with practical makeup and effects. Not that Hobbit CGI crap. Yeah, they look good. The, the orcs look good. Yeah, they do. So there's that. Springy, you have been exited. Exited? They mean excited? excited. They must, I think they mean excited for Loki Season 2 or you'll be melted. No, uh, I don't. I don't like the don't idea of being melted. melted. But I'm not excited. Can you be melted anymore? Because now that no, the... oh, the CBI still exists, right? And there's still that place at the end. As of far as I know, yeah. Monster, you would just be sent yeah. there. You wouldn't get eaten by the monster, is, right? Um, you just get sent to the planet. Is Waldron and you have to live there? Is Waldron right in the second season or no? I don't think so. I think he's just moving on to Star Wars now. What's funny right. is I can I can believe easily that if you said like, don't you want to handle the second season of your show? He'd be like, huh? Hmm. No. He, he does seem like that kind of person. Like, oh man, do you want to see what happens next with Doctor Strange? Do you want to maybe cover the third in his story now that you've kind of written the second? He'd be like, um... How much? <laughs> <laughs> how much money we talking here? How much uh, money we talking here? They follow up with saying Gus would fit better for Magneto than Professor X, I think. Hi, Rags. I could see, I want to see him play a hero. I was about to say, actually, yeah, because... Uh, uh, that would it, be nice. I almost typecasted him guy. in my own head. I was like, does he suit Professor X at all? And it's like, wait a minute, it wouldn't... 
It wouldn't be that bad to right see him that, try and do could, um, a good guy hero yeah. type, yeah. He's, I, I, I would prefer to see him play a hero for once, because he is now basically the villain guy. Um, yeah, which isn't cool, because now he's, he's like Charles Dance, actually. The same thing, where he just turns... More, Charles Dance isn't quite villain guy, he's authority figure guy. It I can mean, be good or bad. Gus is such, he's such a villain guy that Far Cry, the series that flanderized itself into being <laughs> the villain series, the villain. had him <laughs> as the villain. They did. They absolutely yeah, yeah, did. Um, like it's it's kind of a shame as well because like Vas is great. He's great, and he was underutilized in Far Cry Three. Um, but I think it almost led to them having this sort of like weird, like this this weird course correction where like Far Cry became the villain series where the villains were like the main attraction and the protagonists were nothing. All the while ignoring that like Far Cry Three has a story that it's trying to tell with its main with uh Jason. There's a story that they're trying to tell about slipping into insanity and like, you know, losing yourself amidst a whole bunch of carnage and like forgetting who you are and what matters to you. Um, whereas eventually the protagonist, Far Cry 5, I'm pretty sure you just play like a silent protagonist. It just doesn't matter um, who you are. Oh, someone just, uh, Call of Duty Vanguard. Is that a pink rifle? In a World War Two video game. No, it's purple. With a, with a holographic sight. <laughs> Believe it or Man. not, the hollow sights are the least. Uh, they 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 existed back then. Um, but I mean, it's it's the fact that it's a it's a pink anime space gun that plays <laughs> techno music that the character pumps his fist to. Hell really yeah! Uh, so this is meant to be a World War Two like game. No, this this is this game is meant to sell you shit. Yeah, pretty much. Um, it's it's I I don't like it. What happens to just you're a normal soldier? You're just a cog Boo, in the machine. Boo, boring. Doing the best you no can. one likes that. Boo. Boo. You yeah. can't sell people insane, amazing skins and animations and music. Yeah, packs. boo with your idea yeah. down. Boo. Boo. We don't want that. I have to buy things to make me feel special. Hey, yeah, we can do dance moves in the middle of this battlefield while all of these people are getting gunned down and dying. It's what keeps out. away the PTSD. It's just, remember how when you died in Call of Duty, they would have quotes that made you think? Yeah. You remember? No, they just have boring. Quotes that Boo. About war and like the human condition and everything. Lame. Yeah, that is lame compared to anime guns and dance moves and, and emotes and I hope... sick takedown animations. Because, yeah, if there's one thing I think of when it, when it comes to, like, World War II, it's those crazy takedown animations that they would have had. I think the big <laughs> thing that we've been missing for so long is, you know, they do that goofy nonsense, like, oh, you can pick up some intel. If it were Mountain Dew, I think that would be better. Like, you pick up the cans, yeah. and there's different collectible cans, and if you get all of them, you unlock, like, a <laughs> Mountain Dew gun. Mountain Dew, it'll tickle your innards! And then maybe make that a part of the plotline. Mountain Dew is, is you know, is something going Mountain on there. Mountain Dew. Yeah, yeah because, <laughs> of course... Mountain Dew no, no, no. Of Mountain Dew it'll be Fanta. It'll be Fanta because the Germans didn't have Coca Cola because you know the war and everything they couldn't get an access to, couldn't get access to the the sugar and stuff so that's how Fanta came into being. Is that true? Yeah. Wait, so what's in Is Fanta? Not yeah. sugar. Is it like a sweetener or something? Uh, let me find what it is. Uh, I just didn't know that Fanta was was like German. I didn't know that. Uh, yes, Fanta came as a result of the war. Uh, let's see. Uh, the smart heads of Coca-Cola invented Fanta in Germany because there was a shortage of the ingredients needed to make Coke, making no mention uh... of the fact the ingredients were scarce because allies had embargoed the Nazis during the war. I did not know that. Well, I like Fanta. <laughs> so... Fan yeah, Fanta's A-OK. -okay. Um, I mean, as far as sodas go, it's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, and what does what the mm -hmm. origin of Mountain Dew? Where, where, where'd that... Mountain Dew... It's Mountain Dew. I know it used to be the Tennessee bottle. Uh, Tennessee bottlers Barney and Allie Hartman developed Mountain Dew as a mixer in the 1940s. Soft drinks were sold regionally in the 30s, and the Hartmans had difficulty in Knoxville obtaining their preferred soda to mix with liquor, preferably whiskey. So the two developed their own. 
And I um, think Mountain Dew itself is a name that refers to moonshine. Okay. And I uh, saw someone ask about Hugo Boss. I know about that. And I know that Volkswagen, it means like people's Vic car, people's doesn't car, it? That, yeah. Like that's people's the direct car, translation. Yeah. yeah. And that yeah. was a, a, rose, a rose in the 30s. But I think IBM gets off the hook because when they sold all their oh, stuff to you, right, yeah, it was right. early in the 30s or something like that. So, Right, yeah. It's particularly so I, grim. I think, I think IBM is off the hook, though. Um, I, think I don't know enough about the IBM stuff. Earlier. I think it was the early 30s when IBM did all this stuff in Germany, and then they used those machines later for, of course, that IBM couldn't have known. but Or maybe they could have. I don't know. Probably not, but... Do do Fanta. Please review Fanta. a volume of One Piece per week. No, not even a maybe. Isn't, isn't like no. One Piece been running for like forty years? <laughs> Five thousand years, something like that, probably. I, uh, yeah, I think no. I think that would be literally impossible, right? Because they probably produce a new volume, uh, not a new volume, like a new issue of One Piece every week. So it's like, yeah, you want to just keep doing that until eternity, till you're dead. Yeah, nah. <laughs> um, from the butchering of Lord of the Rings, we give you the Rings of Power, Amazon. Hey, they gotta sell it somehow. Personally, I want you guys to react to it because there's no way I can watch this crap otherwise. Please react and mock Rings of Power. We may... It is one of those things that's on the... It's on may. that level of, I feel like I should be aware of it and know about it. Oh yeah, definitely. I, I want I just... to be aware of it, I just don't know... Bottom. I'm just oddly Dealing apathetic. With... I just, I'm, I weirdly am like, I just don't care about that show at all. So odd. It's like I've, almost, I've, I've already written it off as something. I just, you know, it's like, uh, yeah. Well, maybe it'll power, activate but... your almonds when you check it out. You know, maybe it will. It's kind of like Halo, right? I didn't really care that that show existed, <laughs> like, and then it came out. It's like, oh no. Yeah. God, that show. Fun fact. In the Old Man Logan comic, the Hulk impregnates She-Hulk because she's the only woman capable of carrying his babies to term and not dying. Wow. Okay. okay. Interesting. Following a lot of the House of Dragon production progress since last April, I think there's enough choices made to have it at least be decent. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, it could be, it could be good, right? There's no reason that this brand new, new set of people, new, 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 new. We'll see. We'll see what it does. How's the Dragon based on a finished George R. R. Martin book is a good start. Yeah, that's fair. We shall see. What is this, some kind of Dungeons and Dragons? I know, right? It's, you just don't expect to see it, but there it is. As someone who's been shot while wearing a bulletproof vest with SAPI plates, I can attest that it still hurts a lot. Yeah, I mm -hmm. have no doubt that it hurts a lot. Still getting shot. Yeah. Uh, I don't know who the new Dead Dead Devil writers fellated to get the job. Their work includes a pretty unknown TV show and Deck the Halls. I am worried. It's um, it's a really weird thing with a lot of Marvel projects. Is hey, you you've written one movie here, you get to be the lead writer of a multi million dollar television series. I don't yeah. I don't understand it. Don't get it. Um, like Michael Waldron only had like two writing credits before that. He was an assistant on Community in like the later seasons. He wrote like one movie, I think, and one episode of Rick and Morty. And then it's like, here you go. You get to be the lead writer on a massive production with Tom Hiddleston as your lead actor. I understand. At Muller, bullet resistant, no vest is bulletproof. Did you just actually me? <laughs> 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 Um, actually. Take this dosh and use it to buy yourself a real, actual, legitimately genuine lordship title. It would be tempting, wouldn't it? It's, uh, Lord Rag, Lord Fringy. Lord Mubsley, yeah. yeah. Lord, Lord Mubsley sounds a lot like Lord Melbury. You can go to Faulty Towers and I could. try and book a room there. With your with your briefcase full of, I guess instead of bricks, it would just be full of like long stuff, like just a bunch of rope, I guess. <laughs> yeah. A possible Ironheart suit is in a Lego set from WF. Yay! 
Get excited. Riri Williams is on the way. Sweet. Digimon of the day is the Kiwimon. Hmm. Kiwimon? Uh, Kiwimon? Yeah, that looks about like, uh, yeah, let me show Fringy. <laughs> okay. We got a good picture here. Kiwimon. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, pick a pick a GF cat girl, Caracal, Serval, or Sphinx cat. I'm alright. Sphinx? No, they just said pinks. Well, I don't even know how you pronounce that. Pinks? Well, we talked about the Caracal. I don't know. I I guess you talk about which one's the prettiest. I suppose it'd be the Serval, right? Because those are like spotty, and they got they're kind of like like cheetah looking sort of. Servals, and Sphinxes are Sphinxes are odd. They're they're a strange looking strange looking critter. It's weird to see them without hair, you know. Mm-hmm. Very strange to see cats without hair. If you're writing a story with magic in it, set limits on what the magic does. Then assume everyone who can magic would be using it constantly. For instance, lawyer plus truth spell. Also high rags. Hello. No way that would be legal though. <laughs> truth spell. If uh if maybe they were the only ones that knew about it, and they were a sneaky, sneaky lawyer. Well, I mean, it's just as soon as they discover that, it's mistrial. <laughs> like, well, that person should be in jail way. forever as soon as that gets well, discovered. Of yeah, you've you've that's you violated people. You got you got the Fifth Amendment, and I guess equivalents in other countries. Uh, opinions on the oh, bolt. Legal. Well, yeah, but they're not admissible as evidence. You can use them, but like you can't. Like, they're not admissible as, as something you can use to, like, convict someone. Uh, opinions on the bolt stump in level tumbler locks. Uh, the what? I, in the I, what? The bolt stump in level tumbler locks. Yeah, they're pretty good. I don't know what that's referring to. I'm, I'm gonna go with pretty good. Or maybe pretty bad. Or neutral. One of those. Uh, Adam kept bringing up consistency Tuesday. Usually, oh, on Tuesday. Usually in a joking way, but partly because he seems salty about you Morley whooping him on Sunday. Hi, Franks. Well, look, he dug Hi. himself into that hole. I didn't do anything. He said, like, how could you want consistency over an arc? This is like, like, no, no good movie exists with no character arc. I think even Sitch at one point was just like, hmm, maybe. It was like, no. You can have movies without character arcs. You're insane. Um, I'll just see more. If it's a fantasy world, it may have different laws. I could imagine that if, like, you chose to get up on the stand, because, of course, the, 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 no, the whole point of going up on the stand is, like, you're telling the truth, otherwise you've committed perjury. So, like, I could imagine that if, in a fantasy world, if you choose to go up on the stand, then that would be something that might be applied. But, it, I like, in terms of forcing anybody to say anything, right, presumably that would still not be the case. Like, you still have the right to not say anything, the right to, you don't have to bear witness against yourself. Yeah, Truth Spell seems like it violates, it violates a bunch of stuff. I'm not sure. Well, the, the principle exists for good reason. You, you, you have a right to, like, not... You, you, you don't have to incriminate yourself. That's something that you can choose to do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Bear witness against yourself, like, in a case against yourself, you know? Also, love you guys' take on Matt Reeves' The Batman. Do you all guys also have any opinions on his Planet of the Apes trilogy? I like those films. <clears throat> I remember liking them. Um, I remember yeah. feeling there were issues, but I, I enjoyed yeah, the yeah. time I had. So, Matt Reeves, so the question is, do we like the Matt Reeves, uh, Matt Reeves' The Batman that just came out? Nope. And because it's something about Planet of the Apes as well. Like, I'm just trying to, like, I heard, all, I, I guess I was just double checking when I was Googling it. But what, <laughs> what was, do we like as one, what are our thoughts on the Matt Reeves Planet of the Apes? Sure. What are your thoughts on Matt Reeves Planet of the Apes movies? You say it like he didn't actually make Planet of the Apes movies. 
And I'm, I'm just curious. I want to be okay. <laughs> he, did. He, did. he definitely did. Okay, he did those other. I have not seen them. I hear some of them are pretty neat. All right. Yeah. There you go. That was your answer. I like the Batman. As do I. The reason why the Russo brothers removed the Hulk scene in Infinity War was because the test screening audience thought the tone was confusing. Ah, uh, whatever. <laughs> well, the tone was. I mean, if you put it in the portion of the fights where there's some hope, as in, like, when, for example, Corvus, Bla Corvus Glaive, I think is his name, he gets stabbed. You know, if you have that happening at the same time that Hulk gets a win by doing that, it's like, that could that can work. You can have that moment before everything starts to go to shit permanently, you know? Damn you, test audience. <laughs> Can't believe you didn't talk about the monsters. It's the only great love story of all time, lol. Yeah, they, Red Letter Media took care of that, alright? They got a video talking about the monsters, I guess. Uh, also, Fringy, please say no ten times in a row. Thanks. No, 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 no. That's ten. Yeah. What's well, fine, just do it. Oh, that was, okay. That was ten. I know, I was just saying, I, 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 originally I was confused. I thought you were denying that you didn't want to do it. and <laughs> Over and <laughs> over and over again. Very late to the discussion, but I think the Astrid part of Thor Love and Thunder was trying to make a point on trans people and dead naming. Seeing it, they would never want to make Thor dead name somebody. That would, but it's that's, not a dead name, it's a nickname, would, right? That's, I don't, that's like, what I'm saying is, it, 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 it's interpretable, possibly, but I doubt Taika would want to make Thor the one who is arguing for dead naming. I don't think he'd want to do that, no, so I don't think it was no, intentional. I don't and I still don't even see how it really follows. It was a nickname, right? It was... Because um, yeah, I said, seeing as Astrid is a feminine name and Heimdall's son chose a masculine name, I don't even know that, is Astrid feminine or masculine in Norse? And is that actually Heimdall's kid's name in Norse? I don't know. I don't know the facts on any of these. And uh, I don't... I, th I think it was just like a shitty joke of... Joke, yeah. Because remember, he's like, I name myself after Axel Rose, and it's like, oh, oh Guns of Rose, and then he's just like, don't call yourself Axel. You get, he's like, shut up, call, he's called himself Axel, leave him alone. You know, and it's, I don't think they meant dead naming. I, like I said, I just don't think Taika would want to make Thor a dead namer, because that's a big no-no. Um, on the too cynical question, what about Machine for Pigs, Muller? I feel like you are a little close to my position, which is... Uh, it's overly hated. I think it has more to offer story and atmosphere-wise than most people think. It's not a fantastic horror game, but a good horror experience. I'd be inclined to say, sure. I felt better about it when I recently played it, and I, it's gotta be the fact that that was... When I first felt what I did about that game was back when things were better. <laughs> <laughs> or rather, or rather, I hadn't played Amnesia Rebirth at that point, so maybe I didn't appreciate how much worse it could get, you know? Um, and I was very happy with, like, the soundtrack, and I think it's like a little game that could, in, in terms of it's it's not got a lot going for it, it hasn't much time production, it's, it's mainly running on a, on its name, but they still managed to make something out of it, and I think, I think I even said that would be one of my suggestions for, like, for it to be remade and given a bigger, grander experience that explores it more thoroughly, because it's um it's quite quick and simplistic. Not that um you could say the same for Dark Descent to a degree. But yeah, um I think I I think I was too harsh on Machine for Pigs at first. That is probably fair. Uh Fringy, do you swallow with your eyes? No. Alright. Maybe the Skrulls want to invade Earth because the person who genocided the most Skrulls in history was Carol Danvers, an Earthling. Wait, she did? <laughs> she killed a lot of them. She killed that spaceship, sure, but like that was just a portion of <laughs> Skrulls, right? I don't know. Yeah, I guess so. It is kind of funny, though, that uh, that was the greatest resource of all time. They just don't talk about the fact that she just casually fucking blew it up on her way out. Yeah. It's whatever, don't worry about it. Hey, Moller & Co. I recently released my first Longman video, four and a half hours on Guild Wars 2's story and the decline in expansion. EFAB has been a big inspiration in making this, so thank you. Wow, good stuff. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Uh, what, um, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. 
Now the hard part is getting eyes onto it. It should be suited for the EFAP audience, so if anyone is interested, search for Guild Wars 2 Destruction of Stakes and give it a watch. Let's see. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, it, uh, if you're going to break down Summoners, because Guild Wars 2's story is, I imagine, huge, right? Because it's, it's a big old Chungus game. It is. I, I, it is shit. I play <laughs> Guild Wars 2 pretty, a, a decent amount. I hate the story. I legitimately do not look forward to any having to play any of the story content. I basically have either hatred or apathy towards all of the characters. I don't want to do them. I, there's plenty of reasons why I really like the game and play it a lot, but fuck me, I hate the story. It's shit. It is magic bullshit, the game. There is no stakes to anything. It's an and-then plot, and then, and then, and this happens, and this happens, and this happens, and it's just, I hate it. I fucking hate the story. I um, think you uh, hate it. it sounds like yeah, you sounds really like, don't like it. Well, I really uh, don't. I just, I hate having to do it, because it's not fun to do. The, that game's strengths is not in the story missions at all. And at least with one character, you have to go through the story, essentially, to get to a lot of the areas and everything that they introduce in the the seasons in between the DLC or in the expansion packs. It's, they're great expansions, but fucking hell, I hate having to play the story, especially um, going back when I played the old stuff, because the game's it's going to hit its 10 year anniversary this year, I think. Wow. And so going back to that, the, like the core game and the, like season two and three it's like man this was rough this is just shit i just want to get this over with to unlock the new places and things and zones and then i can ugh. i mean they give you plenty of goodies for doing it but geez i hate it i hate it i hate it the story uh, is shit and the characters are shit if anyone is interested to find out possibly why the story sucks um yeah there's a video called the destruction of stakes for guild wars 2 it's apparently a long minute this is is by Amleth? Yes. Four and a half to hours? Apparently. Yeah, I haven't I haven't even gone through the new expansions content yet. Cause I just don't wanna I just don't wanna. I'm not interested in it. it and ugh, story shit. If you're gonna make a story, don't make it like Guild Wars 2. Combat's great, but fuck me, the story's bad. Hey guys, first super chat. Watch FX's The Old Man with Jeff Bridges returning to acting post cancer, directed by No Way Home's John Watts. Good rat. Hi, Rags. Hi. I, I didn't even know that John Watts had directed it, but that's kind of neat. And yeah, a lot of people have recommended The Old Man. I should uh, get a way to check that out at some point. All right. This means they killed Hulk. There is only Bruce and Strong Bruce now. Ah. Yes. <laughs> Seems a lot of people are very uh, convinced by that point, which is good because maybe one day they'll address it if more and more people are aware of the fact that they fucking murdered a hero without even realizing it. <laughs> like, whoops! Yep. Uh, prehistoric Animal of the Day, Part 1, Antelodont. Antelodont? I recognize that name. Antelodont? Oh, I think... Let me take a look here. Oh, oh yeah, he's in Walking with Beasts. You're talking about this guy, the uh, this 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 dude. Yeah. Look at him. He he looks, I don't know. He looks like he could be a friend or a problem. Good. He could be either. Hmm. I hope he's friendly. Yeah. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. The second is Opabinia. Opabinia? Opabinia. Don't recognize this one. It looks like a... All right, let me get you a little picture of him. Oh, he looks similar to the guys from the... Oh, fuck, what were they called? They're, they're, like, they're in the Walking Monsters at the beginning. He looks like a variation of them. Anomalacaris, I think was the name. Which, by the way, what a fucking cool name. Unless I'm mixing that up with someone else. Uh, Bushland Adventures is way too funny. <laughs> yes, it is. Too funny. <clears throat> Classic Rick and Morty Bushland Adventure. Hey, Morty, check it out. <laughs> I did some science to me portal gun. Now it's also a real gun. I got a real gun, Morty. 
Why are you pointing it at my head, Rick? Uh, you gotta stop me. <laughs> <laughs> I w all right, I won't tell you about Bendigo and the Green Cube. And... No, we gotta go to Bendigo to get me Green Cube. We gotta go to Bendigo, Morty. Oh, Rick Bendigo, isn't that like, you know, four hours away? I think it was eight hours away, actually. Oh, Rick, isn't that eight hours away? Well. He's got that whiny kind of voice. <laughs> he, he does have that whiny kind of voice, you're right. I liked Nope. Though, other theater goers were like, what was the point? Weird pacing and switch gears mid-film a lot, but I was into it. Alright. There you go. Uh, Rewatching the OT in my brain even still separates it from everything else, even the prequels. I think mine kind of does that a little bit. Kind of. I think mine does. I knew the OT back to front before the prequels even came out, so it does kind of feel like it's its own, its own dude. But uh, every once in a while, you know, you're like, you look at Luke doing his hero thing, and you're like, hmm. Damn, you're gonna die. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna be <laughs> pissed, man. You're, you're heading toward piss. Hello, Moolah, Fringu, and Doggo. Hello. Hi. Alrighty. Well, I, I guess, thought I yeah. said hi. Was I, that? I, I didn't. I didn't hear it. Did you hear it, Rex? Oh, oh. I thought I. I thought I. Oh my god! I'm well, sure I did. I mean, his chat didn't hear it either. Frozen in anticipation. Uh, for some dip, Pokédex entries. Look up Shuckle and Dunsparce. So okay, let's do it. When I type, like, you might as well just paste it so I got them both and I could type them out. Well, Shuckle is pretty straightforward, right? Oh, Shuckle and Dunspar? Dunspars, and they're pretty much spelled as you'd, you'd think. Oh, I got them. Oh, Shuckle, I remember this one. Uh, we're, are we reading Pokedex entries? That's all it says, yeah. All right. Let me see. All righty. da 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 I'm just making sure that I get one. Generally, what's the one that the X and Y? Uh, basically, it looks like um, Shuckle quietly hides itself under rocks, keeping its body concealed inside its hard shell while eating berries it has stored away. The berries mix with its body fluids to become a juice. Oh. So it looks like it puts berries inside of its shell and it becomes like a, a juice that it eats. Uh, I right. guess let me get you a picture of a uh, shuckle here. By the way, I like these this style of um why are you not pasting? Copy paste. There we go. You know those old it, it kind of has that old school style of Pokemon art. It I don't does. Know really, oh, I remember him, yeah. Yeah, I don't know how to describe it, but it just has that look like it's on paper in a way. And the next one is done sparse. I will copy an image and paste it here for you for context. Let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm just I'm just giving these a quick skim so that we see. It looks like it says. Yeah, it's dr it's drill tipped tail is used to burrow into the ground backwards. This Pokemon is known to make its nest in complex shapes deep under the ground. So that seems to be the general thread here. It digs into the ground with its tail and makes a maze like nest. Okay. So yeah, I mean, it's you know, no one's getting killed or their soul sucked out yeah, or yeah. trapped in some sort of cryo prison. So yeah, it's pretty nice. That's that pretty is nice. nice. It's just like, yeah, it lives in a hole in the ground, and it's pretty uh, complex down there sometimes, you know? If Rags is Arcanine, what Pokemon would Mauler and Fringy be? For me, I'd say that Mauler would be Alolan Executor, and Fringy would be Grovule. So, Lowland Executor. He's a, he's a long boy. Oh! A lowland. I thought you said a lowland executor, but it's uh, here. I'll get you a picture if it will let me post this. Two, two, copy and paste. 
But yeah, I, I could see why they chose that. And then for Fringy, <laughs> um, I can also see how they chose that. <laughs> it's a goo What's thing, it isn't called? it? Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, I remember him. I remember it's like him. Frogbird. Yeah. He is frogbird, like a frogbird, frogbird, frogbird. And he's green. Yeah. Frogbird. Hitting all the boxes. Yeah. <laughs> Look at how happy he is. He's so chill. Mm -hmm. I can't relate to that. New Rockstars has a video on Suicide Squad Being where happy they and chill? praise it. Yeah. That's sad. And the opening line is. So first off, Suicide Squad isn't exactly a movie. Um, what? Oh, uh, that mean? go go on. Well, that be you know what? I'll go have a look at that. Maybe maybe it'll be something that'll be funny to cover at some point. I don't know. Uh, if I don't like it, I don't swallow. Rat critic. It's fair enough. Yeah, you know, it's can't blame cool, a rat yeah. critic for that. Mm-hmm. It's okay, guys. I still like Doom's voice. It's probably better in gameplay. It, I mean, <laughs> it fits with what seems to be the tone of the game. It's got, it's got that cartooniness to it. Um, yeah. But it's, it wouldn't be the voice that I would use in anything other than that specific kind of scenario because it's certainly not menacing. It's, it's definitely cartoon villain kind of voice. I prefer it in Ultimate Alliance. His voice in that. Um. I don't know. It's just it's hard to say, but it's, it's just more of what I would have expected. Uh, riddle me this: four balls on the edge of a long. Nice. The boys' season three is pain. The finale was very cringe. It was. It was really bad. But to be fair, most of the season was bad. It's just that everyone apparently only decided that the last episode was bad. Interesting, but you know. Take a look at the article. I hate you, Tom Nook. Oh no. Uh. Uh, no, it's, I can't. This might I be one that bear. I have saved and I was going to do some. I hate you. I don't think Tom I can bear to look at it. I hate you, Tom Nook, from thegamer.com by Roxy Hayes from September 19th, 2021. This is recent. Um, let's see. To be honest, I don't love everything about the game. In fact, there is something or someone I loathe entirely a furry little slumlord in a green shirt. Oh, my God. That's right. I hate you, Thomas Nookington, better known as Tom Nook. What is your problem? Apparently it's when you Tom first, Nook. This is bizarre. Yeah. When you first get on the island, you're a novice. Don't know your softwood from your hardwood, your money rock from your clay rock, and is that a fossil? Nook knows that and takes full advantage. He looks at you with those beady eyes and says, go shake trees oh and pick goodness. up some branches. Make yourselves useful. Make yourself useful. Which is... I mean, yeah, it gets you up and doing stuff, and you have to learn those things, so. Um, does he offer you a warm bed after your long travels? Absolutely not. He hands you a tent and makes you search the island for a place to put it. He makes you, he makes you decide where to put he your tent. He makes you decide where bastard. to put your house. Your the house. fucking bastard. Because the you tent becomes you your to, house. You know what you didn't get to do in Old Animal Crossings? Choose where your house was. Yeah. Where that house was is where that fucking house was. And if you wanted it close to the store... Fuck you, asshole, because you don't get a choice in old Animal Crossings. That shit Tom was Nook, where it was. Tom Nook figured, you know what? I can improve the services on, on offer for my, yeah. my wonderful customers. These Talk about, people who yeah. call my friends. This has, got, this has got to be a joke. Let me... I can believe it's not, unfortunately. Um... Maybe Roxy Hayes is a, like a, I don't know. By the way, Michael yeah, Walton is this... apparently writing season two of Loki. Is he? Apparently. That's what he's got listed right now. I don't know if maybe it'll update and he's not. Right. But yeah. Good for him. <sighs> Uh, yeah. who's the real big bad of Buffy season six? Also high rags. I would say yeah, that the answer to that I... could entail spoilers to a degree. Yeah, so. exactly. But Sorry you, about you know, that. asking the question, you probably know who the contenders are. You, you, you'd know. Uh, well, did you know? Like, uh, did you know millions like drowned in China? Well, like millions recently, or? drowned in China recently. Millions. You sure? Know. I'm I'm not sure what it's referring to. I'm out of the loop. Damn. 
Um, I found EFAB way back when I saw Moller's Soma review and Wolf threw an impromptu stream, Ari Willems versus Plot Holes, then at TLJ it came all together. The Willems and Plot Holes thing, that's episode two of EFAB, right? It wasn't named EFAB at that point, but... Uh, oh, yeah, it was, like, first couple, yeah. Because the way the story goes is uh, we were just hanging out, and we were going to stream it, and then Rags, his stream wasn't working, so I did it. We did uh, a video from Downward Thrust and Jared, and then the following week he released that video, and I was like, wouldn't it be fun if we responded to it live? And then the rest is history. Pretty much. With a sultry French accent, can you please say Ooh woo mon ami Ooh woo mon ami Wanna do it for any Uh what is it? Ooh woo mon I mean I didn't Ooh woo mon ami, was that it? Mm-hmm. Well there they said say, say it. it's sultry. Unless that's your sultry no. voice. Whoops, okay, it was then. Let's say that. All right. <laughs> oh, oh. Moving on. <laughs> okay. Fringy, Fringy, the Fringy, the Frog Bird. He is not a lover. Do the mate. Do the fro. Uh, the the the, the Frog Bird mating call. Oh. Oh well. The Frog Bird mating call. I figured that there would be a lot of different because of course birds have a ton of mating calls and I guess frogs might be like. I don't know what ribbit, but more I guess like salt sultry than that. Yeah. Can't help you, unfortunately. I don't I don't know what the oh, the yeah, frog right. mm -hmm. bird mating call is exactly. Yeah, what a shame. Hi crew, yeah, it smiley it face. Which movie was the most ah. fun to take down? Hmm. Oh, I thought it, I, I thought oh, out of all of them. Fun to uh, take down. Um most fun to take down. Dude, the Rise of Skywalker is up there. That's probably it, it's actually. Yeah. Crazy one to laugh at. yeah, I it think really that's is. it. We, we'd all come to the conclusion already that it was god awful, so we were just there to talk about how silly everything was. Maul's not going to do it. I was the first one to do it, Thunder. What is this? What is this gaslighting I'm getting tonight? Can't believe it. Telling me how things are when they ain't how they is. Terrible. Yeah. Um, Uncanny Avengers 8 has the other Kangs in it. Or on it. Uh, alright. I'll be excited to see all the Kangs, I'm sure. Um, IBM had no idea what Germans meant when they asked for a system that can delete 6 million users. I get it. EFAP out of context. Their utters are so engorged. Oh, I think they mean udders. And... That's probably in someone's art, like Beowin, probably. I could understand how that came to be. Uh, don't forget Streamlabs, read mine at least. Well, I, I, I would read any of the ones that have come in, but uh, those uh, typically, because like they, whichever ones have come in today, I'll be able to read uh, probably at the beginning of the Wednesday stream, which we're going to have to do another one of, because we're still not quite caught up yet. Uh, read Parasect Pokemon Entry in Ultra Sun. Hi, Rags. Hello. All right. What's the Pokemon name? Parasect. He's one of the classic ones, isn't he? Para he is. He's one of the, uh, the OG. Whoa. And this will be his entry from what? Uh, I posted it. Um, Ultra Sun. Oh, there it is. Ultra Sun. All right. This is where it starts getting. This is one of some of the fucked up ones. All right. <laughs> the bug is mostly dead, with the mushroom on its back having become the main body. If the mushroom comes off, the bug stops moving. Hmm. That's nice. That, that is... Hmm. So, Paris, uh... Is it... What was before it? It's Paris, and then Paris becomes Paris sect. Was there a Paris spore? What am I... Huh. I'm thinking of something else. Oh, well. But what? I remember some of these. I have, like, really early memories of some of these original Pokemon for when those they, they were the ones, you know? Mm. Good stuff. My point with the truth spell was magic will change aspects of society and culture that you might be surprised by. Also, hi to the rest of you. Yeah. Hello. Uh, hey. well. 
Yeah, of course. Oh, absolutely. I just, uh, I think me and Fringy would hope that if a truth spell existed, that you wouldn't be allowed to use it in court. There would be some significant legal sort of um, considerations and, and consideration for, yeah, people's rights. Yeah, You'd have it to would wonder too. be abused and... Can a truth spell be considered reliable if, um, I don't know, maybe you get wonky results from minds that... I have to imagine, you know, like, it would have weird results on maybe the mentally well, unstable. what is the nature of, uh, because, of course, the truth spell, there are people who can just, like, flat out make their brains that something false is true. That's another, like, yeah. That. yeah. How, does, how does it work, I exactly? That's how we, in, it was in, what was the movie where she was doing at the end, Wonder Woman? Was that oh, God. Man of Steel, oh. or? No, not Man of Steel, sorry. Batman, it was Don, Donna Justice or something? Where she had two crooks in her lasso, and oh, one of the yeah, crooks... and made them confess. Yeah, yeah. So she had two of the crooks in the lasso. One of them was talking, and he was talking to the police, and they were wrapped up in the lasso. And the crook said something, and then the other says, "No, no, no, it was da da da." And then the first one was, "Oh yeah." So, which means that the it doesn't make you tell the truth necessarily. It's your you truth. are forced to report what you believe to be true. Yes, which means yeah. you could report what's technically an untruth, but but you won't lie. Yeah, uh, also, which is good probably the way to do it. Them Miranda rights there. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that was a huge violation of rights. Yeah, it, and it's just thrown in. Ha ha ha! Isn't it funny? Oh yeah, it's, no. She'd be fucking she'd fucking wink at the world. camera and be like, "So long to your rights." <laughs> be like, yeah. Oh man. So, anyways, I started violating the United States Constitution. <laughs> Um, in a comedic comic, we see a passport of Doctor Doom's country, which is just a picture of him saying, "Allow the Latverian holder of this passport into your country of face or face the personal wrath of Doom." <laughs> I like it. I like that that would be his passport. That's amusing. The other thing, you'd wonder if they would ever play into the those aspects of him, uh, or they would just play him straight. I would assume they play him straight. I would assume yeah, so. He I'd seems like straight. one you want to play straight, yeah. Still here after my shift at work. Save my day. Oh, great. Because we're, we're at six and a half hours. A oh, nice steady stream. Mm -hmm. Problem I have with your Pokedex entry comparison is you're comparing Frostlass, who is a ghost ice type, to a Dunsparce, which is a normal type. Ghost, dark, and psychic types are the ones with the darker entries. They chose to do that. <laughs> they yeah, didn't they... have to make them that way. What do you mean? <laughs> like, oh, yeah. psychic, that's inherently going to have dark yeah, fucking entries. Yeah, it's fine that it consumes the souls of men. <laughs> in fact, it's its favorite tree. It's fine, it's psychic, or it's, it's a ghost type. I'm sorry, why is it that we're suggesting, then, that normal types can't be dark? Like, why? Because then they'd be dark type, Mahler. Oh, I see. Uh, she, why can't normal types be spooky? Why can't they have soul-eating histories? There probably is, like, at least one normal-type Pokemon that has a history like that. Isn't, um, Cubone, isn't he, like, drowned or normal, whatever? I think so. And yeah, everyone was citing him as an example of a dark story, so... I reject your... 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 statements. Ah, I deride your statement-handling abilities. Yes. Insect of the hour, you... Spinolia militaris. You hmm. Spinolia oh my militaris. God. Look at this guy. Oh wow! Look at that. What a what a critter. Let me copy and paste here. Bringy, you like him? Let me take a look. Look at him. Look at him go. He's cute. Copy. I hope he's yeah, friendly. Yeah, it's like a... I think it's also called the panda ant. Ah. Perfection in naming. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Read Lapras Pokedex entry for Ruby, Moon, and Ultra Moon. Oh my goodness. Lapras, he's one of the original uh, 152. And this is going to be the entries for what versions again? That would be Ruby, Moon, and Ultra Moon. All right, Ruby, Moon, Ultra Moon. So Ruby's is, people have driven Lapras almost to the point of extinction. 
In the evenings, this Pokemon is said to sing plaintively as it seeks what few others of its kind still remain. Hmm. Wow, that is sad. Damn. And uh, Moon and Ultra Moon? Yeah. All right. These Pokemon were once near extinction due to poaching. Following protective regulations, there is now an over an abundance of them. That's good. I, I don't know if you want to have an over abundance of them, but like, an, so it's, you know, it's better than being almost extinct. Let's see. And Ultra Moon. They've been so cherished that there's now an overabundance. The fish Pokemon population has declined in waters with too many Lapras. I guess that's what happens, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Lapras, Lapras. I got myself lost. Where are we? You... Hi, Mola, Rags, and Fringy. Just wondering if you guys talk to Wolf, and if you do, send him a love. Long time fan, love your work. Uh, Thanks very much. We try to avoid mentioning much of whatever may or may not be going on with him because he's he's having he's having a good old fun time, sort of escaped from the internet. You know, a place mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that is wonderful and filled with fresh air <laughs> and nice things and grass which can be touched. Yes. Even eaten, so. Ooh, yum. Um, but yeah, uh, good stuff. Uh, look, Fringy, I don't know who you are, but you look like a top bloke. And I know this is weird to say, but I feel a strong bond between us. Hi, Rags. Hello. You got a friend, Fringy. Yeah. Say hi. Hi. That. Hey, that quaint. Look at you making hey, friends. There. Hello. Got a little happy Shiba Inu sticker. Gotta got love it. Nice dude. Um, and finally, if a child it has made friends with is bullied, Drampa will find the bully's house and burn it to the ground. A normal type, dragon type. Drampa Ultra Sun. <laughs> well, there you go. The normal ones do crazy shit too. <laughs> like burning down bullies' houses. Burning down. <laughs> hardcore. Um... And yeah, that means we are caught up for today's Super Chance. Oh, so, wow. How about that? We are likely going to call it there. But before we Got do, it. you uh, you guys want to talk a little bit at all about anything you may be up to? No, I'm up to a little thing, but I won't say what it is. Uh, it's been really fun to make, and I should hopefully have some nifty little, uh, nifty little assets as well that come along with it that I can put to use. Hmm. Uh, um... Just working. I don't have anything yet, but hopefully soon. That'll be nice. Fair enough. Uh, the the thing I'm working on, I might um, tell a bit more about it next week. Okay. See if it gets far enough that I'll start being a little bit more detailed on how it's doing and what it is. Um, hmm. Curious. But yeah, you know, the... Uh, well, I mean that's that's that I suppose. What a what a fun time. What a fun, it's it, that six and a half hours went a little faster than I ever would have expected. It was a six and a half hours, you know. Yeah, kind of went. Kind of flew by. Covered so much. Uh, one more came in asking, uh, "What raid configuration do you use?" Raid configuration. I feel like that's a tech thing that I just don't. Oh, I thought they were asking, like, maybe Raid Shadow Legends, like, configuration of <laughs> heroes or some shit. No, Raid... So, Raid is random array of independent disks, and it's like this computer thing, and you can configure them in different ways. It's like, it's like a computer thing, and I just don't know what that means. I, I Yeah, know. I don't... I'm out of the loop on that one. Whatever the default thing is, I guess. I'm not real... I'm just not a tech guy. I mm -hmm. don't... Uh, I can run a computer pretty well, but just for normal things. Uh, Bringy can back me up on this, but Warriors of Virtue is a better adaptation of Tolkien's work than Rings of Power. Also high rags. Hello. That doesn't ring a bell. Warriors of Virtue. I don't... Hmm. War is a virtue? Warriors, Warriors of, of virtue. virtue. It just doesn't ring a bell. Warriors of Virtue. Yeah, that doesn't ring a bell. Well, on that note, 
thank you all so much for joining us. We shall see you again Absolutely. Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Should probably be the plan. Just do a little bit of a catching up and then. Um, other than that, you'll find me on Real BBC and Open Bar next week. Good God, I've got a lot of streams to do next week. Uh, and we are closing in on the anniversary stream. That will be the 27th. <gasps> Atler is trash. Goodbye, everyone. Oh, my God. Can't oh end a stream God. like that. Madness. So anyway, thanks for watching. <laughs> thanks for the kind donations. Keeping us company. Giving us some bits and bobs to go back and forth with. You have yourselves a good night now. Goodbye. Yeah. Boy, boy. Well, you know what? Well, actually, before someone just posted this, Jared Leto has reportedly been cast as the hat box ghost in Disney's Haunted Mansion. Can't wait to see Fucking how much money that is. Celebrate. <laughs> Everyone go nuts. That's <laughs> the best news I'm ever. Glad. I'm glad he's got something going on. It's hat box time. I can't wait for us to go to the haunted house and he opens up his box and he's like, it's Mormon time. And then he, the spooky ghosts come out of the box, his hat box where he keeps hats. You don't see many hat boxes these days. Those, uh, those aren't, you have to explain to people what a hat box is. It's like, well, it's a, it's a box to put your hat in so it doesn't get smooshed. Bye. Thanks for coming to EFAP, everyone. Goodbye.